Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, got a little bit of a late start today. I had to go to the, get my doctor's appointment for my physical today, and he didn't show up on me. All right, so let's see if we got this thing working. It says one viewer here right now. Good morning. Good morning to all. I don't know what's taking so long getting this thing running. It says we have three viewers here with me right now. Good morning to all cats. Welcome to the tank. There we go. And hopefully we get the stream up and running here and we got a visual where you can see what's going on, not just me. And, uh, We'll get this rolling here. We've got two things open here. Let's close that one there. And let's see if we can get this screen down where it should be. Get the actual screen up here. There we go. 685. All right. That's where I filled yesterday at 688 right there and 687. So same thing, same day. Uh, let's get on over here to this page, though, so you guys can see what I'm looking at. And that is put the display page right up there. And hopefully we're up and running. Let's see how this works out. There we go. And let's get this main uh, live stream page over here. Just give me a second. Close that out. And put this over here. There we go. Good morning, Peabody. Good morning. Uh, I want you to know I did... Uh, Watch the video yesterday that was put out by 10X, the uh, interview. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, T-E-N-X is another stock we're following here. Let me turn the volume down. Volume. Volume down. There we go. That should be better. And uh, right now, since I just got the moving this screen over here with the live stream, I'm having the same problem I did yesterday. I don't see anything going on over here. Check that out. Already very nicely recovering. Peabody, honey, good morning. All right, Peabody's raw, honey. Man, that sounds good. It says here that we've got 12 people, 14 now currently on the channel with me. And uh, so welcome to all of you, please. Just be patient here while we get things fired up. All I see is the screen spinning. I do not see any information. Uh, and it's, we've been a little bit slow here lately on this uh, channel with uh, getting our feed up. I don't know what's going on. Uh, it seems as though everybody seems to be having a little bit of trouble here lately. I don't know if it's uh, EMPs from the sun or what the heck's going on. But uh, we're going to just keep rolling here and hopefully you can see what I'm seeing on the screen this is typical pre-announcement BS going on this morning. Look at the Dow up 66 and the NASDAQ down 138. So you go figure which way you want to go with. David G., I don't have time to watch your live stream today, but I wish you a great day and lots of success, Cashfish. Thank you very much, David. I actually can't be here all day either today. I've got to go uh, take care of some of my own business. I've already been doing business early this morning as of 7 o'clock, but thank you for being here. I appreciate you hitting the like button if you did that. And I see there were four likes, and so thank you. And, hey, I got the screen up here. We can actually see what's going on. And it looks like we got a little bit of a delay. But, uh, hey, hey, how do you like this being very resilient? And, by the way, what do you know? Let's go over here to the historical data for SoFi. Just give me a second here. And let's update this screen. For the historical data, yesterday's low was 686. And we're updating the screen right now. And look at that. One whole effing penny. Yay. Congratulations, Shorty. You did it. Another day down a whole freaking penny. You guys are really hammering this stock. Man, you guys really know how to put a hurting on SoFi doing one penny lower than yesterday. Man, that's impressive. That is impressive manipulation. <laughs> one whole penny, folks. And there's a reason they have to do it. They got to spend the money. Look at the volume already. Freaking 15 minutes. We're already 6 million. They've thrown out every one of those shares that they borrowed already this morning almost. 
God bless them for trying anyway. Keep after it, Shorty. Keep digging the hole. Keep digging that hole deeper and deeper. And uh, every one of us on this channel, just keep buying it every time you take it to a new low. So congratulations, everybody. As a matter of fact, I like it where it's sitting right now. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up some more right here. Got my tab all charged up. Let's get in here. Let's get in here and buy some more right here. Let's put some pressure on these guys. And let's build up some pressure right now. Get my tab up and running. All right. I want to thank you for being here with me. I know there's plenty of other places you could be today. Oh, yeah. Look at this. We're going to get the low of the day today. And we're going to go over here and we got to put in our password. And we're in there. And now let's get in an order. We're going to just do add to position. And we're going to do 50 shares here. And we're going to try right now. Review order, market share, review order, and place it. Let's see if we can get that 683 out of them. No, we're going to get 684. Thank you very much, Shorty. I appreciate that. I'm very, very grateful. I'll be selling these over $10 here in a few weeks. So thank you very much. I am very grateful to you. Got some news come out today on SOUN, by the way. SoFi, 684. 50 shares, put a check by it. Now let's try and go ahead and get an order in here for 683 right now, too. Just lower it one more and do a limit share order, review order, and place it. And let's see if we can pick up 683. That'd be sweet. And we're also going to load in right now, might as well, 682. And review order and place it. So we got 683 and we got 682 as well, just in case they try for that. 7 million shares already. God dang, folks. Hey, look at that, 683. And yes, thank you very much. I appreciate that. All your efforts are... I know how hard you're working to give me the lowest price of the day, so I'm grateful to you. Very grateful to you indeed. 683, 50 shares. Beautiful. Thank you. Now let's see if we can pick up that 682. I want to thank you all for being here with me. I got some interesting news that came out on some other stocks that we've got on our watch list. And for some reason, I just realized my microphone isn't working. And that's because I unplugged it last night from somewhere. Let's turn this back up now. There we go. All right. Check one, two. Hopefully you're able to hear me now. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Good morning, cat. I'm Bert Bernson. RC, I like that thumbnail. It's very applicable, that thumbnail. It definitely is. This is the way it's been, folks. It's been a very, very rough struggle fighting these shorts, and they just keep burying themselves deeper and deeper. But I tell you what, the shorts are the ones that are pushing that boulder right now. And what they should be, they're trying to do is push it downhill. But folks, it's going to go up. All right. And I believe that it's going to continue to rise and rise and rise from now until uh, the earnings call. And there's going to be daily right at the open. This is what, this is their pattern. We're seeing repeatedly now a very quick and very early attack with lots of volume. And then up she goes. All right, let's see if we can end up up over seven again today by the end of the day. I see my pad just flashed and I just got 682. Thank you, whoever did that. I have a 500 share order at 670, 678 if they can manage that. 500 shares I'm ready to take up. But I am just, uh, I just looks like I just filled the low of the day. 682, that was it. And look at the size of the volume buys coming in now at that, that. Here's the problem. When they run this price down on SoFi now, these institutions that already hold and have been holding for years now, they hold at uh, average prices of $10.50, $11, $12, $13, $13 average price. So their, their dollar cost averaging down. So when these shorts run this price down to like this to six eighty four, six eighty three. They're killing themselves because guess what? Two things are happening. Number one, they're running the volume up and they're making the volume very high. And that is something that they don't really want to do because there are many people who search the market for stocks that have volume flowing in because they know the rule, supply and demand. 
and when you got more volume coming in than they can handle, eventually the 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 camel's uh, straw will break. Okay, and that's what we're sitting here waiting on right now. We're just waiting on resistance to give in and break, and it will. You just got to be patient. It always has. And in case you weren't aware of it, this 682 price is about 7.7% uh, higher than the last low they were able to get to, which was 641 on November the 21st. You can go back and check my numbers if you want to, but I assure you that I am correct. The last low that they drove us down to from over $10 was $6.41. And now we're seeing it hold up very nicely at a low of 682. And unfortunately for the shorts, that's 41 cents higher than the last low they were able to achieve. And that shows what? It shows two things. It shows weakness on their part, and it shows strength on the part of the longs. And it's as simple as that. So congratulations if you just bought and picked up some more shares with me at 682. We can let these other guys keep hanging around waiting on 650 until hell freezes over because it's not going to get there. And uh, that's just the way I feel about it. Kevin Blair, thumbs up to you. Nice, RC. Kevin, 420 shares at 683. Cha-ching. See, that's good. Very nice. Very, very good. Congratulations. I'm glad that you did that. And uh, now it's time to get out our camera again. All right. And this is for historical purposes. Let's see if we can at least get 684 today on here. There it is. Boom. Take a picture. Bam. And a picture of that chart. Boom. There we go. All right. And I'm going to take a picture of all of your comments at the same time the, the lowest low was ever achieved. And I missed it by two cents. I should have took my camera out, but I was too busy buying. So that's okay. Uh, if I'm buying to miss, to catch the low of the day, which I just did, and I don't get a picture of it, that's all right. That's fine. And there it is. We're right a penny away. Let's try and get that one more time. Come on, shorty. Give me that six. There it is. That's it. Thank you very much. And we'll try to get a big uh, picture from far away here as well. See if we can get that again so we can show the time of day it was. And uh, I want to thank you all for being here while we take pictures of the lowest the stock price may ever, ever be. And I'd love to see it get to 682 one more time. But unfortunately, I don't believe they have that in the cards. And uh, But nice try. Nice try for them. I really appreciate them doing that today for all of us. They're doing it for us, folks. Consider these shorts driving the price down, uh, which is now a penny lower than yesterday's low. Consider them doing us a favor. And they're spending a lot of money to do it. Just keep that in mind, too. They're spending a lot of money to give us this great price today. And I'm grateful to them. And I'm grateful to the good Lord above as well. And uh, you should be too. Because 682, folks, if you just bought with me, congratulations, okay? And uh, we got 50 people on here. I want to ask you, since 56 is the number, a derivative, a multiple of 8, at 956, let's go ahead and hit the like button together in uh, about 35 seconds, all right? So let's hit that like button all together at the same time. We have 50 people on the channel with me right now. We just bought at the low of the day. Congratulations for every one of you that just did that with me. Look at the volume already. Almost 9 million shares. Gosh, dang, there's some people wanting this stock. And there's a lot of shorters who are trying so desperately, but they're throwing away good money after bad at this point. Now, six seconds, five, four. Three, we're going to hit the like button in two, one, and zero. Hit that like button right now. Let's run it up. Dream of stuff. Yep, good stuff. Absolutely, I agree. So I want to thank you all. And look at that. Now we're over yesterday's low. Yesterday's low, in case you were not aware of it, I do keep track of the daily lows. And yesterday's, the historical low, was $6.86. 6 dollars And what are you going to do now, shorty? <laughs> what are you going to do now that you've got it down a whole four cents lower than yesterday's low and we've already reached 8 million of your shorted shares to do that? So when this thing gets back up over seven and goes to 750 and then goes on up to eight, how are you going to stop that from happening? 
And uh, the shares I bought yesterday at 686 right here, how are you going to keep me from making money on those, Shorty? And in fact, how are you going to keep me from making money from the ones I bought at 682 this morning? And uh, you're not. You're not going to. You can't do it. And uh, that's the way I feel about it. I'm just very positive. And uh, we know we've got an announcement coming out today. We're waiting on the Fed again. And uh, I love the fact that the Dow is up freaking green, green, and the NASDAQ is down. And uh, I burned one whole calorie hitting that light button. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Here you go. I always put hearts up for all of the likes that come in. So I want to thank you right there. There's a heart for you. There's a heart for you and a heart on the screen for you. Look at all them likes that just came in. Great. Because the more likes we get on the channel, the more hearts we get on. And the more hearts we get on, the more likes we get on, the more people we get on the screen with us here on this channel. So uh, over, like I said, over the last 90 days, we've had over three quarters of a million people sent my thumbnail uh, and my picture uh, uh, and my video because you guys are hitting that like button. So thank you very much for doing so. And today we're going to see, I think, a very nice move off of this attempted washdown. It's a daily washout. Every morning, it's the same effing thing. Every single morning from them, the same thing. Trying desperately, trying so, so desperately to scare people out of this stock. But all they got is a bunch of freaking buyers who want more of it. Right now, every one of those 9 million shares that's been traded has left the borrowed shorts hands and gone over to longs like you and me who are hanging on and waiting for 10s, 11s, 12s, 13s, 14s, 15s, and 20s. And as Anthony Noto would say, we're waiting on 25s and 35s and 45s because at each one of those numbers, Anthony Noto and the guys that run the company, as well as all the employees, make a bunch of money. So once they get this stock price to $25, they're going to cash in. And they cannot cash in any of those performance bonus shares until the price is 25 And in case you weren't aware of it, the convertible notes that were all issued were at a price of $7.27. And they cannot do a dang thing with those convertible notes. They can't cash them in until SoFi's price Stock price hits $12.29. So, folks, this is another conundrum for the shorters because now we've got a bunch of institutions who are honing a bunch of shares, uh, convertible notes, that they want to convert when the price hits $12.29. <laughs> and some of them won't even do that then. They're going to convert their shares, uh, their convertible notes over to shares, and then they're going to run it on up to $14.54. All right, and then they'll get the maximum that they can possibly get out of this investment they just made. I can assure you that all of those institutions that just gobbled up all those convertible notes so if I had to offer did not do that to get just 1.25% gain. All right? They did not do that. They're not interested. They could just take their money and they could put it in the bank in a savings account and they'd get better interest than 1.25% over the next five years. So they didn't do that for that reason. They bought these convertible notes because they're probably smart enough to figure out that this company's got it all going on. And then on their next earnings call and their profitability is even more than expected because of that convertible note deal, which saves them on the average $60 million a year in interest fees from 2000 and 2025 and 2026 because they were going to have to pay 17.5% interest. And instead, now they're only paying 1.25% interest. Yes, 24-7, where have you been? Holy God, uh, I kind of hope they keep it down for a bit. I'll get my bonus check from work, LOL. All right, welcome back 24-7. Haven't seen you in a long time. So welcome back to the tank. And uh, thank you all for being here with me. Uh, I can see right now that I'm taking pictures of a screen that was about five minutes ago. So I'm going to refresh this page right now so I can see your comments more uh, appropriately near the time that they are. So we're going to refresh the screen right now. We'll reload it and hopefully we can get up more to a more current time. To each and every one of you shorters out there, I want to say thank you. 
because I know that you just spent a hell of a lot of money having already achieved in freaking 30 minutes, almost 10 million shares traded. And I know what that means. And I'm grateful to you for all that money that you just spent to get the price down to the same low that it was yesterday. Right now, we're sitting at the exact same price of the low yesterday. So congratulations, Shorty. You've done well. You've spent millions and millions of dollars at this point. In fact, at 10 times 7, you spent somewhere around $7 million already. And uh, I want to thank you for doing that. Uh, and that would be, uh, and that's actually $70 million. <laughs> 70 million. That's right. <laughs> want to thank you all for being here, everybody. We're going to $70 million very soon. <laughs> They're going to have spent today to try to run this price down. They borrowed every share that they can here recently. Virtually every single borrowable share they've been borrowing lately, and they're paying interest on it. Let's go over and find out what cost to borrow is today, just for kick's sake. Let's go take a look at it. It's never been very high on this stock, but it's getting higher. As a matter of fact, it doubled in the last week, cost to borrow. So I'm going to take a look at it right now here, and let's go see. Let's go check it out. I was watching Hurricane Lopez, and he said there were only, uh, the other day, there was only shares available to borrow right now, folks, is only 100, and uh, it says it's 1.4 million, 1 million 400,000 shares available left to borrow. Only 1 million 400,000, and as you can see, unfortunately, this is a seven-day chart. I'd love to be able to see this chart for over seven days, because if I could, Whoa, look at this. See right here? On this day, March the 15th, there were only 250,000 shares left to borrow for shorting. And over here, what day was this on? On March the 19th, there are only 450,000 shares left to borrow, folks. That's today. They've nearly freaking maxed it out, folks. They don't know what to do. They don't have any choice but to do this. They can't. If you were here with me the other day, they were seeing 10 million shares and they were all available. And boy, has that changed as of late. Look at that. 10 million. There used to be 10 million shares. And now look how low it is. Oh, I love it when I see that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's kill them that way, folks. We're going to kill these shorts because they can't, they're going to soon run out of all short shares to borrow. I love this chart right here. I'd love to be able to see this. And this uh, interest rate was at 036 about a week ago, and now it's gone up to uh, 06, what does this say? Right there, about almost 7 per, uh, 07%. And uh, boy, howdy, look at all these shares they're borrowing to manipulate the price down. How do you like that? On March the 15th, there were only 250,000 shares left for them to borrow, people. You see how deeply they're going in, how deep that hole's becoming for them? It's a very deep hole, folks. And they're not scaring anybody out when it's only 3% down. Nobody's afraid of that. Nobody's got a stop loss in at 3% loss. Okay, no one. I can assure you of that. Nobody puts a stop loss in at 3%. All they're doing is triggering people's buy signals. <laughs> and that's why the volume is going to go probably over 50 million shares today. I'd like you to keep track of something here with me as we go back over here to the historical data page. I'm trying to refresh my YouTube feed sheet, the stream uh, channel right here page. And because uh, I'm seeing a major, major delay, a latency, we'll call it. and. Uh, Take a look at this doggone volume, folks. See, this is what I'm telling you is killing these, these shorters because they got spoiled back in October, September and October of last year when we were only seeing 15 million shares a day and 20 million shares and 17 million shares. I'll go back here and show you. Here we go. Going to go all the way back here and we look at down here in October. So you're only talking about maybe five months ago, folks. And they had it good back then. They had it real good. The shorters were easily manipulating with 17 million shares, 17 million, 16 million, 18 million. You see that? 
That's when it was so easy to manipulate for them. 18 million, 16 million, 22 million. Oh, it was so easy on them. It was even lower before that. 17 million, 17 million, 15 million. Oh, yeah, they had that back then. It was the gravy days. Man, were they making money on such low volume. Well, that's changed now, folks. Those numbers from the 15s and 17s, and you come up now into the more recent time, and the things have completely changed, folks. The volume is going to kill them. All right? And time, over time, it's a war of attrition, but the volume will indeed overrun these kids. All right? And I call them that kids. That's what I call them because I think a lot of them are kids. And uh, you can see here, this volume has now gone from 17 million, 15 million, 16 million to 83, 76, almost 60, 50 million, 70 million, 52 million, 47 million, folks. You're not talking like it used to be. And I'm very glad to, to point that out to you because it's not the way it used to be, folks. It's not as easy for them anymore. And that's why they're forced to borrow so many shares. That's why they're being forced over here to borrow so many shares to contain this with. And you guys need to be aware of that. You need to be aware that uh, back here just four days ago, they borrowed almost every single damn share there was a bor borrowable. All right. And over here, they borrowed again, almost every single share that was available to borrow to bring the price down today, just today. So there you go. And look at the price already. Back up over yesterday's low now. So they're screwed. <laughs> they're screwed. 10,646,000 shares traded. Going to go over 40 million again today. Price is going to go back up over seven. It's going to go over eight. It's going to go over nine. And it's going to go over 10. Why do I say that? Because it's done it five times this year already. Down in the sixes, down in the fives, down in the fours and still back over 10, and it's done it five times this year. And it's la over the last year, I should say, not this year, but five times over the last 52 weeks. This price has gone from in the fours to over 10 to 10.23, and it did that in 29 days. Went from 4.45 to 10.23 in 29 days, from May the 15th, David Chia Pansy's downgrade day, to May to June the 14th, 29 days, price went up freaking 125%. And there wasn't really any other reason other than pure manipulation. That's it. There wasn't any big breaking news story that made the price jump from 445 all the way up to 1023. What it was is this company and its execution, okay, of its plan, its business model and its business plan and its diversification and you know now, you see the deal on Galileo today? Did you guys see the deal on Galileo? I still can't see anything. I want to show you what I'm looking over here. This is my page for my for my uh, YouTube stream. That's what I got right now. That's what my YouTube stream page looks like. Isn't that cool? I see nothing. I can't see what you guys are saying. I can't see any effing thing whatsoever. I cannot see a single thing on this. Here it goes. Lightning fast internet here with wow internet out here in Michigan. The slowest internet you can possibly get your hands on. I have made some contacts. I'm looking to try to switch over. Uh, there's been some others. Um, T-Mobile, believe it or not, is also starting to make a service available. And someone had mentioned Starlink. I might want to give it a try. But there's what I'm looking at for your YouTube studio, creator studio channel. There you go. I can see nothing that you're saying. I have nobody's uh, comments, and I guess the best thing to do at this stage is just close it. Goodbye, because it's worthless, and it doesn't do a damn thing. But I am certain of one thing, folks. I am certain that they're not going to be able to keep up with this volume. I am certain of that. They are not going to be able to keep the price down with this volume that we're seeing as of late. Okay, it was easy for them when they were borrowing 10 or 15 million shares a day and they were running the price down, but they can't do that anymore. They can only run it down in the morning and they're doing it every morning. You've seen every single day in the last week, this same pattern, run it down in the morning and then all day, the rest of the day, up, 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 up. That's all they've been doing every single day. Look at the five-day chart and it's very obvious. Run it down in the morning, 
Run it down in the very morning, up the rest of the day. Run it down in the morning, up the rest of the day. Run it down in the morning, up the rest of the day. Run it down in the morning, up the rest of the day. Okay? This is the tactic they've been using. And you can see them stair-stepping it down. This is Thursday morning, ran it down. This is Friday morning, ran it down, went up all day long Friday. Saturday, uh, Monday, ran it down in the morning, up all day long. All day, all the way up to there. Today, run it down in the morning, and what do you think is going to happen the rest of the day now that they used all their shares? They only had 10 million shares to borrow today, and we're at 11 million. And you can see right here, this shows how many shares there were available to borrow today. 4 million number of shares available to borrow in the last seven days. There's not even been 10 million a day for them to borrow. There used to be. When I was looking at this three weeks ago, this number was 10 million. And there weren't, they weren't even have to tap those out. Man, look at that today. God dang. And they've already returned a bunch of them after early this morning. That's right. Look at that. 450,000 March 19th at 345. 345 in the morning, people. 345 in the morning. And they've already come here at 530 in the morning and returned a bunch of those shares that they were using to run it down in the pre-market with. All right? So just be aware of that. That's the game they're playing. That's what they're trying. A morning attack every single day, shake out the tree, and then let it go up the rest of the day. They don't care. Well, they don't let it go up. They can't stop it from going up. That's the bottom line. They cannot stop it from going up. All right? They can try all they want, but they're having very difficult times. Now, I'm here on YouTube. I'm trying to load the page in again so I can see what you guys are saying. I appreciate it if you're, for your patience. Just hang on. Let's, in the meantime, we'll take a look at Bitcoin, where it is today, down 6%. And I looked at BITF, and folks, it's down 4 Usually, when the Bitcoin is down 10%, BITF will be down 18%. So, there at, see, they oversold it here last week when the Bitcoin was up to the record highs. So, Fi, right on up. There she goes, just like usual. Going to be the same thing today. They're not going to stop this volume. They're not going to stop the buyers. In freaking 45 minutes, we're at 11 million shares already. Beautiful. See, no one's scared. No one's scared here to buy. And most of them, I think, are grateful, like me, for these everyday rundowns because they already, probably already know, too, we'll soon be back up over 10. So might as well get it here at the lowest it's been in freaking days. Get it now at the lowest it's been in a month, actually. Uh, actually, this is the lowest it's been in freaking four months now, okay? Because November 21st was the last low of 641. And they can't even get to that now. They're screwed. You see, they shorted it all the way down to 641. And they hold short, they're hold they holding shortage positions all the way down in the fours. They're still holding those shorted shares. And the reason they can afford to do it is because they started shorting at $20 and $25. And they've made so much money shorting this stock that they don't have any losses on it, even when it's down and they're they're uh, they're holding shorted positions in the fours and fives and sixes. But folks, this is all going to come apart for them here over the next year, because every single damn quarter this year, we're going to we're going to most likely report profitability. That's what our management has said, that every quarter this year, we're going to be profitable. And I think they're aiming for a 16 percent EPS, 16 to 18 sent EPS by the end of the year. I think that's what they said. And they might even be updating that. Now, I want you guys to be aware of something. I'm still trying to load this page for YouTube. You can see what's happening. It's absolutely horrible. Now, I'm going to go over here to this page, and I'm going to put on View Channel. And hopefully, we can get my channel to be seen by me and by, all of, by everybody. So, we'll go over here right now. And we're going to try to load this up one more time. One more time. Here we go. There we are. And here's my video playing right now. And we're going to click on that right there. One tough climb. And what it is, is going to be one tough descent for the shorts now. They're finding how hard it is to get it back into the sevens and sixes and fives. And every time they do, people just buy it up. Every time that they throw these shares out, people are just gobbling them up. And one of these days, they're going to run out of shares to borrow, and it might even be today. All right, there we go. We got the screen to come up, and we're going to have everybody's chat visible on the screen as well here in just a second. 
And I want to thank you all for being here. 55 people here on the channel right now. And we started streaming a little bit late today. I want to thank you all, all of you who've hit that like button. That's a lot of people hitting the like. And here we go. Let's get this thing completely loaded up and get all the chat over here where I can see what people are saying. And uh, I just want to thank you for being here with me this morning as we watch SoFi rise. And it's not going to stop rising, folks. They're not going to hold it back. They can't contain it. They've used, you already seen, how many shares they borrowed today. They were only available. And it shows, and you're going to see, we're going to refresh this page because I want to keep an eye on this. I love it when I see them use every single share they can borrow to try to hold this price down. And how, how, many, how many days are they going to be able to continue doing that? Is the question you should be asking. How many days are they going to be able to keep borrowing as many shares as are available? All right. How many? How long will that hold up? How long is that going to hold up for them? And unfortunately for them, the price is rising now. So are they going to go back in and borrow more to make it lower? And then all the borrowable shares are just flat gone? What will happen with SoFi's price when that happens? Oh, yeah. Okay, here we can see what everybody's saying. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Burt Berenson, I burned one whole calorie for the like button, 24-7. NGL, I kind of hope they uh, keep it down for a bit. Uh, been lurking, but working at the same time. I got you, got you 24-7. Joys of the midnight shifts, oh, boy. Maki Salopets. Mickey Maki Salopets just bought another 2,000, lowering my average every day. Currently 734. Yes. Way to go. Way to go. That was easy. Xavier, yo. Alexandra Sielek. Greets from Poland. All right. A new country representative here. Let's say hello and greetings and welcome. Hello and welcome. A L A L E K S A N D R A from Poland. All right. Woo, nice. Very, very cool. And we want to make sure and give you a little wave hello. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here with me. A new person here on the channel. And hopefully you'll consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell. And get notified too. Mike Fratalia, the number 30th like. Thank you. I be Matt. Kramer was talking on SoFi yesterday. Looking good. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Kramer. You cut down your good friend Anthony Noto's stock. John Jewett, good morning. Good day to buy. That's right. Mohan, what do you think of Neo? It seems to have a similar pattern to SoFi, shorted like crazy. Uh, I have made a fortune off of Neo. And that was about a year and a half ago. The thing was going up and down a dollar every two minutes. I was just killing it, day trading it. But then I got out when it started dropping. And I haven't looked at it lately too much. But I will take a look today. Peabody's Raw Honey. Uh, let's see. Highly recommended T-Mobile. It's great. And $50 a month. Thank you, Peabody's Raw Honey. Thank you, Michael. Michael Astorino. This is pretty. Hold on here a second. Let me get up here. And I will get these all read. This is pretty depressing. Back to $7. It's depressing, I'll tell you, for who it's depressing. It's depressing for the shorters. Because they shorted it in the fours. And they shorted it in the fives. And they shorted it heavily at 666. Jim Cramer said he was some questions for Anthony Noto and wants him on the show. Oh, he, he's, he's already done several interviews with Anthony Noto. Jim Cramer and Anthony Noto's are friends, in case you did not know that. They've been friends for a very long time. Yep. 24-7, below eight bucks is a deal in my opinion. Yep, just got to relax and wait. That's right. What's your prediction for tomorrow, Anger wants to know. Uh, Asger, Asger Lorenzen. I do not recognize that name, so I will say again, a greetings. Greetings. Asger. And welcome to the tank. We, we call this the tank because it's a I'm a catfish, and we're all in here in the catfish tank. So I want to thank you for being here. There you go. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button and uh, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I come up. And, folks, now I can move this, this page 
over. I can move it over, but look how it's just sitting there and spinning and spinning and spinning. It's absolutely horrendous. But I'm going to run this page high for Copenhagen, Denmark. Oh my gosh, look at all these folks coming from all over the world. 401 Tango, T A N G O. Welcome to the tank. All right, we got people come all over the world here, all over the globe, spanning the globe. All right, there you go. Rusty Pratt, our damn SoFi. I was forced to buy some SoFi, so my 7,777 shares at 777 is messed up. Oh, doggone it. That, that stinks. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, look at this price just rising now. And I showed everybody here earlier, the shorts are in deep crap. They're borrowing all the shares they possibly can. Back here on the 15th, there were only a remaining shares to be borrowed was doggone 250,000 shares left. They tapped the well dry on uh, March the 15th. And here we are four days later. And by God, this morning, they tapped the well dry again almost. Folks, only 450,000 shares left for the shorts. And now you can see why they can't run the price back down. Why they can't hold it down now. Because the, the amount of shares available to borrow, as you can see, number of shares available to borrow in the last seven days, man, they've gone from 10 million down to 3 million, down to uh, 2 million, down to 1.2 million, down to only 250,000 shares. They're in trouble, folks. They don't want you to see this either. Believe me, they don't want you to see this. They returned a whole bunch of shares yesterday. See that? Yesterday at 5 o'clock, they returned a bunch of shares. But folks, they came back in and borrowed them. And they borrowed them all day long. And then today, look how many shares they borrowed this morning at 3.45 in the morning. Boy, I tell you what, they're burning that candle at both ends now. Up at 3.45 in the morning, borrowing almost, well, how many shares were there available? There was 2.5 million and they've only got it down to 450,000 left. So they borrowed another 2 million plus this morning at 345 and ran it down to available shares of only 450,000 left. And they've just returned because now there's 1.4 million. They've returned a million already. They've returned a million already. And they got trouble, folks. They're going to have big trouble keeping this price down with this volume going as high as it is now. And this is why they're getting so desperate and having to short so much. You need to be aware of this, folks. Every one of you needs to be aware of this. Okay, this is very important that you understand the conundrum that they're in right now. And here we are again, still cannot get a page to load up on my YouTube channel uh, viewing page. I just saw you five times like a mirrored cabinet. Fed rug pull tomorrow, that's what they are saying. Ugh, Fed is not, has nothing to do with SoFi. Never have. Fed is in on the game. Even old Jim Cramer told, told everybody that on his interview one day. Fed is in on it. They're in on the take. The Fed is part of the whole mechanism of scaring people out of stocks. And I'm trying to move this page over here right now to this page uh, over to the monitor here. DB, hello. Hey, DB, I was showing everybody. There used to be every day 10 million shares to borrow with. But as the 12th of March, there were only 2.9. And then it dropped all the way down to 1.9. And then it dropped all the way down to 1.2 on the 14th of March. And then on that 15th of March, the shares available to borrow was only 250,000 shares remaining. The question you should be asking yourself is what happens when they completely run out of shares to borrow to manipulate with? What's going to happen to this price? And look at today. They borrowed every one of the available shares almost again today, down to 450,000 left. And that's where I ask you how I ask you and why I ask you, how are they going to keep running the price down if they burned up all those shorts that they borrowed, the shares they borrowed to short with? That's the question you should be asking yourself. 
and this is the information that should keep you abreast of the situation, that the only reason the price is down 3% today is because they borrowed every freaking share that was available to borrow today almost. Almost every one of them has gone already. Let's see where they are by the end of the day. I'll be cu very curious to see where they are when this price starts to go up to 7 again. And then I'll be curious where they're going to obtain shares from to keep bringing the price down, selling back and forth to one another when there aren't shares left. That's the question I got. And I think when they run out completely, when this number changes to zero and over here, when this comes down to zero, what do you think the price is going to do after that? What do you think the price is going to do after that? Yep, DB, that's good news. Kat, you said you had info on 10X from the conference call. Yes, I did. I did watch this conference call yesterday right here. I watched it in its entirety. You can see that there was 23 minutes and one second in the conference call. And it was 22 minutes and 58 seconds that I watched up to. And uh, what I found out was several things that were that were quite interesting to find out. And uh, the one thing is, the biggest thing of all is that they're saying that they will should be on the last stages of this trial of stage three, which, which, by the way, he was commenting that the stage two trials went very, very well. Very well. Saying that uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a term that they use when it comes to these drugs and that is rejection, okay? Meaning that when they put this, the drug into someone's body, are they having uh, negative reactions in any way that would keep this, this, uh, this study from going forward? And to this point in time, all they have had and through this whole stage two level studies was a small increase in heart rate. But they have not had any other negative side effects from the drug whatsoever. None. Zero. So this is a good sign for them. And now, here that they've gone into the stage three, and by the way, if you watch this interview, I'll put a link to it right here so you can watch it, all right? I'll put a link to this. Copy, and then here's the interview with 10X, T-E-N-X interview. There it is. And I'll put it in here. Control V. And there it is. So if you want to go over and watch it yourself, uh, you might have to go to the subscription page first. But at any rate, this is where I went to and watched. And here's the deal. They believe that this stage three trial and he asked him the last question is, so when are we going to see the final results? And when do you think this will be put out on the shelves for people to be able to get this this uh, this treatment for levacimidin? And it's an oral, oral treatment, not IV. And uh, he also stated, as I said, that over 20 years they've been using this already over in Europe with great success in IV form. And uh, so now they're trying to get a new uh, type of this drug, which is an oral, which makes it much easier for people. Because the one thing that he mentioned in this interview was that everybody who was having to do the test with IV would have to come in and get hooked up to the machine for a, like a 12-hour period to get this intravenous thing. So it was very troublesome for people to stay in that study through the level two. But with level three, it's oral, and they don't have to go and get hooked up to the machine once a, once every couple of weeks, okay? So this is very, very good, and this will advance the, the speed at which this gets approved, this level three. And he is presuming they could have their final results in by the end, possibly the end of this year, all right? 225, uh, I, I, I back up. Possibly by uh, 2025, at the latest early 2026. Okay, but this six-minute walk has been very good. The results have been very good, and people have been able to go from 24 meters to 29 meters, and now up to 35, I believe, 35 meters in this six-minute walk. So each time they've done the test, 
and they've been able to step it up and they, they've seen improvements in blood flow. And in case you don't know what's going on with this, what happens is these po- people, half of their heart isn't functioning. The one side of their heart functions well, but the other half isn't because of restrictiveness of flow to the veins. So what they're doing is this, and this causes what they call in the abdomen, they have problems in the torso with blood accumulating there. And then it comes in too heavy on the one side of the heart that's working. And this is the problem that they're they're dealing with. And this is the solution. And so far, they've seen very good results. Everything is moving forward as planned. And uh, they've got many, many, many other uh, institutions involved in the study of this drug, including many colleges. Harvard is one of them. Mayo Clinic is another one. And there's others that he mentioned in this. It's worth it for you to go and listen to this. It's a 23-minute interview. Find out what's going on. It's a long-term investment, folks. You've got to be waiting very long for this. Hold on to it. Buy the shares and be patient, okay? Be patient because one day the price is going to go over $100 a share on this stock. And it could even bounce in up to the 20s again on good news. And they have obtained over the last year four more patents, four patents. So that was another thing I did not know about is that they've achieved and uh, attained four patents in this last year. So that's another advancement that they've made. And the one of the patents is for Livasimondon. And, uh, he also talked about other companies that they're going to be licensing out that patent to who are adding it to their drugs to make their drugs uh, instead of just their drug, make a compound, and uh, that will help their profits as well moving forward. So there's a lot to be heard here in this interview. Take the time to go over and listen to it. Meanwhile, let's get back over to SoFi and see where they are. I think they're going to be green. I think they're going to run out of shares to uh, borrowing shares. And uh, David G., what means very long? Five years, 10 years? No. 30,000 shares have landed here I, in Denmark. All right. All right, yes. Uh, Catfish, uh, there's the link to the interview. And by the way, uh, if you guys don't mind, let me just try and click on this link and see if this works right now. Let me just see what happens. And it's loading it. All right. It is loading this. Let's see if it'll completely load up. By the way, the price you're seeing right now on SoFi is higher than yesterday's low. And that's a very good thing. Yes, it's connecting it. And there is the, yes, it worked for, It worked fine. So that link did work fine. Now, I'm not sure if it's working fine for me because I had already uh, subscribed. and uh, But there it is. Very, very cool. And it is just hit play and away it goes. Make sure you click on the mute button because it's muted automatically. So click on the volume button down there to make sure you unmute it. But that's working. Very cool. All right. So the link that I just provided does work. And let's get back over here to the chat and get rid of that. What means very long? Five years? Ten years? David, I'm not sure. Uh, 401 Tango. 30,000 shares have landed here in Denmark. Holy cow. Hello and welcome. And welcome. 401 Tango. 401 T-A-N-G-O. All right. I do not remember you here being on the channel before. So I'm just going to say hello and welcome. I invite you to please hit the like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you will be notified. Uh, One of the other things I want to do right now is I want to jump over here and I want to look at uh, SoFi Institutional Ownership. And I want to thank all of you who are here with me right now on this channel. I'm very grateful for your being here. Uh, I want to get over to the analytics page now and see how many people are here and uh, how many likes we got going on. and. Now we're going to go over here to SoFi Institutional Ownership and see if we've seen any change in institutional ownership. We moderate this and we we monitor this very closely because that can tell us some things. Follow the money, people. Follow the freaking money. And I want you to know something, folks, and those of you that are not aware of this already, that SoFi has seen a major increase in institutions adding to their portfolios 
a major increase in institutions adding to their portfolios over the last month. Significant increase. All right. And they keep adding and they keep adding and they keep adding. And the way you can tell that is right over here by looking at this chart right here. Look at the institutional ownership going up and up and up and up over here. All right. This is the chart I want you to see. Institutional ownership. And here's the interesting part that I pointed out to several people. The price was up here at $25 a share while they were building their positions in institutional ownership. But the curious thing about it is the price then was falling and falling and falling and falling while they had so many shares. Why? Well, in my opinion, because they were buying so many damn shares only so they could run it down and sell them back and forth to one another. S buy up tons and tons and tons of shares and then sell them back and forth and to each other until the price dropped all the way down here to the maximum low on May the 15th. And you can see that at that point, all those institutions had then given up all their shorted positions and the, had reached the lowest it had been in about nine months. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15, 18. So it was actually almost two years before they ran out of those shares that they were shorting with and got the price down the lowest they could in May. But folks, after that May, look at now, they're adding to their positions, but it's the opposite of what was happening over here as they added positions with the price dropping. Now they're adding to their positions with the price rising. And that is the difference. That's the key difference. Over here, they kept adding and adding and adding as the price fell and fell and fell. And then they started selling them off, selling them off, selling them off, selling more, selling more until the low of 445 right there on May the 15th. And then they started adding and the price started rising and they added more and they ran it down on this addition that they sold. And then they look at the price. It just keeps going up. There's the high there. They dropped it down. There's a high there. They dropped it down. There's a high there. They dropped it down. High there. They dropped it down. And now look at them. Just keep adding, adding, adding. And that's not happening with the legacy banks. They're just the opposite of that. All of their charts show legacy banks, the biggest top five banks in the country, have the institutional ownership dropping, 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 and dropping even more. I proved that to you. I showed this to you about a month ago, guys and gals that were here. If you don't believe me, take a look at Truist, T-R-U-I-S-T, Truist Bank. Let's go take a look at Truist and see how many institutions are piling in on Truist right now. I'm going to show you the comparisons of what I just showed you with SoFi versus what's going on with Truist. And we're going to look at institutional ownership right now. This is just one of the banks, folks, one of the many big legacy banks. And they're dropping in institutional ownership. And by the way, there's 2,231 institutions holding shares. But look how many have been leaving lately. Look at that chart. Down, 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 down. I mean, they're just leaving. They're leaving these big banks. That's just one of them, folks. This is only one of them. There are others. There are others. You need to be aware of that. I'm going to show you another one here. Let's go over here and take a look at another one here. One of the big boys. Let's take a look at Wells Fargo. Let's go look at Wells Fargo institutional ownership, what it looks like compared to SoFi's right now. Let's go look at it. I like to show you guys this so, so you can see on all the legacy banks, the big, 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 big banks, institutions are leaving them right now and they're coming over to SoFi. So here's another one, Wells Fargo. Look at Wells Fargo lately. Look at their chart right there. Look how many banks have depart departed from them. They were up here and they've dropped and they went up a little and dropped again and dropping. Folks, they're dropping. They're losing institutional interest. Institutions are leaving, and there's 3,265. We've only got 798, but folks, they are reducing their positions on these big banks, and you can see it very clearly from this chart right here. Look how much they had up here, and look where they've dropped to. Look where they've dropped to, all right? 
And this is what you need to be aware of, folks. They're leaving these institutional big, big banks are leaving them. All right, let's go look at another one here. Instead of Wells Fargo, let's look at Bank of America. I don't even know if they're on here. Let's look at Bank of America here. Wells Fargo. No, we're looking at Bank of America, institutional ownership. What are they doing with the institutions with Bank of America? Are they flying in on Bank of America and adding, adding, adding? Or are they doing the same they're doing at Truist and Wells Fargo? Let's go see. Oh, my God. Look at that decrease. Look at all the institutions over the last two years that have been dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping, folks. All right. That's not what you're seeing on SoFi's chart, is it? Oh, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. Nope, you're seeing just the opposite. Isn't it interesting to see this? I think it is. Let's look at the State Street Bank. How are they doing? State Street. Let's go look at State Street Bank. I'm glad I can show you this, folks. It's important for you to understand that all of the big, big, huge legacy banks are losing institutional ownership. And, and they're all coming over to SoFi. They're coming to SoFi, folks. And I just showed you that SoFi chart. Let's go look at these guys. Look at their chart, folks. This is State Street Bank, one of the top 10 banks in the United States. And look at their institutional ownership chart. All right. I think it's important for you to see this, folks. This is where the money is flowing. Look, they don't even want you to see this. Look at that for freaking drop, people. Holy crap. I mean, it's insane. Folks, Google here. I want to show you something. <sighs> List of top 10 banks in USA. All right. And I've already shown you many of them. Truist, Morgan. Uh, I've shown you all these banks. Here they are. Here's the 15. These are the 15th largest banks right here. And I've already shown you Bank of America, I've shown you Truist, I've shown you Wells Fargo, and I'm showing you they are all dropping. They're dropping, all right? Let's go over here and take a look at U.S. Bank Corps. How are they doing? Are they getting a bunch of institutions into U.S. Bank Corps? U.S. Bank Corps. U.S. Bank C-O-R-P. Let's see what they're doing. And I think I spelled that wrong. I think it doesn't have a, a K on it. Get this off my page. U.S. Bank Corps, yep, C-O-R-P. So let's go look at U.S. Bank Corps, see what they're doing. B-A-N-C, delete and search. How are they doing for institutional ownership lately? Are the institutions coming in on U.S. Bank Corps? Or are they leaving them just like they are all the other big legacy banks? Let's find out. Let's just find out right now. I think it's good information. James Anderson, good morning. R.C. So far now in the top 100 banks, number 75. Federal Reserve website as of December 2023. Yeah. All right. Let's get a nice push up today. Just got some more at 683. Good. Let's go over here and see what U.S. Bank Corps. Hey, there's one that's beaten. The, this is a bank you might want to consider investing in. They've actually got a change and they're going up. U.S. Bank Corps. So this is the exception to the rule right here. U.S. Bank Corps is the exception to the rule. Uh, very good. U.S. Bank Corps. Hey, look at that. U.S. Bank Corps is one of the top five banks. Maybe the reason they're improving so much is because they just took on the deal with uh, with uh, Galileo. And I want to show you guys something. I'm excited about this. Take a look at the news about Galileo. Look at this. Galileo expands buy now, pay later solution to include post-purchase options for credit and debit. All right. This news is breaking today. All right, Carl C. Mark, we're flying now. Yeah, baby. I bought another 40 at uh, 685, selling around seven. They are definitely going to try the same trick tomorrow. Oh, they're trying it. They're trying it, folks. They are trying it every single day. I just showed everybody this. Look at the five day chart. Look at them attack the stock in the morning. Look at this. They attacked it on Friday right out of the gate, and all it did was go up the rest of the damn day. Yesterday, they attacked it right out of the gate. All it did was go up the rest of the damn day. Today, what do they do? Attack it right out of the gate. What's it going to do the rest of the day? 
already reaching 14,840,000 shares. And here's the thing you need to be aware of. Look at the cost to borrow, folks. Look at the shares available to borrow to short this stock with now. This is over the last seven-day period. It's gone from 3 million, just shy of 3 million. Then they dropped it down to 2 million. Then they dropped it down to 1.2 million. And it dropped all the way down on March the 15th, four days ago, to under only 250,000 shares left to short with, folks. So they had to come back and return. So they returned. So I've got it back up to 2 million. Then we got it up to 3.7 million. And then what do they do today? Bam. Today, they come down, they borrow every freaking share they can possibly get their hands on to stop SoFi from going up. They borrowed to 450,000 shares was all that was left. And I got news for you, folks. I got very good news for you. I looked at this one month ago, and there were 10 million shares available to borrow over every single set of that seven-day period. Now, unfortunately, as I look here, I'm sad to say that I cannot go back to a longer term than this seven days. I wish like hell they would let me show you the last month because then you'd really have an eye opener. But they're only showing us seven days. And I, that's kind of that's kind of sad that they won't let me show you because I would show you what I just told you, that a month ago there were 10 million shares available to short. And now we're seeing 450,000 today. And they've already returned some. That was Look at what time they did this, folks. They shorted, they borrowed those shares so they can start shorting this this morning right at 4 o'clock. They borrowed them this morning at 3.15 a.m. They borrowed from 3.4 million all the way down to only 450,000 shares left. So they borrowed, folks, 3.05 million shares. They borrowed three. How in the hell are they going to, with 3 million shares, keep the price from going up? when the volume's already reached 15 million plus. How in the hell are they going to keep the price from going up? That's the question you need to ask yourself. They only borrowed the what was available to short and borrow. Today, it says, was right here. This is all they had, 3.4 million. And they borrowed all those shares to drive the price down this morning. And that was at 3.45 that they did it. And they started at 4 a.m. They started driving the price down with those 3 million shares. And then they've returned already a million right now. They've returned a million. All right. So they made some good money this morning when they got it down to 6.82. But they've returned those shares now. Now, my chance, my belief is when we get back up over $7 here by the end of the day, they're going to go back in on those shares and they're going to wipe them all out. I don't think they'll even be this many by the end of the day. As a matter of fact, they just started borrowing more. See that? They just went from 1.4 million down to 1.1 million left. There's only 1.1 million shares left for them to borrow, folks. They're in desperation mode, and you need to be aware of this, okay? You need to be very aware of how many shares they've got left to manipulate with, and it's getting slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. And I already said that was going to happen. And my belief is... And I could be wrong, but what I think is the reason there are so few shares available right now to borrow is because so many shares were taken off the tree when they just did that convertible note deal and had to acquire 122 million shares or so just to put those shares on the side for the day they need to be converted. I mean, you're talking about a bunch of shares here lately, folks. And this is what I like to show to everybody when we come over here. Uh Hang on here. I'm going to get on this. I want you to understand something else, folks. This is getting situation critical for these shorters, okay? Because they're not used to this kind of volume every day. This number that we're at in just over an hour and 20 minutes used to be the whole day's volume level. This was for a whole day's trading 15 million shares, all right? And this morning, the, the, avail the available shares to borrow was only 3 million. We know that. This is the most important thing for you guys to understand. Their cost to borrow is going to go up, I guarantee you, when those shares are zero to borrow. Yep, that's what I think. I could be wrong, but I sure don't think so. And I want you guys to be aware, we've already reached 15,415,000, and we're going to keep a very close eye 
on how many shares they're borrowing right now. All right. Now, this isn't updated until later, but you can see this was at 5.30, 3.30 in the morning. This right here was at 4 o'clock, 4.15, and then here again at 6.30, they came again and borrowed even more shares to short with because it was at 1.4. Now it's at 1.1. They borrowed another 300,000 shares to try to short with at 6.30 in the morning. And I'd love to see what it is right now. I wish to God this page was even accurate, more more updated to the time that we're at now. I really do, because I think we'd be in for a big surprise. So I'm looking over here. Oh, now there's only 1 million left. As of 6.45 this morning, there was only 1 million shares left to borrow. How do you like that? And so what this means is, folks, that to run the price down, they can't use borrowed shares anymore. They got to go right into their own pockets. And what that means is the ones that are going both long and short, now they're going to have to start selling their long positions and they're going to have to cover those shorted positions with their longs on SoFi. And we may even see the long uh, number reduced. All right. We already saw that once for SoFi. I'll show you right here. I want you to see, I want you to see, here we go, I'm looking at the time delay right now, and it looks like we've got a, a delay of about a minute, so that's not too bad, so here we are now on SoFi. And I just got through showing you all these banks like State Street Bank. Look at the institutional ownership dropping, 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 dropping. Meanwhile, you go over to SoFi. What are they doing? What are they doing? <laughs> Look at their institutional ownership chart, folks, on SoFi. Right here it is. Up, 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 up. Okay? So here you're seeing the legacy banks institutions losing interest, losing interest, losing interest, losing interest, losing interest, reducing, 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 reducing. And what do you see on SoFi's chart? Rising, 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 rising. All right. This is what I like to show everybody. Now, I want to ask you to do me a favor. It's going to be 1054 here in just a second. So let's hit the like button at 1054 all together. There it is. And actually, we'll do it at 1055. So don't hit the like button yet. Let's wait until one more minute. And I'd like to ask you to all simultaneously hit the like button. But don't do it just yet. Let's wait until the time says 1055 on the screen. And that's 40 seconds from now. So I want to ask you to please help me out. And let's see if we can get even more people over to this channel by everybody at the same time hitting like button in 30 seconds, all right? So we're doing a countdown now to SoFi launch the like button, okay? Now, we are about 20 seconds away from the countdown, and we got 83 people on the channel. Let's see if we can get up to over 50 likes here. 15 seconds left. And here's the countdown right now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, smash that like button, everybody. Please, let's hit that like button and let's get us up to 50 likes or more. And that'll be great for this time of the day. So let's see you do that. I appreciate it if you do. Let's see if we can get up over 50 likes. I will say thank you very, very much. And I'll put a heart on over here. Got in pre-market. All right. I bought another 40 at 685. There's a heart on the screen for you. There's a heart on the screen for you. Thank you very much. Let's see if we can get up to 55. Let's see if we can get some more. There will be a heart for anybody that hits that like button right now. Holy smokes, we just went. There's another like. There's another heart on the screen. There is a heart on the screen for you. And there is a heart on for you. And I'm enunciating that word heart very well. I don't want any confusion amongst any of my viewers. I'm not saying anything but heart on, okay? I'm not going to get a heart on the screen for anybody uh, other than uh, those that hit the like button, though. So there you go. We jumped all the way up to 56. 
Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Back over to SoFi. Are we back in the green yet? We're headed there, folks. Yes, honey bunny. Can you come here? Yes, I'll be right there. Just give me a second. All right. We got my sweetie party. Sweetie party. My sweetie pie, she needs me. So just give me a minute. I'll be right back. And look at all these people that are helping keep this channel commercial free by donating money. This is all the people this week who have donated to the cause. And I want to thank you for doing so, so we can keep this commercial free. All right, I'll be back in just a minute, little bit. How uh, will you fill my coffee?
Okay, everybody, King Cat is back here now, and we're going to get back to the action. Let's see what's going on in the market. All right, everyone. Hey, just want to say hello to you. Thank you for being here. I'm going to have to bring the volume level down right now. We're bringing the volume level down. we got some serious meeting going on in the living room, and so we're going to keep it down. want to thank you all for being here with me today. While we look at some other stocks briefly, but wow, I hope you guys did go over to 10X and take a look at that interview because I thought it was very enlightening. TENX, oh yeah, 687, 16 million 394 already, 688. How are they going to stop it from going up, everybody? How in the world are they going to stop this stock from going up? I don't see any way for them to do it. Xavier bought another 1865 now holding 8,000 shares with an $8 average. Okay, I'm with you. All right, very good. Well, I want to thank you all for being here. I'm going to bring my voice up here as close as I can to the microphone, try to keep it down. We're going to be going into the golf mode. Hope you don't fall asleep while I'm talking here. And I want to look at some other stocks today. 10X. Oh, restore the tab. Let's go take a look at 10X. And we have a run or not. Where are we, ladies and gentlemen? Let's take a look at 10X. 10X. Oh, yeah. And this is where I found the webcast. All right. So if you want to know where you can subscribe to watch that webcast, click here. And they'll get your name and your email address. And I think that's all they asked me for. And maybe the business name. And after that, that's all I needed to do. Then I got the link sent to me, this one here that was sent to me on 10X and the interview that was just a very short interview, about 20, 22 minutes, 23 minutes. Go check it out, everybody. All right, 10X. All right, so let's close that page and we're going to come back over here to 10X. <clears throat> See what it's doing today. And I appreciate you guys all of you for hitting that like button that just came in and hit the like button. Thank you so much. If you haven't done that yet, please consider doing it. And then again, folks, like I said, this is a stock that you buy. And as soon as you buy it, you put your sell orders in at $22 and you put them in at uh, 39 and 49 and 65 and 76 and $87. Put them in at $98. Put them in at 108 Put them in there, folks, because one day, one day, it's going to be a good idea to do that, <laughs> to have that in place. All right, so let's get back over to SoFi. Now I'm going to break over 690. And the question is, and we're going to keep a very close eye on this right here today. We're going to keep a very close eye on how many shares are left for them to borrow. And again, they've come in for more. They just dropped available shares from 1 million shares down to what? 1 million to what? There was a ledge right there. 1.1 million, so they used another 100,000. And they've now borrowed, they've now borrowed another 100,000 shares. See, they're about to run out, people. And this was, what time was that? 7 a.m., at 7 a.m., folks, they may have already run out completely. I don't know why this thing is delayed freaking four hours. I don't know why. Maybe it just takes that long to do all the paperwork or whatever. But holy crap, folks. You mean to tell me there was only 1 million shares left to borrow to short at 7 in the morning? This must be just absolutely killing these shorters right now. Very good day to buy. That's right. Pat Boy 01, it will come back up by next week. This week's support is at 650, so it was expected it would go lower than 7. And good for them. Good for all of us. We sold this a few weeks back at 913 a share, folks. And we sold it at 918. If you were with me and you were day trading it, that's what we're doing on this channel. We're day traders here, folks. We're not all completely long. Some of us are, and that's okay too, because you'll all benefit from your long positions over time. 
But for those of us that are in here day trading this and keeping a big core of a lot of shares and day trading a percentage of that, folks, we can make a killing day trading on this thing right now, especially with this very predictable every morning rundown on borrowed shares. It's as simple as this. When they run out of those borrowed shares, they've got to buy them back. They've got to buy them back. you got to understand something, folks. When they borrowed these shares right here, okay, you look at what it was. It was on March the 14th, 7.15 in the morning. Well, where was SoFi's price on March the 14th? Okay, let's go look at it. Where was it on March the 14th? Well, it was at $6.99 a share, folks. That was the low. And the low as they could get it was $6.99. The high was $7.35. Okay, so on that day, on March the 14th, folks, <clears throat> when they had 1 million shares left, when they got it all the way down here to only 250,000 shares on March the 15th, what was the low on March the 15th? The low on March the 15th was 691, 705 to 691. Folks, that is only a 14 cent change from the high to the low. So over those numbers, 691 to 705, those are shorted positions that had to then be returned. They had to buy. They had to buy on the 15th. All right. At 345 in the morning, they started buying overnight during the darkness and they bought and returned. You can see they went from uh, 250,000. They returned 1.7, 1, 1,750,000 shares were returned at, at, at five in the morning, four in the morning, 415. See that? And then they returned even more. And let's see where they returned more. When it was on the 18th, and I'm guessing it's that's at midnight, okay? So they're operating late at night here, returning their shares, and they got it now from 250,000 all the way back up to 2.8 million, and then they got it up to 3.8 million at 5.30 in the morning on the 18th. So they returned another million shares, and that's why the price was up yesterday morning to someone told me 7.28. They told me in the pre-market it was up to 728. Well, they got to buy and return these shares. That's why that jump happened, folks. Okay? That's my opinion. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Yep. Yep. James Anderson can't wait to get to 25,000 to be with you guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, take a look here at S-O-U-N, okay? S-O-U-N just came out with a big announcement, so I'm surprised to see they're red. There was a there was an announcement from S-O-U-N today. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. SoundHound to offer on-chip voice AI with NVIDIA that delivers in-vehicle generative AI responses with no connectivity required, no phone involved here. All right. This was good news 17 hours ago on SOUN. And if you want to keep a close eye on this, we might be able to pick up some here on this drop. And uh, this, this might right here would be the one, two, three, and this fourth drop. Let's just see if they can get it. I think they're going to go for six, seven, 66 right now. And that might be a good place to buy some of this SOUN, people, because I think that's good news. And I think it was driven down because of that news. We've seen it with SoFi, a triple beat on an earnings call. And they drove the price down for the next four days with uh, 364 million shares to drop the price from 652 all the, on SoFi all the way down to 459 on May the 4th. You see, folks, I know so much about this stock. I don't even have to look at the historical numbers anymore. I have them memorized. I've done it so many times and shown this to so many people that these shorts, I've shown the, the, the method of, of their, their actions and how they've done it. And I have it dissected and, and I have it, the numbers all very, very, very dissected so I can tell exactly how they operate. 
all right? And I'm giving you guidance based on history of this stock and how it's traded. So when I have all these sell orders in at these numbers where the sell orders are, there's a reason I have them there. And the reason we filled there and we've bought back way lower every time, right? I mean, I'm sort of curious as to how many people were on this channel with me on July the 31st that are still here right now when the price went all the way up to 1177 and I said, let's get out at 1166. It went to 1170 for a high that day and we got out at 1166 and we did good. I mean, on that day, sh I sold half of what I had in SoFi because I knew something wasn't right because that was the first quarter that they had a loss and did not meet expectation. But the price went up the highest it's ever been. And I told everyone, we need to be very careful here. Let's sell it now. They're manipulating it. And they were, 1170 was the high. And then they drove it down from that price all the way down to November 21st, 641. Wow. And look where we are now, 50 cents higher. Right now, 50 cents higher than the last low they could drive it down to. On, on, on November 21st. I'll take that. And I'll take another buy. <clears throat> this thing's going to go back up over 10. <clears throat> I'm going to be watching this real close. I'm going to be watching these. How many shares are available to borrow. Oh yeah. Drop it on down. Drop it from 1.4 million this morning early. 6 o'clock in the morning from 1.4 million, borrow that many shares. You know, borrow 300,000 shares to make the price at 630 go even lower and then borrow another 100,000 shares at 645. Why are they having to borrow all these shares? And the more they borrow, the fewer are available. And folks, what happens when we get down to below this 250,000 to the number zero? Who, who's, who's borrowing these shares? Goodbye for you, Carl C. Mark. Good job buying at 685. I bought this morning at 682. And I bought at 684, I think it was. 680. I bought at 682, 683, and 684 today. And now all of those shares that I bought at that time, I'll be selling over $10 probably within 29 or 30 days. <laughs> I have a piece of paper over here on my left that shows that they've done that five times over the last 52 weeks. Over the last year, five times, they've driven the price down into the sevens, even as low as 445, but had it back over 10. Five times. And my point is, why would not they do it again? <laughs> you know, they got a good thing going here with SoFi, this, this, uh, Five times this year, down in the sevens and back over the tens, then short it, then back down in the sevens, make 30%, then go long, run it back over the tens and make 30%, then go short and then run it back down to the sevens or sixes and make 35% and then go long and then run it back up over 10 and then you've made another 35% and then go short. Why wouldn't you just keep doing that? Why? And, and they will. I believe that. That's why I keep telling everybody, buy it here and you'll be selling it over 10 if you want to. Not all of it. Someday that'll break and then it'll be hovering between the 15 and the 12 and the 15 and the 12 and 15 and 12. And then one day it'll be hovering between 18 and 15 and 18 and 15. And one day it'll be 21 and 18 and 21 and 18. Yeah, they're just going to keep doing it all the way up and they don't care. It's working perfectly for them. And they're going to keep doing it. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I think this price is going to be back up over 10 very soon. And I think the target that Andrew Jeffries has is more in line, which is $14. And he's not even the highest one. The highest one's at 16 right now. 
And I think that we're well within reach of that, especially with this volume and then we, where they run out of all the shares they can borrow here. What's going to happen when they run out? I want, I can't wait to see what's going to happen when they run out of shares here. <clears throat> and I'm just watching it very closely, watching it drop. I'm watching it drop. I'm watching it drop from here. 3.8 million, watch it drop to 3.7 million, watch it drop to 3.4 million, then dropped to 2.5 million, and then dropped all the way down here to 450,000 at 3.30 this morning. At 4.30 this morning, it went back up. So they bought, covered some positions and returned some shares right there, 4.30 this morning. Then they started borrowing more and borrowing even more. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it drop right back down here like we did before. Because that's about the only way they can keep it down, I think. <laughs> I don't think there's other ways. I mean, they could, the ones that are hedge funds that go both long and short, they can sell their long positions. They can start selling their long positions. And they, uh, that's the only way they can do it at this point is they got to start selling their long positions to cover the shorts because there's none left to borrow. They won't have an option. And we saw that before when I was showing you guys institutional owner ownership on SoFi it had gone up to 800 institutions. Okay. It had gone all the way up to 800 institutions owning SoFi in case you weren't aware of that. And uh, now you can see when you click on institutional ownership for SoFi, you can see that's changed. Okay. I didn't want to do that. Just give me a second here. There it is. <clears throat> I was showing you a comparison with one of the largest banks right now, one of the top 15 banks in the country. That's State Street Bank. I'm not sure what number they're rated. Here it is. I'm sure they're on here. State Street Bank is rated number 12 out of the top biggest banks number 12 and by the way someone just pointed out that SoFi is at 75 now number 75 but they were rated number 12 State Street Bank look at their look at their institutional ownership decreasing look at that folks that is horrible <laughs> man look at all the institutions just dumping this thing out of it down, 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 price drops all the way down into here, then it goes back up, but down they go again, down, down, down. Price comes up a little bit more, and then down, 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 comes up a little bit more, down, down, down. Man, they're just stair-stepping that thing down, stair street. That's not SoFi's, folks. That's not SoFi's can of worms. This is SoFi, what we're looking like right here, all right? This is for all of you to understand. SoFi is on a roll, folks, and they're making institutes come in. And this time, it's not institutes piling in while the price drops like it was earlier. Okay, This time, it's institutions coming in while the price is rising and coming in like I've never seen them come in before, like they did on February the 13th and 14th when 150 of them came in that and added to their positions. So now... <clears throat> I'm looking over here. Argus Research downgrades Jabel. That's nothing to do with us. I'm not looking at that. Here we are. <clears throat> SoFi's institutional ownership is just out of this world, people. Look at the increases in institutional ownership versus that bank that you just saw, the number 12 bank in the world. And it's fun. I'd like to show you other banks, too, that, and how they're performing in comparison with us. Let's go look at Goldman Sachs. Let's just see what how they hedge up to SoFi. What do they got going on? Goldman Sachs. Look at their institutional ownership. I don't know whether they come up with them or not. Yep, they do. Some of these banks don't have institutional ownership figures available for some reason. What's Goldman Sachs been doing? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I can tell you one thing. They're not growing as fast as SoFi because their number here for month, this is the most recent quarter, is only an increase of 1.07% in institutions. Okay, but we're going to get down here. Look what they've been doing. Look what Goldman Sachs has been doing over the last six months. 
dropping and dropping and a little pop and dropping and dropping and a teeny little pop compared to even these pops. And it's probably just going to keep dropping. Goldman Sachs, institutional ownership from up here all the way down to here now because they don't have as much interest. They want to come over to the newer banks and they're coming to SoFi. <laughs> Anybody else you want me to look at? Anybody out of this list over here? <clears throat> so we got First Citizens Bank. First Citizens Bank, how are they doing? There we go. See here, here's one. They don't show uh, institutional ownership. Man, that's just one of them. There, there's others that don't show it either. <clears throat> but anyway, folks, there's a lot of um, PNC Financial, Capital One Financial. They're probably growing. I would think that they might be, but let's go see. Capital One Financial, how are they doing? Institutional ownership, yeah. Compared to SoFi, i just kind of curious. I want to see, yeah, where's the money flow going? Where's the big money going? Let's go look at them. Oh, my God, look at Capital One. Look at that drop down, 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 down. Then they started to make a little recovery, but down, down, down. Holy cow, everyone. See? Institutions leaving that big, big bank stuff behind. They're heading into different directions now. They're diversifying over to SoFi. Speaking of SoFi, let's go see where the price is. I expect it to be higher. Oh, yeah. Higher than when I looked last. And uh, guys and gals that are here with me, I want to thank you for being here. I'm also looking at this shares available to short with, right? Shares available to borrow. I point out to you that just four days ago, they almost ran out completely. And I point out to you that a month ago, I was looking at these and there were 10 million shares available every single day to borrow. 10 million. Those, those are gone those days. You should, this gives you an idea how heavily they're shorting it right now. There were only 1.2 million left on Fort Dean. Then it dropped to 1.1. Then it dropped to freaking uh, 900,000 shares. And then bam. <laughs> and how are they going to keep putting those big red candlesticks to make the price fall if they don't have the shares anymore? Well, there's only one way. And that's to buy them, sell their uh, long positions on the stock. And uh, that's why I was pointing out to you folks the other day that about uh, two months ago, so if I had 800 institutions, well, not even that long ago, it was probably a month and a half ago, they had 800 institutions. But if you go to institutional ownership now, you'll see they've only got 798. So they dropped a couple. Well, they had to sell their long positions to cover their shorts. That's my opinion. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I don't think so, because it actually dropped from 800 institutions long, uh, down uh, 800 total institutions to 790. So 10 institutions had gotten away. Now we're back to 798. And those are institutions that are coming in new and taking up new positions. <clears throat> Volume already reaching 18 million shares at 11.25 this afternoon. I'm trying to keep my volume down a little bit today. So if you're wondering, that's because I'm trying to keep it down a little bit. I'm trying not to talk too loud here this morning. There we go. I can hear much better now. I had to turn my mic feed up. Hopefully you can hear me even better now. And you might need to turn yours down because I did just boost the signal, the gain signal on this mic. So maybe you'll have to turn down a little. We, shorts are having a hard time today. LOL. Yep. Yep. <laughs> of 
Carl Seabark says, be very quiet. I'm hunting shorts. Carl the short hunter. Oh, man. I used to have shorts here, but I ate them. <laughs> Xavier's shorts are trapped, and this is the only way they can get out, drop, and rise back up every day till earnings. It's the daily churn. They are going to get burnt. Oh, yeah. They sure are. But see, as I was just pointing out to you just recently, a couple of weeks ago, I was going over to this cost of borrow and I saw sh shares available. It was 10 million every day for that last seven days. And I thought to myself, man, this doesn't seem to make sense because Hurricane Lopez has been saying that they've been increasing their short interest. But folks, this is what it's saying here. I'm using companiesmarketcap.com and it's saying the number of shores short uh, shares available to borrow in the last seven days has dropped from 10 million two weeks ago to 3 million and the very most it was was 3.8 million but look how skinny it got for them look how thin the tree became here on march the 15th 3 30 in the morning they borrowed almost every freaking share that was available all 10 million shares gone and paying an interest rate on them to borrow them and to dig their hole even deeper, folks. All right? Meanwhile, the volume is already at almost 19 million shares here today at 11.30, and the price is rising on them. And the question, the same question I have for you, folks, is we should now... With this pattern, they're developing with the same thing every single day. We got to start taking big advantage of this. We just got to. We got to do it. I, literally, you guys have seen me over the last week. I haven't sold. I've just been buying every day at the low. And I'm not buying huge amounts. I'm just adding to my you know, dollar cost average, make it lower. <clears throat> Sergio, it's, it's SMR, Tyler. I think I like it. <laughs> ASMR. Yep. Someone, pretty sure we looked at that one before. Yes. Jeff, that is a key point to point out. Thank you for your pointing that out. Wait a minute. You're going to have to get that right. ASMR is not coming up. I see ASML, but I'm not seeing an ASMR. And that's a little on the steep side. That's going to be so fast priced in about 20 years. <clears throat> ASMR finance ASMR stock market whispered and the world's most relaxing compilation team ASMR I'm not saying it man ASMR I, I don't find it don't know what you're talking about there. Oh, yeah. 
Look at SoFi, guys. Look at SoFi going up and up and up. And it should be no wonder. I'm just waiting to keep an eye over here and see this this time. I wish it was more current. It's only showing 6.30, 6.45 in the morning. <clears throat> I'm going to keep refreshing it, though. I want to see it drop all the way down to none, to zero shares left. That's what I want to see. I meant ASMR, as in the whispering to a mic. Oh, 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 I got you. Uh, we've got 68 people on the channel. I want to make something very clear to all of those that are here that have never been before. I want you to see how much study I put into this stock. And this is just a fraction of the amount of information I'm going to be providing on this channel. But right now, I want to show you this. On May the 15th, David Chiaverini came out and downgraded SoFi. He said the stock was only worth $2.50 a share. And shortly after that, the price dropped all the way down to $4.45 a share on May the 15th. Right there. 445. How many days later? <laughs> 29 days later, the high was $10.23. The very next day, three downgrades came from Piper Sandler, Oppenheimer, and Bank of America. They all downgraded, by the way, to a higher price than their previous target prices were. But see, the price had gone from 445 all the way up. It went from 445 all the way up to 1023. And they were chasing the stock when it was at 1023. So these downgrades were upgrades to higher target prices. But even though that was the case, the price dropped all the way down to 771. And that happened over a period of only nine days. But after 771, 27 days later, July the 19th, the freaking price was at 1013, where we sold it. We sold it there. Why? Well, because after that, nine days later, the price was at 894. And then two days after that, the price was at 1170. And by the way, in here during this duration, July 13th, guess who downgraded us? Yep, Morgan Stanley downgraded us on July the 13th and made the price drop. And then it sold at 1013 after that on July the 19th. Then nine days later, back down to 894. And 19 day, uh, three days later, it's at 1170. 19 days after that, only 19 days, back down to 789. God, 789. And then 27 days later, 918, the same high that we saw two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. That's the same number. And from that number, they shoved us down 66 days exactly to 641. So that low right there was the last low. And the cool thing was this low of 445 to that low of 641 is an increase of 44%. That's good. You're talking about eight months, fellas. And you're up 44% from 445. That's not, if you, if you trade it in and out, you'd make even more. You'd make tons of money here, folks. Then, here's the deal. After they got it to 641, Again, it was less than a month. 29 days later, the price was at 1016. And we sold it at 1013 there again. <laughs> Same day, they drove it back down to 923 from 1016. And seven days later, it was at 1049. Boom. The highest it's been over the last six months. 
I show you all these numbers because they're important to understand. Every time they've driven this price of SoFi down under $7 or around 7 it's always gone back over 10 within 29 days. All right? I, I don't know how, and I don't know why, but I know it has every effing time. <laughs> okay? That's all I can tell you. And I see no reason whatsoever for the pattern to stop now because they're just making too much damn money doing this i think about how easy this is i think about how easy it is i got another piece of paper here that would blow your mind folks <laughs> This is going to blow your mind. Look at all these pieces of paper of information I have here. Just give me a second here. I'm going to show you a piece of paper. It will make you realize exactly why the, the manipulation has been so heavy on this stock and I'm going to make you understand it very 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 clearly it's going to be very easy for you to see this visually just like this piece of paper here was I've got another one for you here and check this out all right and there's been many people on this channel for a long time that's seen this dozens and dozens of times but from every single one of those lows to each of these highs to the next low to the next high to the next low to the next high to the next low to the next high to the next low, these are the percentage gains. Look at the average from each low to each high to each low to each high to each low to each high to the low to the high to the low to the high. It's amazing, folks, to the low, to the high, 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 to the low. Look at those percentages. <laughs> no wonder they've been doing this. And look at the days. Look at how many days. There's such short durations that they've been doing this over. I mean, they've just been absolutely slaughtering it. And in fact, from this day when the price was 544, all right, when this the price on October 31st of last year, when the price was 544, these are the gains you could have made. And by the end of all these gains over these periods of days, your total gain would have been 839% if you had sold at every high and then shorted there and then bought out at every low and went long again. In a year and three months, an 839% gain. Day trading the stock. And so now you know why I track their numbers so closely to see where their lows are and where their highs are and where their lows are and where their highs are and start taking freaking advantage of it, everybody. Oh, man, I heard that. J-Rod, I'm playing this sound hound like a fiddle. Absolutely, yes. It is, it's so easy to do. And by the way, S-O-U-N, I showed everybody where it was at the low. I told them to buy it this morning. I told them right here, look, I said, there's the first bottom, there's your second bottom, there's your third bottom, and your fourth bottom is going to be here. And if it is, you need to buy it. Jeez. They just came out with news, folks. They got this AI with NVIDIA deal coming across. Of course, they're going to get massacred right out of the beat and come down and go red, red, red. Everybody wants in on that news. I told you to buy this right here, everybody who's here with me, right? At, I said buy it at 766. 766. Xavier says <clears throat> to look at shares, yo. Borrow, look at Fintel or iBorrowDesk. Updated hourly, and Fintel also shows the fail to delivers, which is actually important here. Yep, Tyler, you should look into some sound proofing for your computer room. Happy life, happy life. Yeah, that's true. I could get some uh, a crate foam for the walls. I, I do have that foam. So you're right. I should. 
That's a good idea. And then I wouldn't have to talk about this. Look at this sound, S-O-U-N, folks. It just went past 8.30 like it wasn't even there, 8.13. Now they're going to pull it back. Here we go. So now you see, folks, this is what I was telling you. That was a perfect example of it. They're going to stop it at 8.13 just like they did, but it can sometimes run over that with so much momentum behind it, and then it has to be pulled back after the momentum washes away, so that's what they're doing here right now, <clears throat> and after I tell you to sell at 813, I say buy it back at 808, so right now, put a buy order in at 808, I'm going to do it right here, coming in on sound, folks, sound, add to position, Let's pick up 50 shares here, and I'm putting in eight. Hell, I'll just put in a market share right now. This thing's going. It's already going to go back up over 13, place it. I'd love to get it at 813, to be honest with you. And I did, 813. S-O-U-N, and I ended at 813. Where did my buy sheet go? There it is. S O U N fifty at eight thirteen. All right. And let's pick up some now at eight oh eight. I always like to buy at eight oh eight when it gets to that eight thirteen. That's why I tell you to put it in there. And I should have just done that. I should have put it in. <clears throat> let's just do another market now. Review order and place it. <clears throat> let's pick it up. Eight oh nine. 809 it is. But see, it got to 813. 50 at 809. Let's go to 808. Let's do it again right now. Just reuse that order. Review order and place it. <clears throat> 808 it is. 50 at 808. All right, let's get some more here. Review order and place it. I will take it, man. 808 again. Thank you. Now, you know why I say sell at that 813, buy back at 808. Very nice. And now off she goes. I'll get one more here. Review order and place it. Oh, man. See how quick that was? 812. And this thing is off to the races, folks. Eight twelve fifty. Boom. Well, now you know why I have that number on my chart. Now, normally, if I was this, if this was SoFi right here, I'd sell this at 820 now. Okay. Actually, with SoFi, I'd sell it at 818 because I think they're going to go for that 819 number again and stop it there. But here on this one, normally I my number sell at after it passes the 813 is sell at 820 and buy back at 813. That's what I would do. <clears throat> oh, I just bought 761. What the hell are you buying at 761? What? Tyler, you should look into some soundproofing. Jay Red bought at 761. Oh, okay. Oh man, 10X looking good. Um <clears throat> SMCI took a big tumble today. I also understand DWAC has talked taken a tumble of about eight or 9% or more. In case you don't know about that stock. Oh. All right. Now I want to go back over here. Somebody was just saying...
Fintel. To update hourly, and Fintel also shows up out to delivers. Fintel. All right. Search here. So by cost to borrow. All right, I probably went that the wrong way. Hold on a second. Let me just do a search for so by period up here first. Then I'll get to where I need to go. All right. J Rod's up to a thousand shares. All right. Nothing to laugh about. He bought a thousand at seven sixty one. Good deal. Yeah, look at DWAC. That has just hit the bottom, folks. That just tanked out right there, right there at 32.49. That's it. That's it. It's starting to turn and go north. And if it breaks over 32.66, folks, it's going to go right on up. DWAC. So I'm glad I took a look at it just then. <clears throat> All right, let's get back over here. So if I review shorts sentiment. Short interest. Probably won't be able to see most of this information right here. I want to thank all of you that are here with me right now. You know, short interest is 154 million. That's that's the highest. That's almost the highest it's ever been. Thirty-eight minutes ago, one million. So they used another hundred thousand shares within the last hour. They borrowed another hundred thousand. I like this that there were three. There were three point four million shares, and then there was three point eight. So it was dropping and dropping and dropping. Three point eight, three point four, two point five, one point four. Now one million. They actually had it all the way down to only 450,000 left. See how they work it? So, the reason that they got it all the way down to as low as they did today was because they used and borrowed all the shares they could. And now, unfortunately for them, <laughs> the price is going to go right on up. And remember, they're doing good because the previous close was at 708. 708. So, they're doing good. They've got the volume at 20 million shares, and that could be trouble for them at 11.51 because it looks like, again, we're going to definitely see over 40 million shares today. And now, folks, they're at a swing point here where they're going to probably try to get the number of shares up again here to three or so. So they're going to have to start buying here. They're going to have to start buying so far, and they are. They're buying it now. Looks to me like don't really have an option if they're going to get over here and return any shares. They don't have an option. They can't completely run out of all of those shares available.
she looks good, folks. Looks very good here. And uh, something that I mentioned to you guys earlier when it comes to SoFi and institutional ownership going from the th uh, 700 and we had 800 on one day about a month ago. There were 800 institutions. And then it dropped to 790 institutions. And I thought to myself, well, that's weird. Why? But then I noticed that the volume had gone up and share percentage was higher when it went back to 798 institutions from the 790 that it fell. So these new institute, eight institutions that took up positions after 10 got out and sold their long positions, I wondered why those 10 would get out when we were right at 800. And I thought then, well, they must have been long and short and they had to cover their shorter positions and they had no choice. There was no option for them. I want to uh, refresh this page. I see we've got a long delay on this live stream. So let me just refresh this page. And for those of you that are here with me right now, we're, we're going to, at 12 noon, let's hit the like button together in six minutes. Hold on just a second. Set an alarm for 11.59 a.m. Now, I'll show you guys something else here. This is on my buy sell numbers. You see, I have a sell here, and this would be through the eights. So now that SOFI is down in the sevens, this still applies. Sell at 792, buy back 788. Sell at 792, buy back at 788. Why am I showing you that now? Well, there was the price just there at 793. <laughs> and they're trying to yank it down now. And it might even go during the lunchtime low to 688. That's my thinking. And you really should put a buy order in at 689. Again, there's a reason that I have that sell order in there at 692. I used to have it at 693, but it's almost like they started reading my what I was telling everybody, and they started then it wouldn't let it get to 693. So I just said, well, let's just make it 92 and just take it. Don't be greedy. But usually, when it gets to that number, they have if they have any strength, they'll take it back to the 88. And if they can't take it back to 88. That's good for us, all right? If they can't take this price right now from that 693 back to 688 or 689 right now, that's very, very good for us. I'm just going to tell you right now because I wouldn't have that on my sheet if it wouldn't happen in very frequently, okay? But I have it there because it happens all the time, <laughs> So that's why I have it there. Now let's see what we do right here. If we don't go back, great. Absolutely great. I'm making sure you understand that. And this is a good way for you to, deter to determine the strength and the momentum. You know, are they, do we, are they able to do what they've been doing for so long? Are they able to pull it off what they've been doing for so long? Or are they not? 
And it looks to me like they're not able to pull it off right now, what they've been doing for so long. And that is taking it from 693 back down to 688 and then on up and then 793 and down to 788. I mean, how many times do we see the damn price go up to $8.13 and back to 788? Time and time again with this stock, we've seen that. Oh, my God. So many times you can't even count them on both hands. It's true. And it wasn't that long ago that the price was at 913 and being driven back down to 888. It was it happened six times in one week, two weeks, two and a half weeks ago. <laughs> price was at 913 plus to 918 and went all the way back down to 880s and 870s. And it did it, like I said, five or six, seven times. And I I only told it, I, I sold at the high four times and bought back lower. But, oh, my God, folks, look what's happening here. They can't even pull it back now. They're not even able to draw it back off of that 693. Uh, I'll get on to Neo here in a second. Let me. There was a day about two years ago that Neo made me a fortune in one day. The thing was trading up and down a whole dollar plus every couple of minutes, up and down a dollar. All right, let's turn this alarm off. I'd like you to please hit the like button in, one, in about 20 seconds, folks. About 20 seconds from now, we're going to hit it at 12 noon. We're going to hit that like button. Yep, here we go. We're counting down, folks. And it's 15 seconds. Hit that like button in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Hit that like button. Come on. Do it to it. 12 o'clock noon. Hit that like button and let's make this thing rocket. Let's look at uh, this chart today summary chart see what they're doing in neo look at all the markets going green look at the s p 500 that just went green the dow is now up 213 the russell the index sofi is in just went green everyone and the nasdaq they're trying to keep it down a little bit at 16066 they just stopped it i guarantee it was 160666 where they stopped it just now from going up but everything else is freaking green including the s p 500 folks and the dow the leader the s p 500 where 40 trillion dollars is in market cap compared to nasdaq which only has 20 trillion in it 40 trillion in the s p right now and look at it green oh my god good luck shorty good luck shorty look at bitf's chart right now Geez, oh, Pete's, it's about to go green, too. Nice. And SoFi, who's going to stop it? Now trades to 694. Look at these numbers right here. Look at these numbers right here. 205. Watch these. This is your trend right here, over here, folks. 20 million, 662. Look at those little 100 share buys. 100 shares, 100 shares, 100 shares. 20,664, little dinky, 700 shares, 20,666, 20,667, 20,668, soon there's 69. Oh, uh, yeah. And she's going, folks. What are they going to do? What are they going to borrow? What are they going to borrow? What shares are they going to borrow? I'm looking at Neo. I, I see this number here, 668. Okay. And now they're trying for 666 right now. Let's look at the one month. Jeez. Choppy, choppy, choppy. Huh. This is what I'm looking at. 
I appreciate you bringing that to me attention, uh, Carl. That's good. Could be at the day's low, which would be $5.13. Would be a very good place to put in a buy, maybe. But not a heavy buy. Just very light. I'd go 514 right here. Looking back at the six months, let's see if this number has never been achieved. Look at the one year. Oh, my God. I don't know, man. Uh, they say don't catch a falling knife, and that looks very knife-like over the one year. So I'd be very hesitant to get that right here. Regardless, I'd still be hesitant. We'll see what happens when he gets to 513. But it, <laughs> you're a lot safer to buy this stock right now. <laughs> With 21 million shares traded at 12 noon. Yeah. And uh, them running out of shares to borrow. <laughs> They're picking that share tree clean, folks. They're picking it clean. Alan P comes into the tank. Thank you, Xavier, for that information on Fintel. I appreciate that very much. Mickey Maki Salapets, you should look at some sound prepping. Let's see, a 761. Got your 1,000 shares. Please, bye, 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 Alan B. I hear you, Alan. Carl Seamart, trading NEO. No, uh, don't do it yet. Let's see what happens here. We'll keep an eye on it, but I'm not going to get in on that yet. Not like I just did on SOUN, that's for sure. This is the one to get in. Oh, goodness. Yes, 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 yes. All those great buys on SOUN. Oh, my God. Look at that. We just bought them at 809, 808, 812, 813. Kaboom. 847. Dang. Everybody, this is such easy money. Oh, my gosh. Love it. Love it. I told you this news was big. This deal with NVIDIA. They want in on this, folks. They ran it down. They ran it down today because they wanted in on it. This double bottom. Look how, how much they wear people out. They did it two times. Boom, there. And then a false bottom. And boom, there. And then off she went. Holy smokes. Stephen Quinlan just topped 5,000 shares. Good. I don't remember your name very often here, so hello and welcome, Stephen. AR3, good morning, Catfish. Still buying SoFi shares and patiently waiting for the write-up. Thanks, Catfish, for your knowledge on this stock. You're welcome. Thank you, AR3. Oh, I do know about this stock. I know it like the back of my hand, folks. I've sniffed out every little trick these shorts try, and I got my eye on them, baby. S-T-E-V-E-N. Stephen. Hello and welcome, Stephen. All right. Hello and welcome, Stephen. Glad to see you here. And uh, I always try to say, Hello to people that I don't recognize that are not here that often. <clears throat> I'm going to put, <laughs> glad to see you here again, question mark. And uh, then, we'll, then we'll know, you can tell me if, if you're just a very, uh, there's a lot of people that tell me, man, I just listen a lot, Catfish. I don't say a lot. So if you're one of those, hello and welcome to you, Stephen Quinlan. I do believe I remember the last name from before, but folks, Here's what you need to be aware of today. These SoFi shorts, they got themselves in a real pickle, but they're going to do this every single day as long as they can, and we're going to take advantage of this. All right, we're going to take advantage of this. We're going to start taking major advantage of this morning rundown every day. It's getting too typical. It's getting too predictable for us not to be taking advantage of it every single day. So we're going to. At least I'm going to. You're dang right I'm going to. I'm going to do it. Let's refresh this page and see how many short shares are available to short now. We're watching Fintel here for this information brought to you by Carl Seamark. I believe it was. <laughs> There's somebody else that told me about it, actually. I'm going to find out here. Xavier, was it you? Uh, Mickey Mock. Oh, 
God, this page is doing some weird shit. Xavier, it was Xavier. Thank you. Xavier, thank you. DWAC, I told you it was at the bottom. I told you that was the time to buy it right there. I told you, folks, $32 right there, $32.28. There it was. There was your bottom. And look at that thing respond now. Nice. Call that one. BITF is, in fact, about to go green. There you are. One penny down, one thousandth of a penny down. Very nice. Right on up, baby. Just keep on climbing with all those miners. Wait till you find out how many mine, what Bitcoin they've mined after about 90 days from now. All those miners, all the new miners just getting plugged in by the day right now into their into their line. 694 and rising. And the question to be asked here amongst oneself is how are they going to stop it? from going up when they've borrowed every damn share there is available to borrow most today. Look at that. Dropping, dropping, dropping. Here we saw it all the way down to 450,000. And back here on the 15th, they used almost every available share. And here's the key to this that you need to understand. A month ago and two weeks ago, I was looking at number of shares available to borrow, and it was at 10 million shares available. That was just two weeks ago. 10 million shares were available. And now, look how low it was just four days ago. It was all the way down to only 250,000 shares available to short this thing with, folks. And over here, just today, look at this. At 3.30 this morning, they had shorted every available share they could get on, their hands on again, almost. And they're driving it back down even lower now. And they're not even, folks, you need to understand here, they started returning shares and they returned shares and they returned shares until there was 3.8 million had been returned. Well, that's because they started shorting it. And all week, the price has been dropping. So now they can start buying those shares back and returning them to the brokerages. And they're making good money. But today, what are they going to do? <laughs> They, they've already borrowed almost every damn share. How are they going to run the price down now? Well, they're going to have to return those shares, folks. They're going to have to get that share count back up to three or four million. And the only way to do that is to buy. They'll come at it overnight again. And they're going to do this every single freaking day, folks. We need to start taking advantage of this on SoFi. Should have sold it today. At seven dollars, okay. Bought it back down here at six eighty-five, and then tomorrow morning sell it at seven fifteen or whatever they get it up to, and buy it back at six eighty-eight. They're going to do it every single morning. They're going to borrow whatever shares are available here to borrow, just like they've been doing. They're going to keep doing this. They're going to keep doing this, and they're going to keep doing this. But you got to see. Here, they had to buy back, and so this is why the price has gone up throughout the day now. They're having to buy their way out, but then they started again. Boom, they took it all the way down this morning. This is yesterday afternoon, folks. That's what I'm guessing. I could be wrong. This was the 17th. Yep, there's the 18th. So this was yesterday afternoon, and they were having to return shares, and you can see what they did. And that's why the price in the very last 10 minutes yesterday went up on SoFi. In my opinion, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. But now, look where they are already. You got to remember something, folks. Over here on March the 14th, okay, right here was the Mar March the 14th began, right here. There were 1.9 million shares available to short with on March the 14th. And just so you're aware, if you get over here and you look at March the 14th, that was when the low hit 699. So they shorted it from 735 on that date all the way down to 699. And what's, what do you think is going to happen now when the price gets to 735 a share? And it's going to do that. Oh, boy. See, the last time it got to that, and they, this was on the 14th, and they ran it down. They used every single share there was available to make it drop almost. They only had 
550,000 shares left on the 14th. That's how they got it to 699. And then to make it fall lower, they had to borrow even friggin' more. And there were only 450,000 shares left uh, on the 15th. And that's why the price went from the 14th, 699, down to 691. <clears throat> This volume, though, folks, this is what's going to kill them. This is this is what's going to kill them, this volume right here. <clears throat> They're not used to this, folks. They've never seen this before. Add up this volume and go back and tell me when we've seen this kind of volume before. Go add this up. Let's, let's just add it up over 10 days. See how it compares. 187. 827, 9, and then let's just round it off, 131 plus 131, let me clear off this memory too, there we go, all right, here we go, 187.8 plus 131.0, 131.0 plus 83.1, 83.1 plus 76.4, 76.4 plus 59.02 plus uh, 49.5, 42.18. 118, doesn't matter, I'm rounding off these other ones, 69.5, 52 52.674, 52.6, 46.9. All right, so how many days is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 days. 800, almost 800 million shares in 10 days. Okay, this is important for you to understand. Now, let's just go back here to, say, October or November, or even on a day when the volume was real high. Let's go find a very high, high volume day. Here's 125,000 shares. How many, after the price was at 788, and then it went all the way down to $6.57, how many shares were used over that 10-day period, starting with 125? When it was at the high, because 708 the day before, and it was 80 cents higher. So how many shares over this period instead of 798? 798 million. All right, let's see how many they could run it down with this. 125.9 plus 63.3 plus 42.3. 45,932, 46.262, 34,068, 28.15, many days is that one two three four five eight we got two more 86.6 and 29.4 folks that's 543,000 shares to drive the price from eight dollars 788 all the way down to 657 the low they could get it but it took 543,000 shares. See how easy it was to manipulate it down from 880, uh, 788 and make it drop a dollar and 30 cents right there. A buck 30 down, just like we just did from 810 all the way down to where we just got to. It was even more. But I'm just showing you the relative 10 day volume number, 543 million. And now we're at 900 and 
798 million, almost 800 million shares in a 10 day span. So I'm of the belief that we've never seen volume like this before. If you go over 10 day spans, even to the 10 day span back on May the 15th, when Chivarini came in, the, the, and or even go to May the 1st, which would be a better day because that's when they really ran it down. From May the 1st, how much volume did they use over 10 days to run the price from 654 to the high down to $4.45 uh, in 10 days? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 days. So let's see how much volume it co cost them to do that. There's 125 million, 125 plus 115.4 plus 64.2 point four 59.715 40.8 39.9 let's make it 40 uh, 26.7 28.624 plus 36.075 plus 44.397 plus, and then on that day, they used 103,000. That's 683,000 shares they only had to use. All right, to make the price fall 30 something cent, 30% 30 from 654 all the way down to 445. And that is a 33% drop, roughly. And they only use 683,000. And now they've had to use almost, I mean, 683 million. Now they've had to use 800 million. All right, they're not used to this kind of volume. And it's getting tougher for them. That's my belief. And I'm showing you this because I think it's important to see the, the, that, and that's one of the most highest volume levels there's ever been over 10 days was that period right there. That was one of the heaviest ones they came at us. I mean, even over here, I mean, this volume here is pretty high here from May the 31st. The volume was pretty high 152 million, 108 million. That's 252. That's 310, that's four, uh, 460, 510. I mean, this is a lot in here through here too, in uh, May and June. And the price just kept rising and rising and going higher and higher and higher to 1023, folks. And this is where they are now. This is the same kind of volume they're starting to have to deal with again, see? Not the May volume, but this type of volume here running the price from a low of $6. And actually, it was lower than that. Hell, it was $4.45. But even from here, folks, from $6, it really started to rise May 31st, June, all through June, up to June 14th. And there was a lot of volume, very similar to the range of volume we're starting to see now. That's the similarity I'm showing you. It's the volume that's going to kill them, folks. It's the volume that's going to eat them alive. Just like it did back during that period. It was volume. And the only way they could bring it down after that big up, run up to 1023 was because Piper Sandler, Bank of America, and uh, the other one, uh, Oppenheimer, and make them do downgrades. That's the only reason they could pull the price down from 1023 to 771. All right. Was because of those triple downgrades to higher target prices than their previous target prices. Right now, I'm looking at uh, the Dow up 223, the S&P up 500, the NASDAQ is about to go green. And uh, I'm watching this SoFi stock price rising, rising, and rising. I see no way for them to keep it from going even higher. Uh, I'm going to be monitoring very, very, very closely this uh, the shorts. Um, cost to borrow and how many shares are left to borrow with, all right? 
and there's only a million left and it's probably going to increase or decrease there's probably going to be even fewer shares left unless they are buying like i think they are yes see they they just returned 400,000 shares so they're having to buy here folks they're in the buying see cuz they got to get this up to around 3 million shares the question is if they do that will the price be back up over $7 or so they can, can can they keep you know dumping every once in a while still okay that's the question but I'm watching this very closely because I would love to see them keep uh, get get back up to 3 million shares to borrow with again because that's what they're going to do. They're going to do it again overnight. They're going to come at it again. They're going to borrow all those shares overnight tonight again, just like they did last night. And I'm showing it to you how they're working this system. I'm showing you how they're doing it. This is how they're doing it. This is the way they've been doing it. They have been return, borrowing the crap out of them, borrowing the crap all afternoon, all evening. They're just borrowing. I mean, as soon as the market closed yesterday, right here at, what time was it? At, uh, it would be at 16. That, that'd be 4 p.m. right there, 4 o'clock. Look at them. They started borrowing as soon as the market closed. They started borrowing. And someone even said to me yesterday afternoon, something's going on, man. There's a big million dollar sell off. Well, that was it right there. Boom. They started borrowing. And look at that. Uh, all the way until two in the morning. And then 345, this 345 in the morning is when they came in the heaviest with their borrowing. And they borrowed almost every one of the three million. There was 2.9 million shares available, and then there was 1.9. So they borrowed almost all of those. They borrowed 1.54 million shares, 1,400,000. And then later, at 2 in the morning, folks, 2 in the morning the next day, they did it again, 3.30. See this? So this is in the morning when they're doing it. 3.30 in the morning, hear it again, 3.30 in the morning, 3.45. And then what, was, what time was it here that they did it, right? What time was that? 3.45 in the morning and using virtually every friggin' share they can that's available to borrow with to make the price fall every morning right as soon as the bell rings. We got to take advantage of this, folks. We've got to take advantage of this. Let's see. Congratulations, Stephen. Uh, Jeff Presley, MVDA, also did a deal that was announced last night with Spire Global, SPIR. I've been long Spire for two years. Thank you for letting me know. Jeff Presley. Look at Sophie. Just looks gorgeous. Look at her. Just getting higher, folks. Higher and higher. That was easy. That's right. That was easy money, making this money, this money, this morning, buying at $6.85. And I bought it lower than that today. I'm pretty sure. I don't think that number is accurate. I think it was 682 where I picked it. I picked it up. Oh my gosh, this is so easy. Well, it's so easy, so easy. Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's so easy, so easy. So whoa, whoa, whoa! It's so easy, so easy. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Look at that so far. Go, go, go. It's so easy. So easy. Ooh, ow. It's so easy. Ow. Oh, yeah, baby. It's so easy. Oh, making money. Telling you folks how we're laughing at the shorts while we're making money here. Oh, it's so easy today. So far. So predictable. Looking at how they do it. It's cool to dissect how they're manipulating it, what they're doing each day, how they're making it happen. And guess what? It's happening every morning. They get up out of bed and they short. They go borrow some shares. And then they start in the morning of the pre and they run it all the way down as low as they can get it. Yeah, baby. As low as they can. Then they got to start. Well, they got to start taking profits. And they got to start selling those and give them back over to the brokerages so they'll have them tomorrow morning at 345 to do the same damn thing with over again. Yep. They're going to just keep on doing what they got going on. Yep. That's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to do, folks. 
short interest, 154 million shares. 120 something million came off the table. Yes, indeed, folks. I can just imagine them calling over to the short factory, <laughs> the short share factory, and they call up and they go, "Hey, man, we need to, we need to borrow some more, man." They go, "Well, they're gone." <laughs> they're like, "Huh? Yeah, there, there's none left to short. All the shares have been, they're already gone. They're gone." Well, well, how the hell are we gonna keep the price contained if we don't? have any shares to borrow. Well, hell, I don't know. I guess you're just going to have to naked short the damn thing. It's your balls hanging by the fence line. <laughs> Go ahead, naked short it. We don't have any shares. Sorry, just you're just going to have to naked short. Well, gosh, dang, man, you got us in the... Hey, we didn't do this. You're the one that keeps shorting it every day, all this volume coming in. You're the dummies. Stephen Quinlan, I'm happy to wait, but we are bouncing at 694, 695, looking like it wants to go to 7. Oh, it's heading there. That's right. Getting very, very, very slim on the short tree, the short share tree. 78 concurrent viewers. I'd like to ask you all here at exactly 1230, which is going to be one minute from now, to help Catfish's channel by either buying a $2 sticker or $5 or $20 if you, you're making money today with me. And uh, if not, then just go over and get to your music provider and listen to me on Apple Music or stream my music and you'll help me out that way. It doesn't cost you a dime. And you'll find me on any of the music channels that are out there, uh, any platform. My music, Tyler, T-Y-L-E-R, last name, S-E-L-P-H. And we're about to hit that like button. All 80 viewers in 30 seconds, we're going to hit the like button together simultaneously and we're going to count down to hitting it. And we're going to be doing it in 20 seconds from now at the sound of the tone. So, and we're going to hit it here in another 15 seconds. And here we go. We'll start the countdown at 10 to hit the like button right now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Boom. Let's see if we can jump this all the way up to 75 likes from 67 right there. And I will put a heart over here on the screen for each and every one of the likes that we get right now. And I'm going to prime the pump with a couple of likes to start it out. And I want to say again how much it means to me for you to hit that like button because it helps us all get more and more people over to this channel because that like button hits that algorithm and you guys hitting it all at the same time makes a difference, folks. When we hit it all at once, at one moment in time, it's something that the algorithms pick up on and then they go, oh, well, let's send this out to even more people. This, these guys are liking what this dude's saying. So come on, folks. Here's a heart on for you if you hit that like button. There we go. 72 likes. Thank you. There we go. All right. Look at all that. Everybody's putting heart on the screen. Yes. Look at all those heart ons. All right. Thank you. And I'm obviously being very careful with my words when I'm saying the word heart and I'm saying on, following immediately. And so there's a heart. And there's another heart, and we got all kinds of hearts on the screen right now. It's beautiful. As we watch SoFi go up and up and up, and they try to hold it here, 13 cents down. And now it's only down 12, so so much for that. Oh, my God, folks. If they can't stop it at 13 down, how are they going to stop it at 12? Well, they're not going to. They're not. <laughs> If they could have, they'd have stopped it at 13 cents, I promise you. If they could have, they'd have stopped it there for good. There sure isn't a freaking wall there, is there? There's no wall there. And quite honestly, I don't believe there's going to be any walls, any real walls between now and the time we hit $12.29 a share. Uh, uh, Duck Kings, once we get to $10 plus, I'll give Catfish some big money. Okay, good. 
Appreciate it. And Stephen Quinlan, I'm getting excited, but waiting on more money to buy more shares. Wish I had 5,000 more. I hear you, my friend. Well, these days like today, we're starting to see a regular event here every morning. And I'm showing you so you can understand how this is working. Every single morning at 3 at 3.45 in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, they're borrowing as many shares as they can. They did it on March the 13th, so they could attack us on the morning of the 13th as soon as the bell rang and get it as low as they could on the 13th. And just so you can see what I mean by this, on the 13th, if you look at the chart, and I'm on the five-day here right now, look what happened on the 13th right here. Well, of course, as soon as the market opened, they attacked it down and then they worked it down all freaking day because they had borrowed all their shares in the morning of the 13th. They borrowed all those shares and then they returned them overnight at 12 and 1 o'clock in the afternoon and 2 and 3 and 4. That's why the price and folks after that, the next morning, same time, 3.30. 345, they borrowed every, virtually every single share that was available to borrow, and the tree went almost empty with only 550,000 shares that morning at 330, and they used them all day, again, the following day, and then they had to return them, but they returned fewer, you can see that, fewer were returned, and boom, the next day at the morning, 315, 330, 345, same thing again, it's the same movie, people. They borrowed and they almost used them all. They only had 250,000 shares left. Now here's the biggest part you guys don't know about. I was looking at this cost to borrow two weeks ago and it was at 10 million shares were available all through that seven day period two weeks ago. 10 million shares were available for shorting all through two weeks ago, all through a seven day span. And now you got days dropping to fricking how many thousands, hundreds of thousands, 700,000, and then only 550,000. And here only 250,000. Folks, this is your signal that they're running out of attrition. They're, the war, we're gonna win this war. Look at that again, only 450,000 shares today they had left. I mean, folks, they are hanging like a cat hangs on a tree limb right now. I'm telling you, they're in trouble. They're in trouble because they're running out of shares to short with. They're going to have to stop borrowing shares to short with to run it down. They're going to have to start using their own freaking money, and that'll really start hurting them. We're going to hit them in the wallet, folks. Oh, look at this thing rise. Go, go, go. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. 696. If they can't stop it at 695, they're not going to stop it at 696. And if they can't stop it at 696, they won't stop it at 697 or 698 or 699. And they're not going to stop it at 7. And they're not going to stop it at 12. Why, why Catfish? Why is it going to 12? Well, it has to. For anybody that really make any money off of that convertible note deal that all just bought up that $862 million worth of convertible notes, they're not going to get their money back by getting 1.25% interest. They could have took that $862.5 million and put it in the damn bank and they could make way more money than the SoFi loan. If you guys think that they loan that money to SoFi for 1.25% return, you would be highly, highly incorrect and the shorts this is where their biggest mistake is they took advantage of that convertible note deal like thinking thinking the price was going to keep falling but it's done falling and as a matter of fact all the shorts did was when those convertible notes came out they helped drive the price down on that news so that the brokerage was able to buy them at the absolute lowest price they just could yesterday and today they'll never get it any lower and now all those shares that they have to make available for those convertible notes. That's 120 million shares that no longer exist in the open market. They're tucked away and they have to be reserved for the day that they're going to be converted. And they're going to be converted on the day that will be uh, three uh, weeks of the price being at 1229 or higher. Okay. 
All right, so you got to understand they got a very, very incentivized reason to get the price to twelve twenty nine, and I have a feeling if they can make SoFi's price drop from freaking twenty four dollars all the way down to four forty five, they can easily make it go from six ninety six up to freaking fourteen. Why did I say fourteen? Because fourteen fifty four is the max they can make, and I think they're going to max this out. I think they're going to max it out. I think they're going to get as much as they possibly can. They're certainly not doing this loan in the convertible notes for 1.25% interest. No, no way, folks. And that's a lot of shares. Now, you got to understand, even when they get the price of the stock to 1229, those institutions can convert their notes, but they can only get $9.45 at that price. Only $9.45. But they get nothing. <laughs> they get nothing like that unless they get the price to twelve twenty nine. They can't do anything with those shares at all. They're just locked away, safely tucked away, and they can't do a dang thing with them. I know what I'm talking about here, folks. But by the way, I'm not a financial advisor, so do not uh, put everything that you know you have into what I'm saying. But look at that, six ninety seven. Now I told you. I told you if they couldn't stop it at those other numbers, they're not going to stop it here, folks. It just is not not going to freaking happen. It's not going to happen. Got too many th things in the fire right now. The NBA deal that they just did and having their names splashed all over the NBA right now. Oh, yeah, coming into playoff season here. They're going to be all over it, folks. Shorts are screwed right here. Shorts are absolutely screwed. Kat, Kathy Wood accumulating massive amounts of shares and not stopping. She just keeps buying. Kathy Wood has just kept on buying and buying and buying. <clears throat> man, oh man. She has been coming in. Kathy Wood. Jeez. Here it is. This is the sheet I want to keep on top. That's right. Jeremy and Rochelle, good job on your due diligence. Thank you very much. Well, it pays off for all of us, folks. It pays off for all of us. Did anybody else buy any sound today when I told you to? S-O-U-N? We came in on it on the low. Look at that damn thing. I told you. That was a solid buy. I bought it 809, 808, 812, 813. Boom, 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 boom. Came in. And now you know why I did. Simple fact is, SoFi's price is going to go to $12.29, and it's going to do it probably with, on the next earnings call. And then it's going to have to stay over that price. They won't be able to convert those price, those notes at at the price of $9.45, unless they can hold the $12.29 for basically a month, okay? I think it's 20 out of 30 trading days is what I was told. But what a great buy on SOUN this morning, everybody who bought with me. I'm glad you were here to pick that up. We've also got our eye for a low on NEO. I also picked out the low on this one today and told you to buy it right here, DWAC. Told you to get that right there, 32.23. I said, it looks good, folks. I would be very clear, carefully watching this one. I think it's heavily oversold, DWAC. This is a to Donald Trump move here. This is one of his linked companies linked to Donald Trump, okay? Just so you're aware of it. Oh, my God. Look at SoFi, 697 now. And look at that freaking chart, everybody. Why? Well, like I said, they're, they're in a situation here. They've got to start returning these shares. They've got to return them. And they're in a little bit of a fix because uh, this is getting tough on them here. All right. And we're going to keep watching this. I want to see if they absolutely liquidate every single share they have at their option today. And that's why I'm keeping a very, very close eye. And they've only got 1,400,000 shares. And they also had that four hours ago, so they borrowed 400,000 shares because they were down to 1 million left an hour ago. Only 1 million left, and I was showing you guys over 10, two weeks ago, there were 10 million shares available every single day on this chart. 10 million for seven days in a row, 
And that went on for a couple of weeks. But things have changed, everyone. You got to understand things are changing drastically right now. All right. They're, they're, they're not where they were two weeks ago. They don't have 10 million shares every day anymore. It's, it's, they're not even at 4 million anymore. Okay. Every day, just be aware of that. Okay. And this is going to help us. And this volume is going to help us every single day. We're over 40 million shares is going to help us big time because I've already showed you the last time we started getting in the fifties and 60 million shares a day, the price went on a friggin' tear folks. Cause they couldn't control the volume. You need to look back here at the same type of volume that we're seeing. Now, look at the daily volume we're seeing right now, 69 million, 59, 76, 83. And that happened before folks. And it was right before June the 14th. Look at the volume, 63 million. Look at the volume here before June. I'm going to go all the way back so you can see the comparison here we are look at the volume 152 million 108 million the price was at 559 152 108 63 69 56 million 60 million 66 million just like we're seeing now and the price had gone from five dollars and 20 cent and 509 all the way up to 820 and it ended up hitting 1023 see this volume this is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of volume we're seeing right now, folks. That's why I keep telling you about this volume. It means so much. All right. This volume is not what we've seen in the past. If you go back into October and you go back in early uh, to November, even the volume was way down here. Look at the freaking volume in October. It was 17 million shares, 17 million, 23 million, 20 million. This was the easy days for the shorties. Glory days, glory day. Oh, when the sun didn't shine on oh, the shorts. Look at that. It was so, so fine. 16 million, 18 million, 17 million, 17 million shares. Shit on that. That's gone, man. Those days are over. We're at 69 million, 52 million, 59 million, 83 million, 131. We're going all the way back up again, folks. This volume is going to run them over. Like a big old freaking locomotive freight train, folks. I have 500,000 SoFi shares at seven something since I have time to wait and maybe buy more. Good. Sounds good. I will try this strategy. Just afraid to get left behind. Man, look at that. It's about to break over seven. And I told you it would. I told you if they can't hold it down 13 cents, they're not going to hold it down 11. And they're not going to hold it down 10. And they're not going to hold it down nine. And they're not going to hold it under seven. Because they don't have the strength and they don't have the ability anymore. I'm telling you, folks, the volume that we are seeing recently is going to eat these shorts. They're going to eat their shorts. They're going to be eating their own shorts. That's what they're going to be doing. <laughs> you guys were on this channel. You saw me a week and a half ago. I told you the price wasn't going to close below a certain number that I pointed out. And I was wrong. They shorted it down and ran it under that. And I had to eat my shorts. Well, at least I had some chocolate syrup to go with them. And uh, you saw me do that because I stick by my word. What I say, I'm a man of my word. And if I tell you they're not going to hold a wall here at seven, I mean it. There's not going to be a wall at seven. There's no, there's going to, there's going to be no wall here at seven because they were, you know why? Because there was no wall here at seven when the price was falling. It came right through seven, almost like a knife through butter. And if it did that on the way down, my presumption is it's going to do the same damn thing on the way up. I don't see a wall at seven. I'm not looking at level two, but I'm telling you right now, I don't think it's there. I think they got themselves in a major, major bear trap here, and it starts today. I took pictures of the prices when I bought this morning when I was getting down here at six, when it got down to 682. I took pictures. You got, you know it. And the lowest picture I got was 683. But I got it. I got it on my camera and I put it there for a damn good reason, folks, because that's going to be the end of this lows uh, being run down daily, daily, daily. They're running out of shares to do it with, folks. They're using all the freaking shares they can to make it happen. And that's going to date. That day's going to come to an end. Like I said, one of these days they're going to call up uh, one of these shorter uh, brokerages. And they're going to say, hey, man, we need to borrow some shares. Of short. They're going to say, I'm sorry, we've borrowed, we loaned them all out. We don't have any more. 
what do you mean there's no more? There's no more, man. Don't you get it? I know. Well, there's like 700, 900 million shares. Uh, no, 120 million just got taken off the table last week when they had to do those convertible notes. 120 million gone? Yep, 120 million came out of that 900 share, 900 million share poll, and they can't be traded. They're locked away for those convertible notes. Well, that's ridiculous. They won't be able to do anything with those convertible notes until the price hits 1229. And I would say, well, what the hell are you going to do when the price hits 1229? Because you're fighting institutions now that want it to get to there. And if institutions, like I said, can make the price fall from all the way up at $28 and change all the way down to $4.45, I think they can easily make the price move from $6.82 up to freaking $14 or $12.29. I believe that. I think it's well within their capability. And if you don't think so, you should just watch what well, you can watch what the institutions want to do after the May 1st triple beat. Uh, earnings call of SoFi, and they took four days and 360 million shares to run the price down from five uh, 452 to um, yeah, uh, from 542 down all the way to 445, and it was at 652 actually. They ran it down to 445, 652. We're about to go over seven dollars, and I'm gonna ring the damn bell when it hits it. And I want to thank every one of you that are here. I'm grateful for your being on this channel. I know there's a lot of other places you could be with your time and spend your time, but I am showing you the technicals. And what I want you to understand is these technicals look good. 10X, in case you didn't hear, came out with a, a good report for their, uh, and I watched the video and I gave you a link to it. Here it is, the 10X therapeutic video. I put the link up here. If you scroll up the screen, you'll see it right up here. And it says, uh, there's a, it says, Link to the 10X. All right. And I don't even see it up there anymore. But anyway, there is an easy way to find that link to 10X. You can just Google search for it and you'll find it. I guess the link has already gone away. Dream of stuff. Jerry Rochelle just sold 138,000 shares. His loss. Yep. Hello, my love. Okay, just a second. I've been trying to keep it down on a low volume. Let me go. Uh, I'll be right back, folks. And when I get back, most likely we'll be over $7. All right, we'll see you in a minute. Look at all these people who are keeping this channel commercial free. Maybe you want to help out too. All right, just a small donation is all we ask. Got it. 
Okay, everybody, I just want to let you know that what I've got to do here uh, briefly is going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of a break here. Might even be 10 minutes or a little bit longer, but I will be right back. So you guys just hang loose and uh, we'll leave this up here for you. Uh, so you can, if you're monitoring this screen for the price, at least I'll keep the price up here so you can see the price, okay? Instead of putting the catfish up. And if anybody asks what's going on, you can just let them know. He's taking a quick break. I'll be back in a minute. All right. See you later. Are we over seven yet? Ah, oh, there we are. <laughs> I just saw a seven. Oh, yeah. All right. I'll be back. I'll be right back. Y'all hang loose. Okay. All right. Well, that didn't take that long. I'm back already. Whew. All right. As we watch SoFi spring over seven, and it's not going to look back for a while, folks. And I would love to get a picture of this price right now as we watch it go higher and higher. So I'm going to do that. Maybe get the last time the price was ever $6.99. And I have the live button on. I don't know why. Uh, get off there, live. I don't want you on there. Uh, come on, let's see if we can get 698 here. The last time of 698 ever appearing, folks, right there. That's what we're taking a picture of. And we're going to make sure that we've got the screen updated. Uh, to the time, I want to make sure the time is right because they like to delay. It says 12, look at that. It says 1225 and it's actually 1256. And uh, so let me try and get this updated to the time. There it is. It is 1256. That's what we want. The last time the price was at 698, 1256, everyone. I'm going to have your comments on here too. I'm going to have your comments. Oh, God, what the heck is happening here? All right. All right. That's going to be it, folks. The final time we saw 698 on this stock today. And look at all of the markets going green. Every single freaking one of them. I'm going to take a picture of this, too, so they can all see what happened. They were trying, the shorts trying to fight the entire damn market. 
Short's trying to fight the entire market here. And that ain't going to work. That is not going to work, folks. And I want to thank you all for being here with me on this channel right now as we record for history's sake and my wall of uh, SoFi fame, the last time the price was ever at six ninety eight dollars a share before it went up over 7 And that's what I'm here to document right now. And I'm doing it right now, folks. I'm doing it right now. And in fact, I don't even see six nine. There it is. Oh, did I catch it? That was six ninety eight. Oh, there it is. One more time. Ah. Oh, that Jeremy Rochelle. All he's doing is getting paid, folks. Those are you got to understand. That's restricted stock. That's restricted stock. It's it's stock that they get compensated for their work with. That's what it is. It's restricted. It's restricted stock. It, not not common shares. It's what they get paid with. It's that's their compensation, and all those that just sold and f filed those forms, every one of them were just getting paid for their work. That's all there's to it. That's how they get paid. They that's stock based compensation. They've done it many many times, many 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 times in the past. It's been done, and uh, because that's how they get paid. <laughs> And that never has a negative effect on the share price. The, the, the shorts don't even try to bash with that. They don't. <laughs> they don't. You know, they just don't. Looking at SoFi now, making a very nice recovery today. Very nice indeed. This is the same thing we're seeing every freaking day, everyone. It's the same thing every day. Use all the all the borrowed shares they can early in the morning. They borrow. They've been borrowing on the 13th. They borrowed them at 3:30 in the morning. On the 14th, they borrowed them at the exact same time, and then on the 15th, they borrowed them again at the exact same time. But the the problem for them is there's fewer and fewer shares to borrow from. The pool gets shallower and shallower. That's why they had to return some here over the last couple of days so they could have a deeper pool to, to sh short from, but it's getting shallower and shallower even now, again. And this isn't gonna stay, this isn't gonna stay. Folks, I'm telling you, I've already mentioned that just two weeks ago, there were not four million shares here to every seven days, there was 10 million. And it wasn't even being used, they weren't using it. The whole 10 million stayed there for seven days in a row, not even being used. But that's not the case anymore. Now they're using every one of those shares almost. And I show you here on the 15th, there was only 250,000 shares left to short with. And we're looking at this on the, a more current one can be found here on this one. This one's more up to the date. They update this about every uh, 20 minutes or so, I guess. And uh, right now you can see that they've re they were up, they had 3.8 million shares one day ago, and then 10 hours ago, and you can see what time they did it even. You can see what time they did it. Here, they did it at 2.13, 16.02, and then 06. Here it is. 6.45 this morning, they came in heavy and took away a bunch of shares, almost 3 million, 2.95, 2,950,000 shares they borrowed at 6.30 this morning, and they used them up until five hours ago, all right? That's when they did it the most. They used them all right there, and that was five hours ago. And that was at the open, folks, so they could use them at the open. So they borrowed them right there so they could use them at the open, okay? So you understand that. And I don't know what happens with my vo voice sometimes. I don't know if that's breaking up on your end, too, or just my end. I think it's just my end. I think it's just my headphones plug in. But, folks, they got trouble on their hands. They got trouble brewing. And I, as I said to you before, I don't think there's going to be a wall at $7 because there wasn't really a wall when it fell below 7 There wasn't. It didn't hold up at 7 It just went right through it down. So I see it going right through it up now, too, because when the gaps are created down, those gaps are still there when the price starts rising. And there's a lot of gaps between here and $24, folks. I got news for you. There's a lot of gaps. Oh, yeah. 701, everyone. I told you there was going to be no wall at $7.
I told you that. That's right. You're right, Jeff Presley. They're restricted shares. Kenny Red Joe, how many how many do you have, Stephen? Uh, Stephen, so sell SoFi at eight twenty, buy back at eight thirteen. Yeah. Now I want you to know, <laughs> I had N Clark with me here one day, and he owns thousands, hundreds of thousands of shares. And the price I told him, he asked me the same question you just did. And then I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, because uh, we were getting close, we were almost at eight twenty. It would like around 817 or 818 a share. And he said, so I should sell at 820 and buy back at 813. I said, well, wait, before you do that, let me go look at the six day swings. And I saw that we were only in the third day of the price rising. So I told him right then, no. I said, I just look in here. We still got three more days for it to go up. And so don't sell at 820. And he had already freaking sold at 820. Well, after the reason he was so upset about that was because that day it didn't even drop back from 820 to 813. It only dropped about a penny or so or two. And then it went on up to 830, then 840, then 850, then 860, 866, where I sold it. And then it dropped. But he was upset because he didn't, he didn't uh, get my message. And he said, I'm sorry, I had to go back to work and I didn't see what your, your response and so I sold early. Well, I don't think he feels like he sold early now. If he just bought back and Clark was able to buy back at $6.82 after selling at, at uh, eight twenty, okay, or seven twenty. I think he's pretty damn happy <laughs> that he sold at eight twenty now and then he could buy back here. And I know he did. I know he did. I know he did. And I know he bought back for less than he got in. And, uh, so congratulations to you and Clark. And uh, so th the same thing would be said now for 720. Uh, I'm not so sure I'd be selling at 720 now because the reason I say that is because the price fell so rapidly from that $8 down to what we just saw. And there was very little stopping points. It really just kept falling and falling. And if it did that on the way down, it can easily replicate that on the way back up, see? Because they, what happened on that big drop over just a couple of days is that on that convertible note news, that created a lot of gaps. That created a lot of gaps because it was rapidly selling down and it was happening over a 24-hour period after the convertible note news came out. So those gaps got created and now they're there for the way up. They're there for the way up. So I wouldn't necessarily say to sell at 720 now. Uh, I think that we're in a good long-term holding pattern where every morning we can just take advantage of getting a little rundown every morning for the first 30 minutes like we've seen the last five days. I think they're going to keep doing this. I think they're... I think this is the only way they can control it is what they're doing here is shorting it big time at 3.30 in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, 3.30 in the morning. And they're doing it so they can come right out of the gate at it every day and shake the tree. And they're going to keep doing that all the way up to 12s, 13s, 14s, 15s, 16s, all the way through. They're just going to keep doing it because that's all they can do now. It's out of control. It's like a wildfire out of control. It's running crazy on them, folks. And as I said, you didn't see a wall at seven, did you? There, was, there wasn't there was one. There's no wall there. Now, for those of you, Cleon Crompel, hey, welcome back. April 29th, we having a party. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, I hear you, David G. Yep, we're at $7. Oh, my gosh. Huh? Why do you do that? Why do I do what? Why did you put something on? I don't, oh, my. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's chow time, folks. It is chow time, and I'm going to chow. Mmm. Mmm. Huh. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, folks, just look at this beautiful stock. Look at that chart today. Get used to seeing this every damn day, folks, because that's how they're doing it. David G., let's hope we'll close above the seven second day in a row. That would be super, yeah, very, very bullish. And the thing that I like the most is that over this seven-day period, they've had each day less and less of a pool of shares to short from. And now that they've returned these here recently, they had them to short from. But God dang, they almost mused every, every one of them up again this morning at 3.30. They're, they're just tapping that short tree right out of all of its syrup, folks. All of its maple is, is getting tapped out. The SoFi's maple tree is going to run dry here pretty soon. And it's going to crystallize on them. And they'll just be encased in a hardened resin. Yep, they got themselves in a maple tree mess here. <laughs> they got themselves in a maple mess. They keep tapping that tree and tapping that tree and tapping that tree. And I've already just so showed you guys, those of you that have been here with me over the last couple of weeks, you've seen me showing you this. Every single day, two weeks ago, for the whole week, there was 10 million shares available to borrow and not one of them was being borrowed against, not one of them. And I showed you this uh, three weeks ago. There were 10 million shares there all seven days, none of them being borrowed. And a month ago, they were there seven days in a row, 10 million shares. And now look at the difference now where we are. Why? Well, for one, the volume is forcing them. The volume is forcing them. This amount of volume coming in is forcing them to start tapping into this into the short tree. And they tapped it almost completely out of Maple back here on the 15th of March. And now they tape, tap, tapped it almost empty today. But what are they doing now? What's the price doing? Oh, shit. It's going right on up. Well, well, because they... They tapped all the short shares they could borrow out of the share thing, and they ran at it right out of the morning to use them all up. They used them right there. They used, by then, we were already at 8 or 9 million shares by 9.45 this morning, and now we're already at 25 million again. They're not used to this kind of volume, folks. And, and, I, and I want to point out to you that after the, the when the price on the convertible notes, I'm going to show you from a month ago, here's where we were when that convertible note news came out. Bam. Well, that's a big gap right there. Between this number, $8.68, there's a massive gap because this fall happened in one day from this $8.68 all the way down here to eight to seven seventy six, dollars folks. Almost $2 that happened in just two days. And so it can go right back up that fast in two days. We could two days from now be right back up here at 858, 867. I'm telling you, because as it fell that fast, folks, it was created by momentum and FUD and scare and fear tactics. And there's a lot of gaps between here and here. If you, if you wanted to get over on the one month chart, you can see those gaps more clearly, okay? I'm going to show you right now. Hold on. And there are 70 folks. I want to thank you all for being here right now on this channel. And I'd like to ask you to do me a favor if we could. At the same time, we're going to hit the like button together all at once. We're not going to hit it individually. Let's try and hit it all at one time. And I'd be very grateful if you do that for me uh, so we can... Uh, get this uh sh the number of likes up to uh let's get up to 88 likes if we can and we're going to do it and we're going to count down to hitting the button and we're going to do it here at 1 12 p.m okay so right now that's 35 seconds from now i'd like to see if we can get up over 88 likes 88 likes or more so let's hit that in exactly 25 seconds from now here we go we're going to be counting it down and look at that gorgeous sofi chart Look at the blue day jumping off of the gold 50-day moving average. Holy smokes. So here we go, folks. At 112, we're going to hit the like button. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Push that like button right now. Let's get her up to 88 likes. 
maybe even a 90-like uh, day here, and we'll be over 100 before we know it. But look at all these green candlesticks coming in here at 1 o'clock, everybody. Holy smokes. That is a lot of green candlesticks coming. Wow. All right. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Let's run it up, man. Let's run that light count up. Oh, just like SoFi's doing right now, 702. There was no wall at 7, and I knew there wouldn't be. There was no wall when it was falling. There's no wall when it's rising. There's a big gap, folks, coming our way. No, um, on my sheet, it, I have a sales sheet here at prices where you should sell and buy back in. And one of my sell numbers, the next one I have is at 708. And it says sell at 708, buy back at 701 to set, sell at 708, buy back at six, uh, you, if you sell at 708, you can buy back at 697, 698, 699 if you sell at 708, most often. But see, things are different now. This is what I'm trying to tell you. When the price was falling after the convertible notes news came out, that was such a drastic drop and so fast that gaps were created. And so now those gaps are still there on the way back up. I do not believe we'll see the regular tendency of these numbers like we usually do. Only because of that circumstance. There are certain times when these numbers you should not go by, especially if the price didn't see resistance. Let me just see if I can explain this to you. When the news came out about the convertible notes, there were so many people that got scared by that, thinking that was shared dilution, that they started selling. But I want you to know, when the price is falling, as they were selling, they could be selling over here at these numbers, all right? So one of the numbers that they would be selling at would be right here. They would sell at 801 and even down to 797. They would be selling there. But now, see, they're buying there and they bought those all up so fast that it quickly jumped up to this number. 803801. Well, the problem was when the price was falling, people, the price was falling right through all of these resistance numbers where I would normally tell you to sell as it's rising, okay? So I would normally tell you to sell here and sell here and sell here and sell here and buy back at these lower numbers. But in this case, the price was falling from here so fast down that it didn't happened to be a buy spot and then sell back here and buy and sell back here and buy and sell. It was, it was falling. It was falling too fast to do that. It wasn't coming back to these numbers because it was falling too fast. So if it's falling that fast, when it starts coming the other direction going up, it can rise that fast too by not and not do those pullbacks. That's my point. All right. So there's no guarantees, but I, I would, in, in most cases, if we were just seeing gradual, constant rise in price, uh, this is different now. This is a different situation, and this is why we're, we saw no resistance at, real resistance at seven, because on the panic selling, there wasn't really any resistance at seven when it was falling, see? All right, so that's why I would have normally told you today Hey, folks, when we get to 698, we're going to sell this sucker, and then we're going to buy it back at 693. Well, that sure didn't happen today because when it was falling, it fell very rapidly from the 7s down into the 686 to 682. So it's very rapidly going to go past back that, back past that, most likely, okay? Most likely.
Mm-hmm. I hear you, Richard C. Give us a 710 close. But I have a feeling even if we see a 710 close today, we're going to see them do the same effing thing that they did, that they've been doing all three days this past week. And it becomes very vis visible what they're doing when I show you this chart right here, what they've been doing every day this week, right at 3.30 in the morning, take every possible available share there is to short with. Here they did it again, 3.30 in the morning. They used them all up. Here they did it again, 3.30 in the morning, used them all up. And then they're using them right in the beginning of the day. They're coming at it every day, right at the beginning. You know, they're, they're, they're probably the ones that have been buying in every afternoon from 3.30, 4, 3.45 until uh, 4 closing. They're buying, buying, buying up shares, buying up shares. Then they use those to sell it down in the morning. Yep. Nice. I am certainly keeping an eye on this SoFi chart right here. I want to see if they're returning shares right now or not. They've just returned 400,000 shares here. But I'm watching them. I'm going to be on top of this every hour on the hour. And I'm looking to th see them refresh the screen again here fa fairly soon. And I'm going to see how many shares there are left. I like that there's not 10 million sitting there like there have been all for the last two and three weeks. There's not 10 million anymore. There's less than a million. Or now they're a million four, not 10 million. That's what's making this so hard for them to contain right now. They just don't have the shares right now. They don't have them at their accessibility like they did before. They can't just say, okay, let's just, you know, dump a million shares here now or let's dump 450,000 shares because they just can't do it. And then we get over here on the one day chart. You can see what they're trying to short it down with. Each of these dumps is minuscule compared to the buys coming in. Look at that share dump right there. 150,000 shares is the most they could come up with over the last hour and a half. We've been seeing them daily doing during lunchtime lows, 400, 500,000 shares dump. Where are those now? The biggest one we've seen today so far happened right here at 12. What time was it? 12.10, and that was 245,000 shares. That maxed them out. And here's another one right here, right here at whatever time this was. 250,000 shares, 251.34. That was at 11.34 this morning. See, folks, they don't have all those shares they used to have that they could borrow to short with, and they can't dump 750000 or $1.3 million anymore. They can't do it. They can't do it because they don't have the shares. And they can't fight off this volume, folks. And now we're going to go over 26 million right now. We're going to have another day, most likely well over 40 million shares traded by the end of the day. Because we've already noticed here recently that they don't really start piling in until it gets later in the day. And then you see the 50,000, 80,000, 120,000 share buys, the 40, 400,000 share buys coming in in the last 10 minutes or so. Volume's definitely going to be over 40 million again today. And as I've already told you guys, they're going to have a major problem here if we got this volume at 40 million and it stays over it for a couple of weeks. And I want to make sure you guys can understand why I'm saying that. I want to get back here to the parallel when they were so easily available for them to manipulate with back in October. See, they only had 17 million shares all day, 20 million shares all day. Right here, this is a big difference, 16 million, 18 million, okay? When you got this little amount, it makes it easy to make the price go from $8.73 all the way down to $6.97. Look at this peasly little volume they were dealing with that they could manipulate with. It's changed now. This is majorly changed. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to relate another day when it really started to change on these guys and the volume started getting like it is now. All right, and I'm going to show you that right now here when it started to change and they saw massive volume that they couldn't control. And that happened back in June. The volume suddenly and from May 15th spiked up here 
from 20 million, 23 million, 24 million, 26, 25 million, it started spiking to 68 million and then 152 and 108 and 63 and 69 and 56 and 60 million and the price kept rising, see? 66 million, it was rising, 84 million, up it goes, 117 million, it's getting out of control, 108 million, this is where we've been here recently, folks, and it's going to get out of control on them again, this volume is too high for them to control, folks, as you can already see, look at this, 187 million, and the price wasn't dropping here, unfortunately, it started rising on this 83 million and 76 million and 59. It was going up and up and up. All right, this is a different scenario. This is a major amount of volume starting to shove this thing up on them. And now they're having to turn to the borrow tree and borrow as many freaking shares as they possibly have available. There's not 10 million anymore like there were a month ago and three weeks ago and two weeks ago. There's not 10 million anymore available. They've run them out. They're tapping this tree dry. There are only 250,000 shares left on the March the 15th. And that was when they got the lowest price they have. March the 15th was when they used all the shares that they had to get it there. That was the 691 low. Oh, yeah. And look at the volume. And then think about all those shares that were borrowed to get it to that price. And even now, and now they're tapping the tree out every day for almost every single bit of volume it's got. March the 15th. Here you go. Another one right here. What time was this? Right here. Four o'clock in the morning. 4 a.m. They did it again. 4 a.m. 3.45. The, the difference is, here at 3.45 in the morning, they had the volume way down at the bottom. Here at 3.45, they had it down at the bottom. The next day, 3.45, it was almost all maxed out. They had to start buying back shares and return them to the brokerage so they could do it one more time. And they did it at 3.30. But now they, their problem is they are here at this level. The same level is right there. And the price is going up on them. Uh-oh. Ruh row. Mm. Kevin Blair, great content daily. Alpha being dropped from Mr. Cowfish, appreciate you keep up the DDI and I will keep buying shares daily. You got it, my friend. Very, very, very important to note that the problem is here, they've been able to make the price be falling, falling, falling with these daily morning things, but now the price is rising on them and they use the same amount of volume. That's trouble. That's trouble, folks. And now they're in a situation where they have to start buying here. They've got to buy. They've got to return those shares that they maxed out this morning. Again, they've got to return them so they can use them again tomorrow morning at 3.30 in the morning. So they've got to buy here, folks. They've got to buy. That's what I'm looking at. they got to buy. To repeat the cycle, they have to buy right now. Let's refresh this screen and see where it is now. Yep, still showing just one hour ago. I can't wait to see this next update. It says last update seven minutes ago. Well, why does it down here say one hour ago? And it shows here the time, 16, 15, 44. I want to see him use up every single damn share there is. Superboy 3000. Hey, cat and chat. We got the shorties on the run, baby. Yeah, we do. They got themselves a freaking bull by the horn. They got that big old stone you see rolling down on them. And they're trying to push it up that hill. And they got that massive SoFi boulder that's going to crush them. And they're trying. They're the ones in the thumbnail that are suffering. They're the ones with that big boulder there. That's the short. Not us. That's the short. And SoFi... 
is just getting larger and larger as it comes down the hill. It just got so much mass to it. It did. And it's gotten into this massive stone, right? <laughs> and it's getting so heavy on Shorty right now. You can see it's snapping their backs. They're breaking down. You can see they can't hold it back. SoFi is going to go on down that hill and it's going to get bigger and bigger, just like a snowball that rolls down a hill. It just gets larger and larger and larger and the weight and the mass. Look at it now. 703, folks. She's going to go green. She's going to go green. That was easy. Yeah. Easy profit every single day on this stock day trading this thing with these big swings like this. I show you the five day chart and I'm proving to you that those shares that they're borrowing every morning at 3.30 in the morning, you can see what they're doing with them the next day. They're using them right out of the gate. And even you can see here, the price ran down on Friday right out of the gate. They used them all that they borrowed. And then they had to buy back and the price went right up all day. And then again, Monday, all these that they bought and acquired through here, they had to sell again. They borrowed them all at 3.30 in the morning and they sold them. And then what happened the rest of the day? Up and up and up and up. And then they did it again at 3.30 in the morning and they maxed out the short tree. It got every share they almost could. And they drove it down again this morning and then up and up and up and up and up. God, I love the easy button. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> yeah, this is easy. This is easy money for us, folks. You see the pattern, you see the 3.30 in the morning borrow of shares, you see the 3.30 borrowing more, you see the next 3.30 borrowing even more. See this, this number used to be 10 million shares every day they could borrow and they weren't even using them a month ago. They had 10 million shares for a straight week, seven days, not even borrowing a single one. That's changed now. Times have changed. The volume's picked up on them too much. They got to start borrowing these shares. And notice the fact that they borrowed almost all of them out of the tree. There was only 700,000 left that morning. The next day, there was only 550,000 left. And the next day, there was only 250,000 shares left, folks. This is getting desperation point for them. What happens when this number over here, which was today, dropped down to 450,000. What happens if this number has to just keep dropping and dropping and dropping and then it finally drops below this one here? Where's it going to go from there? There'll be zero shares left for available for shorting. And then how are they going to stop this thing from going all the way to 1229? That's what I want to know. It only appears to me that if they got this down three days in a row to the fewer and fewer and fewer three days in a row, and then they had to start buying shares to make the availability and return those to the brokerages to get back up to 3.8 million. Well, now look at this. Look at the duration from the time that there was 2.9 or 3 million shares. Look at the date and duration it took from the 13th over here for there only to be 200. That's two days. And they went from here, from having this, take a look at this. They went from 3 million shares available in two days to only 250,000 shares. And now here on today, the 18th, right? Am I wrong? The 19th, yesterday, they had 3.8 million shares. And in one day, they already ran it down to almost the same number they had over here after two days. Are you getting it? Do you see my picture? Man, they blew through these shares fast, didn't they? A lot faster than this two incremental drop, man. They they got to that same low right there in freaking right here, and it didn't take long. Look at how long this duration of them up here in the three million was, and then it dropped to here, and then it dropped to there. And look at that. There was very lo little bit of time there, almost the same duration as this drop, but this drop went from here all the way all the way down to there. Wow. And now they start returning some shares and they're back up to this level again, which is equal to this level that we're seeing right here. 1.4 million, 1.2 million all across there. They're a little bit higher. They drop back down. They're a little bit higher. Let's just keep an eye on them the rest of this afternoon. 
And I'm going to. I'm going to be watching them like a freaking hawk, folks. I'm going to be watching them like a freaking hawk. I want to see this number change right here. We're looking at 31 minutes ago just then on that one. Let's go see now. Let's go see. 13 minutes ago updated. So still 1,400,000 shares left available to short with. And that's that's going to be trouble for them because, see, see, they've been able to make this price fall a lot on SoFi lately because they had so many millions of shares to do it with. Here, they they used from 2.9 or 3 million. They dropped it all the way down here to this number, which was 700,000. So they used 2,300,000 shares to make the price drop. Here, they were at 1.9 or 2 million, and they dropped it down to 550. So here, they only had a 1.5 million to make it drop with. And the next time they were at 1.2 million and they made it drop to 250,000. They had 950,000 shares to make it drop with. Okay, 950,000 shares. That's a lot less shares here to make it drop to that new low than what they had over here at 3 million, isn't it? Hell yeah, it is. Then they got back over here where they had it up to 3.1, 3.4 million. And man, they used all that to make it drop all of it today. They used it all. They just went balls to the wall today to get to the lowest they possibly could where they got out at 382. And now they can't do this. They can't keep doing this anymore, in my opinion. They can't. They simply don't have that many shares left. They haven't returned enough. And that to return them now, they got to run this price up, folks. Look at this thing in fast forward running now after having been over here for a while. I hope that you understand what I'm showing you and it makes sense to you and you can figure this out. All right. I hope that makes sense to you. Now, I want you also to look at some other stocks that we've been buying today. We bought this one, S-O-U-N. Oh, my God. Did we do good? Oh, great, Scott. What a great buy. I told you right here, there's your first bottom, there's your second bottom, and there was your triple. And I said, get this thing right now, folks. Get it. Get in on it. They got good news that came out and they were driven down because of this offer they got on Chip Voice AI with NVIDIA. And I told you it was being manipulated down because that's great news for more expansion of this great company. And here they go, running at it right out of the beginning of the day. They double daggered it and double daggered it with a triple bottom and that was the end of it. And there's another run at it right there. I love it. 824 for the low, and down here we were at 761. A 60 cent increase off the bottom this afternoon, even. Beautiful. Loving it. And now Short has got him. Short has got a problem, man. Short's got a problem on their hands. Daggummit, they can't keep just selling borrowed shares back and forth to one another. They got to start buying them back so they can replenish this short share supply and get it back up to 3.1 or 3, 3.4 million shares. Now, maybe they'll do it in the after hours. Maybe they'll be buying them back in the after hours and we can see SoFi go up freaking 10, 12, 15 cents in the after hours. I don't know. I know they got to buy them, though, because they got to get back up to that number that they're so familiar with right here around 3 million shares, don't they? They got to get up there. Or they can't keep doing what they've been doing every day. They can't be as effective with as without as many shares. And oh my God, what happens if tomorrow it ends up that they start out at three in the morning with only 1.4 versus 3.8? Okay. Ask yourself that question. You should be asking that. Here they had 3 million. And what at the end of the day, what if they have only got 1.4? And what if tonight? There's only 1.4 in the till for them to work with because they had to keep those barred shares. What are they going to do then? I think they got problems, big time problems. Yeah, there you go, DB. Yeah.
the truth of the matter is they really don't have any other option at this stage of the game. And I'm glad I could break this down so you can understand the pattern. They had 3 million shares with starting out on the 13th. That was on Thursday last week. And that's why they were able to run it down. And they used to 700,000 from 3 million. They used 2,300,000 shares that day to make it fall. Here, they were only able to use from 2 million down to here, 550,000. So they used a million and a half. Here, they only started with this 1.2 million. So they had to borrow even more shares and make it only 250,000 left. So right there, they only used a million shares that day to make it drop, the price drop on the 15th. Because that's all they had. And they had no choice left, but on the 15th, all right, they had no choice left but but to start buying Friday afternoon. And that's why you saw the share count return Friday afternoon and the price was rising Friday from uh, 3.30 to 4 o'clock because they had to get this back up here to this level where they could start shorting that again this week, okay? And so now again, they've got another 3 million shares they can borrow as much of and they used almost all of them in one day this time. They didn't milk it out over a three-day period. They freaking almost hit this same number right here in one day. And they did it this morning early. So we're going to use this knowledge that we're accumulating here to start trading. And we're going to get smart about this. And tomorrow morning, and a matter of fact, it might even be a better idea this afternoon to sell right now when they run it up this afternoon at $7, you know, and uh, 13 cents, maybe seven twelve. And then just wait for the morning when they borrowed all those shares at 3.30 in the morning to start shorting it down. Then we'll just wait and be patient. And they'll probably get it at the same time. Let's go see what they've gotten the low to at what time of the day. So here on, uh, on Friday, they made it happen at 9.45. And on Monday, what time did it happen? Huh, 9.30 9.32, right there. 9.45 was the low. What was the low here today? What time? 10.15 was the final low, but they had another one there at 9.45, the same amount. 6.85 was the share price, and there, 6.85 again. So you got the pattern now. 9.45 in the morning, you might as well just be freaking buying this thing. <laughs> 9.45 until 10. That's what's going on. It's easy to see it. And every single day after 9.45, the price has just gone up and up and up. There's 9.45, up and up and up. There's 9.45, up and up and up. Don't see why they're going to stop this trend. It's been working for them, and we discovered it. We found it out today. So there it is. I'm glad you're here with me. I'm glad you're picking up on this information. I hope it makes sense to you. We're looking at this chart right here because we want to keep refreshing this screen and we want to see how many they're going to return this afternoon if they have been returning them or if they have even less. And they're still showing as of 21 minutes ago, so they have not updated this recently. But I wouldn't be surprised to see them start having to buy SoFi here to return those shares to get it back up to 3 million or so. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I think they're going to wait until the last minute of the day to do it. I think it'll start at 3.06 again. That's right, David G. Shorts dug their own graves. I'll be happy to show you the shorts right now, as a matter of fact. Let me show you the shorts right now. There they are. There's Shorty. You like that? I do. There they are. You know who's in the middle of that picture right there? That's David Chiavrini. He's the one that really dug the hole for the shorts because they believed him and said the price was going to drop to $2 and 
fifty cents. See, so they they shorted at four forty five that day. I want you guys to keep something in mind that on the days when a stock is on a rise, and some of you have even told me before, hey, Catfish, go over and look at this stock. It's on the run, man. Maybe you get into to it now. When a stock is on the rise like that, there are always buyers that expect it that's going to stay with that, and they want they don't want to miss out, fear of missing out. So they keep buying it, even at the very high of the day, like I did that one day on BIOR. I said, man, I don't usually do this, but I'm going to make an exception, and I broke my rule. I bought the damn thing because the volume was awesome, the price was running, and then it just collapsed after that, absolutely annihilated me. Well, I didn't, fortunately, I didn't spend that much on it in the first place. I only bought 300 shares. But anyway, you guys know that that BIOR cost me. Well, what happened was like that situation I'm talking about is people get the presumption when it starts to fall like it was on David Chia Pansy's uh, downgrade. They thought, well, it's just going to go to 250 or $3. So let's just go ahead and short it here at 450 455 And they did. And they still have those shorted positions that were dug by this guy right here that you see, right there, David Chiavrini. There he is. Found it, FFIEC, -E updated SoFi from 78 bank to number 71 bank, U.S. bank by Consolidated Holdings, passing Credit Swiss Holdings at 72. <laughs> Mopar comes across with a pinnable message today. Love that very much. Pin that message. Jumps to the top of the screen. Awesome. All right, now let me get this. Let me get this out of here. I got it up there long enough. I'm gonna move it back down. Oh, I got I got so many cool things here for SoFi stock and SoFi pictures. Man, you guys love some of these other things I've got. I've got another one right here. Let me see this one. SoFi blazing. Let's try this. And then I'm going to show you this one too. I haven't shown this yet on the screen, but I'm going to at the right time. I'm waiting. You guys are going to get to see a preview of it now. I'm going to show it to you right now. And it is this one right here, fit to screen. And then we're going to bring it to the top. All right, hold on. And I want you to see what I've got coming your way here soon. Ah, <laughs> look at that. That's right, folks. This is going to be it right here. This is going to be one of my one of my next postings right here that you're seeing right here. Yeah, baby. So far, blazing a new trail. That's what's going to happen after our next earnings call, folks. Right there. You're going to see this one, okay? <laughs> I got a lot of them here, man. I got a lot of great pictures that are going to be coming our way, folks. Coming our way. All right. You just hang in there with me, folks. You hang in there with me. <laughs> Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. Do, 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 da, 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 Oh, yeah, folks. Just give me a second here. I got to move this down now. But I got lots of pictures for us in the future. Lots and lots. Many, 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 many pictures for us. Back to the display, and here we go. Let's go see where the price is now on SoFi. DB on fire, SoFi. I like that picture, Catfish. Thank you. Yes, yes. We're going to be showing SoFi blazing a new trail, watching the price rise and rise and rise. There'll be no disguise. It's going to fly. Everybody buys SoFi. And folks, it's going to run. It's going to come undone. It's going to unravel. They'll be digging their gravel. <laughs> oh, yeah, folks. They're going to be in a deep, deep pocket of pain here very soon. And I want to keep an eye very closely, as I said, on this SoFi hourly, how many shares are left to borrow chart. I want to keep an eye on this. And I'm very grateful for those of you here on this channel with me as I show you this really delicious information. I think it is. And uh, 
I question how in the hell they're going to be able to keep the price under $7 when you've already got a volume reaching 29 million shares, meaning we're going to go over 30 million and we're going to go again over 40 million shares today because we still got two hours and we got 15 minutes left to trade. Two hours. What are they going to do? Yep. SoFi is so fire. Yes, indeed, folks. It's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. It's just going to be a matter of when they run out of these borrowable shares. And they're getting there now. They're virtually there now. We're going to see this update in a minute. And something tells me if somehow or another the price, like you just saw, fall from 702 to 699. Folks, how are they going to stop this thing from achieving a new high today? Okay, I don't think they're going to be able to do it. I just don't with this volume. I don't see it in the cards. I see too much volume that's going to come in on this this afternoon because I think that people realize this thing is a firecracker ready to explode. Look at the NASDAQ right now. Look at the Russell. Look at the Dow. Look at the S&P 500. You know what? I'm going to tell you folks something before this announcement coming. We've never seen this happen before in the stock market before an announcement from the Fed. Never. The last few times before these announcements, they've been driving this thing down 300, 400 points. You've seen it recently. They're, times are changing, folks. Times, they are a-changing. Yes, they are. When, uh, does anybody want to tell me when is the G, GDP data coming out? When is that? I know it's soon. Let me go over here and see if I can find out here. Hold on a second. Just give me a moment here. Google. Fed. Fed. Announcement. Pending. March 19th and 20th. Press conference, 4.15 p.m. U.S. Fed meet begins today. Three three key things that they may influence them. U.S. Fed meeting begins today. Mark, market awaits U.S. Federal Reserve rate decision on March the 20th. All right. Don't know what time it's coming, but they usually make it about 2 o'clock in the afternoon or so. So let's just wait and see what they decide. But do you understand the difference that we're seeing right now than what we have been seeing prior to the Fed notification? We've been seeing this big drop right the day before. We've been seeing 350 to 450 point drops over the, before these Fed decisions. What's, what's different now? Why are we seeing this big climb here the day before? Usually you'll see a headline on the day before that says, Markets falter for fears of the Fed decision. We've seen that here for the last month and a half. Every single week that they've had a Fed decision, we've seen we've seen this happen. This is very unusual, folks, what we're seeing right now. I'll point it out to you because I point out I'm Mr. Obvious. And this is obviously different. There's a lot of differences. And I want to point out to you guys and gals who may not be keeping track of this, over the last 10 days, SoFi's volume has gone over 800 million shares in the last 10 days. And I've already proven to every single one that's here earlier today that has never happened over a 10-day period, that many shares, that much volume. It's never, ever, ever, ever happened. No wonder they're trying as hard as they can to get out of these shorted positions because the volume is starting to show an interest that they've never seen before, everybody. The volume that we're seeing now is a volume that we've never seen before this much interest in this stock over a 10-day period. Never. And I, I tell you something else that's different that we've never seen before. And that happened back on, July, on uh, February the 13th. When they drove this stock price down to 778 a share, and that day, 47 institutions added to their portfolio. 
That's never happened. And the price was driven down to 778 that day. And the very next day, the price could only be driven down to 810 from 843's high to 810. And on that day, 111 institutions added to their portfolio between 843 and 810 a share. And now it's sitting at seven. And not one of those institutions that added to their portfolio was doing it at a higher price. They were all averaging down. Some of their dollar cost averages were in the 11s. I looked, some were in the 12s. Some were as high as in the mid 13s and high 13s. And they came in when that price was driven down to 778. 47 of them that day added to their portfolios. And the very next day, as I said, the price was only down to 810 to 843 and 111. I've never, ever, ever, ever seen that happen with this stock. Never, never. Keeping an eye on Pizos. Its stock Palo Alto Networks could drop to 261 if current support doesn't hold up. DB on fire. So if I Mopar for life, Pelosi's. Ah, uh, okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Pelosi. What a disgusting, increpid witch. Standing on the stage, tearing up speeches. With that look of detestment on her face and that stupid little pouty mouth of hers. God, disgust me. I'm oh, sorry. I hope there aren't any Pelosi lovers on this channel. If there are, you might want to find another place to migrate over to because I could detest the woman. All of them going to go after Trump. Oh, we got a big whistleblower. We got our whistleblower. We're all going to hear from that whistleblower soon enough. Gadgummit. We're going to bring him out here. That whistleblower's going to tell everybody how it is. Adam Schiff, you can go find him on 17 different programs talking about the whistleblower that was fixing to come and testify. Lying to the over 300 million Americans. Oh, yeah. Okay, enough of that. Let's watch SoFi just go back up right now here. That's right. Let's see Pelosi. Got her freaking husband screwing around with some moronic guy with his underwear on, standing in the living room, calls the police, comes to the front door, goes back and stands by the guy so he can get hit with a hammer. <laughs> Uh, let me just settle this out, guys. I mean, I know we're, we've got all the pants are off. and <laughs> It's not the gloves were off, folks. The pants were off. Gary Ortega, is everyone Republican here? That's right. We only fly Republic Airline here. Republican Airline. Air Force One. There's no sense in believing any other uh, BS about somebody getting more votes than anyone ever had in the history of the election. <laughs> and the fact that the guy never even went out and, and even hit the streets to try and get people to vote for him because he already knew it was in the bag. Everybody was talking to him in an interview I saw and it said, hey, man, they were saying, aren't you a little worried there, uh, uh, Sleepy Joe and all these people at these big rallies for Donald Trump and the massive support and all of this. Aren't you worried? We'll see who wins on election day. I'll tell you right now, I knew we were royally effed that day. And I also knew we were royally effed on the day of the election when they decided, oh, it's kind of late here, 11 o'clock on my time. Let's, let's get on off to bed. We'll find out who won in the morning. I went, oh no, it's, we're done. Looked at my, looked over to my wife and said, we're screwed. Because the last election I saw go till 2.30 in the morning before they made the call. And so here they were at 11 and saying how tired they were. And they were yawning and they were getting all droopy-eyed. They needed to get to bed. We'll find out in the morning. <laughs> I went, oh, God, we're screwed. And that, there was no surprise to me whatsoever the next morning when I found out. No way. None, none at all. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming because he announced it. We got the biggest voter fraud thing going on in the election history. And we're going to make this a win for the, the Democrats. because. We're going to do it. We're just going to make it happen. All right, so I'm done with that. And if you happen to be a, uh, a, a Democrat, this is probably not the, the channel you want to hang out on because I won't stop making it very clear where my stance is. 
And I am personally of the belief that the reason the stock market has gone higher than it's ever been is because everyone's looking forward to a change of the guard. And be it Mr. T or anybody else, it doesn't matter really, as long as it's somebody else, because nobody, even my new little Maisie and granddaughter could do a better job running this country. And she wouldn't fall off the stage or fall down on the bike or fall running up the steps or fall, 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 fall. It's fall season. It's been fall all year here in uh, in our country. Fall year round. Gary Otega says, right on. That's the shit I want to hear. That's what we're here to tell the truth. We broadcast no hiding it under the bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Okay. Not hiding it under the bushel, no. I'm going to let it shine. I'm not going to let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. That's right, right? We're a shiny little channel here. We shine, shine, shine. And we're looking fine. So fine. I like that word. So fine. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Everybody on this channel having a good time today and listen, listening to me talk a little bit of politics. But we'll get back to this stock that you should have bought earlier today. And that one is called S-O-U-N. And you should have bought that when I bought it this morning. And I told you to buy it this morning at 1030. I hope that you did. I bought it. I bought a lot of it. I went in heavy again on S-O-U-N. And I'm glad to say that I did. Because I figured with this news that came out with the deal with NVIDIA that SOUN was fixing to skyrocket again. And it was only being, being manipulated down because of that news. People saw that news and that story and they went, God dang, this thing's going to take off. So what did I do? I started buying it and I bought it at 8.09. I bought it at 8.10, 8.8, 8.12, 8 8.13. I came in heavily on SOUN. In case you weren't aware of that, I want you also to know, uh, yep, killed in the S-O-U-N hound today. Yep, bought at 761 this morning. Right on. Yep, and we're looking at NEO. I'm keeping a very eye, a close eye on this. I'm not going to suggest you buy into NEO today. I'm not at all because I said it's very, very bad. This one-year chart is nothing but an ass, absolute astronomical drop. So don't catch a falling knife, people. Don't try to right there. I wouldn't do that yet. All right. But now I want to get back over here and see how many shares are available shorty to short with right now. We haven't updated in quite a while. And now it still says, and we were looking at, they've only got 1.4 million shares left, folks. Six hours ago, they had almost used up all 10 million that were available. They used up, well, the only available was three point something million today was all that was available. I'm keeping an eye on this, folks. I want to keep a very close eye on this. I'm watching them like a hawk. I'm watching them because this morning they had 3.4 million and now they got 1.4. So 2 million is all they got that they've, they've used to run this price down with borrowed shares, 2 million. Uh, Wonder, is everyone working right now? For instance, I've been able to have some periodic listening opportunities today. In a few uh, next few days, I won't. Yeah, um, a lot of people that listen to me, uh, listen to me throughout the day and uh, they're at work. They'll listen to me while they're at work and a lot of them work out of their homes. And I ask them to please just play my music if you don't want to make any contributions financially to the channel, if you don't want to buy any little stickers to help support the channel and keep it commercial free, at least go over to my music channel and stream my music during the day. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, all the music platforms. I've got about 70 songs on there. And you just hit the stream button, you know, the playlist and just listen to all my song. If you don't like one in particular, fast forward it. Hell, you don't even have to listen to the dang things. If you'll just go over and hit play the playlist and turn the dang volume off, I don't care. Just hit that play button and let's get those songs racked up so I can get them in the in the bank. Every little song that's played or downloaded to your device makes me money and you don't have to pay a dime for it if you're just listening and streaming. But it's a way to help out this channel, that's for sure. Now we got 75 people here. I got 93 likes. Let's see if we can do this here at 2.0. 
two. That's five seconds. We're going to all hit the like button. Four, three, two, one, zero. Hit that like button right now. Let's see if we can get up to 100 likes right there all together. We try to do it all at once together, and that makes it more effective for more people coming over to the channel. Look at that. We've had almost 900 people here today already. We're probably going to have over another 1,000 today. And for every 1,000 that come over here, maybe two or three people buy some SoFi stock because of what I'm saying, folks. I know a lot of you have made decisions to buy this stock because of the numbers and the charts and the things I'm saying and what I'm telling you about. And I got news for you. There's breaking news today on SoFi that you may not have heard about yet. And that news is this, that seven hours ago, Galileo expands buy now, pay later solution to include post-purchase options for credit and debit. See that? So this is after people have actually made their purchases on their credit cards. Galileo is going to let them pay later. Okay? Isn't that cool? Another great advancement for Galileo. Just expanding a little bit more, folks. Another announcement made. Another announcement made about Galileo, which I think is going to increase more money to SoFi's bottom line. And fairly soon from now, they're going to make a, start making announcements. I believe Anthony Noto kind of hinted at this at his last interview with Kathy Wood and that Kim gentleman, okay? When they were talking about three weeks ago, he hinted and said to everyone on that interview, uh, just so you know, we have tons of RFPs from large banks on our desk right now. He he said, not the word tons, it was many, this is his word he used, we have many RFPs. And what those are, are requests for proposals. These are large banks that are all coming to SoFi and wanting to sign up with that Galileo so that they can get all of their data in all these different cores to all work for them in the one data supply house where they can draw from that data from what's all split up now. That's what they want SoFi to do for them. They're writing to them now and say, we want a request for, for, for proposal from you. And we want to join in with the Joneses that are already using this software that you've got with Galileo to make their businesses grow and get more of their customers' attention and more focus on their customers' needs. And they're all doing this, folks. Every big bank, believe me, not just one of the top five, but once those others find out that one of the top five who's in either the four spot or the five spot, because if they were one of the top three banks, I think SoFi would have said, we're, we're dealing a deal with one of the top three banks. The mere fact that they stated that they were dealing with one of the top five means they're dealing with either number four, Citibank, or U.S. Bank number five. Okay, it's as simple as that. It's one of those two banks, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Look at the likes, folks. We got all the way up to 98 likes. So for every single one of you that just hit the like button, here is a heart. There is a heart on the screen for you. There is a heart for you, a heart for you, a heart for you, a heart for you. And doggone it, we almost went up over 100 likes just then. Look at that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. And here's another thing you need to think about, folks. Do you think any freaking body is really selling SoFi down 1.62%? Does anybody at all have any thought process whatsoever that anyone real is selling a share down 1.69%? Hell no, no one's selling here. The only ones selling here are shorts kissing shorts asses, okay? That's all that you got going on here. Shorts kissing shorts. There's nobody who's afraid with the price down 1.69%. There is no fear. There is no fear. <clears throat> Something tells me the fear all went away at 682, everybody. I could be wrong, but I don't think so.
Now, I know how many shares they were available for shorting today. It was 3.4 million shares and they've used virtually all of them because now there's only 1.4. So they've got 2 million shares that they borrowed today. 2 million. That's all they got. Makes it very hard to stop this thing from running away like a freaking locomotive when you've only got 2 million shares. You got to keep bleeding out very slowly over the daytime. There's no more of these days with sell-offs of 750 million and 900 million shares. That's not happening. They're being very, very, very conservative now with their dumps of shares because they're being forced to, everybody. And look at the freaking 200-day moving average line since freaking 1 o'clock today. Look at that. Look at that 200-day moving average line just rising and rising and rising. And when they try to shove it down, what number are they all going to buy it at? Right there at the 200-day. They're going to come in here big time here in a minute, folks. You'll see. They're not going to let that thing fall behind the 200-day moving average. No, sir. I don't believe it. I don't think they have the strength to do it. I'll be shocked if they can get this any lower than where it is right now, 694. Yep. I'll be shocked if they can get this price down below where it is right now at 694. I won't be surprised, but I'll be shocked. <laughs> okay, I'll be buying if they can get it down to 688. My order already filled this morning. I'm sorry, Shorty, at 682, 12 cents higher than where we are now. I'm sorry about that. I know that really devastates you, and I know that's really numbing, but it's true. Everybody else also sold over to me at 682, and now we're at 693, 11 cents higher. Good effort, though, this afternoon, a very good effort as we cross over 30 million shares. And look how fast it just jumped to 695. All those 693 shares they dumped out right there, completely gone. They vanished very quickly. Look at these share amounts being dumped right here. 241 million shares, 171 million shares. They've only got 2 million to work with, folks. 200 more, so that's four, 500 million. And right there is another 229, so there's 779 million shares. 779 million out of that 2 million they've got to work with. They've got 1.3 million left this afternoon. 1.3 million left. And by the way, they've got to start buying those shares back here pretty soon because they've got to return them to get this number all the way back up here to three again. they got to buy. they got to buy. And so, hey there, Ivy Mac, Danny Dimes in, hey, Danny Dimes in the tank. Thank you for being here, Danny. Mm-hmm. Danny, are you my 101 like today? Somebody just came in here and made me 101 likes today. Holy crap. That was easy. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Uh, I want you to know something, folks, I, although I did have a little snack right then. I'm snacking because I need the energy because I think we're going to see a nice little move here right now. I think we had the cup, the handle, this is the drop, and then the pop's coming right now. I think it's going to start at 213. I think the run is going to begin at 213 this afternoon. Thank you very much, Danny Dimes. I appreciate it. Now we got 102. And I want you guys to be aware of something, folks. This is something we haven't seen in a long time, Danny. Check this out. Just three a month ago and three weeks ago, I was looking at these costs to borrow. And what I saw was there was 10 million shares available to borrow every day for that week a month ago. And then the next week, three weeks ago, I saw again. 10 million shares available for Shorty to borrow. And I said, 
to myself, self, this doesn't really make sense because Mr. Lopez and others have been tracking this short volume and it's as high as it's ever been. So how could there, well, I don't know, but I do know for a fact that one month ago, I looked at this and there were 10 million shares available on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the whole week. There were 10 million shares available and there were 10 million the next week, all week long. But now, folks, I went over and I saw that today, starting on the 12th, there were no more 10 million shares. It had dropped to 4 million. And I saw that it had actually dropped in here below 3 million shares. And I thought to myself, holy crap. 7 million shares have now left the borrowed community and gone into the hands of longs over the last week. And then I saw that at 3.30 in the morning, they borrowed all the shares they could at 3.30 to 3.45. And there were only 700,000 left, not 10 million. There were only 700,000. <coughs> then I saw this, David, Danny. The day before there were 3 million shares. This day there were only 2 million max. And they borrowed even more. And there were only 550,000 remaining available. And it was at the same time of day, 345 in the morning. And I went, my God, 345. <clears throat> 345 in the morning here, they only had 700,000 left. 345 in the morning the next day, they only had 550. And 345 the next morning, guess what? They only had 250,000 shares available. <laughs> and I said, holy crap, each and every day, they've got fewer and fewer shares to short from. So what did they have to do? After that day opening, they had to start buying. And this is exactly why every single day this week, when you look at the SoFi chart on the five day, you can see starting from right here on the 15th, that day that they used so many shares, there were only 750,000 left. The price hit the bottom, but then it started rising. And the very next day, right out of the gate again, here they came out of the gate with all those shares that they borrowed that morning. They only got it down to here, 695. The next day, they did it again. They used even less shares, but they used them right at the very open until exactly 930, 945. See the time right there? 930. Look at the time right here, 9.30. Look at the time today. What time was it? 9.45, okay? 9.30, 9.45. It's the same damn thing they're doing day in and day out now. Every single day, they're borrowing as many shares as they can get their hands on at 3.45 in the morning to attack us right out of the gate and scare out new hands. That's their only tactic right now that's working for them. But the problem, Danny, is that this morning, they had 3 million, all right? On the 18th, yesterday after afternoon, they had 3 million. But once again, they came at it this morning at 3.45, the same time, 3.30 and 3.45. And they borrowed almost every friggin' share that was available to use again this morning at the open to run it down. And they did it again. So they now did it. On Wednesday, on Thursday, they did it on Friday, they've done it again, and they've done it every day, and that's what they're doing. Coming at us right out of the gate at 9.40 to 10 in the morning, right here again, and every day it's been going up afterwards. So folks, what can you learn from this lesson? Well, shit, you should sell this stock in the very afternoon at 3.45, right there, and you should sell it right here at 3.40, 3.30, okay? Because I got news for you. This is what you should be doing because you're going to be able to buy it back tomorrow morning at an even lower price because they keep doing this every single day and borrowing these shares every single day at 3.45 in the morning. And the reason they're doing it every day at 3.45 in the morning is so they can start using them at 4. All right? Use them in the pre-market, start forcing the price down, scare people away, and then as soon as the market opens until 944, where you hit the bottom, and then from then on all day long, you go long, and then they're shorting it 
in the afternoon when they're buying back those positions, they got to back back buy back. They're shorting those. They're shorting those. They buy them all the way up until 345, and then they short start shorting them right there. They start shorting them. They're buying these long every morning. They start in at 945, going into long positions, and it goes up all day long. And then 945, and it goes up all day long. And then 945, and it goes up all day long. Man, they're making a fortune off of this, and we can too, everybody. We can too. This is a pattern, all right? We've noticed a pattern. Matter of fact, I'm so certain of it that today, right here at 345, I'm going to sell 5,000 shares of this SoFi stock. I've got 55 plus thousand shares of it. So what? I'll sell 10% of my stock. I'm so I'm so certain from what I just showed you on this chart that they're going to do it again. I'm so confident that they're going to do it again. And to be honest with you, I don't give a damn if they do or not because the ones I'm going to be selling that I'm going to sell this afternoon at over $7, I believe... <laughs> that they were stock that I bought at 641 just a, about three weeks ago or a month and a half ago at 641 on November 21st. So whatever, three months ago. So I'll still be making money even if they don't attack it again. But I see a pattern and I'm going to start taking advantage of it. That's what I'm going to do. Thank you, Armand. One more like. I appreciate that. Very, very much. We've got 910 on this channel today learning about how they're manipulating this stock every single day. And they're doing it very, very well. It's working very well for them. They've been very successful with this method of borrowing the shorts, the, the shares at 345 in the morning. All 81 of you that are here with me right now, I'm showing you something you need to pay attention to if you want to day trade this stock. Now, I want you to understand I'm not a financial advisor. I don't have a degree. You make these actions based on your own due diligence, okay? But what I'm showing you is a definitive pattern here that we're seeing every single day. <clears throat> yeah, when this thing jumps, it will jump fast. Is it worth taking the chance? Well, if I saw this happen one day, I might say no on the 13th. But when I saw it happen at the exact same time on the 14th, and then I saw it happen the exact same time on the 15th, and then over the weekend, and then I saw it happen at uh, what time was it right here on the 18th, that, folks, that starts to look like a freaking pattern to me. <laughs> that looks like a pattern to me. And I can absolutely guarantee you beyond any shadow of a doubt if I start following them this afternoon here at 345 and I see it get back up to 3 million and this stop, this number jumps up to 3 million again, I'm definitely going to do it. Because I can see, I can figure this out and you can too. It doesn't take a rocket scientist, folks. When you start seeing this pattern of what they're doing every single damn day and here's my belief of what they're doing every single day just so you understand what I think. I think every afternoon they're starting to buy the shares and run the price up from 3.30 until 4 o'clock. And I think that they're buying those shares at shorted positions, okay? They're actually selling them, all right? So as this price starts rising, they're, they're selling shorted positions so that they can even do more borrowing of shares at 3.45 in the morning after they return those shares. See, you got to understand something. When the price starts rising this afternoon, if we start to see it take place and the price goes back to 696, 697, 698, 99 over 7, goes on up. If it does that, it'll be doing it because they're returning those shares that they borrowed. This They've got to get that level of shares back up to 3 million so they can do it again at 345 in the morning. Does that make sense? So it makes logical sense here then if that's what's going to happen and we start seeing here at a 2.30 on, the price gets up to 697, 698, 99 over 7, 701. That's because they're returning shares that they borrowed there and they have to buy those shares back to return them. Okay, they got to buy. So when it gets up to 706 or 708, then it probably makes sense to go ahead and take another chunk out of your uh, how many you've got 
And if it, even if it's only 5% of what you're holding, you're going to buy it back tomorrow morning cheaper because they're going to do the same damn thing that they've done five days in a row. Five days in a freaking row. One, two, three, four, and there's five days. And you can see it's working very nice for them because the, ne the next time on the five-day chart, after they get it run up in the afternoon and then they short it in the morning and they make all this money on the drop, then when they get it at 9.45 and it's done dropping, they go long. They go long and they start buying it right back up higher and higher and higher all day. It's, it's the perfect scenario for them. This is working like a dream stock. Every single one of these days, they've done the same thing. At 9.45, they've sold those positions. They shorted from 3 o'clock to 3.30, 3.45. They've sold those. They've sold them and returned them to the port so that they can then start buying long and accumulating shares again. Buying long, buying long, buying long. And right here at 3.45, they start shorting, short selling. All those shares they bought all damn day, running it up. They start to short sell them there so they can borrow over the nighttime and then run it right out of the gate down and wash out all the newbies. They're doing it every freaking day, everybody. You got to understand that. And you need to take advantage of it. If you've got over 25000 in your account, you need to sell at the morning, the very beginning of the morning, or just go ahead and sell in the afternoon at 345. I'm telling you. Because this is a very, very, very easily determinable method that they're using every single day. Just, it's a cycle. It's a cycle that they're they're doing. Watch this thing here. This will be the last effort here this afternoon at 2.23 to shake out the tree this afternoon. Now, they're all going to start coming in long after they get it down here to 6.93 again, which they just did. They've already done twice or three times today. There it is once. There it is. I mean, they've already hit this number. 6.89, 6.88. Here they are at 6.95, and they're going to run into resistance here. Then they're just going to start going long, and they're just going to say, all right, let's run this thing up again. And then at 3.45 in the morning, we'll borrow all those shares because they got to buy here. They got to return them. They got to get these share count back up to 3 million. This is what they got to do. I'm going to refresh this page now and see if it hasn't increased from 1 million four. See, they've already started this afternoon doing it. They've already gone from <clears throat> this morning, just so you got the picture, this morning they borrowed as many as they could and they only had 450,000 shares left. Now they've already started returning them. See, they're buying. They've already returned almost 900, they've re returned 950,000 shares already. And let's see how many they are by the end of the day. This was, a, this was updated one minute ago. Let's just see if I'm right. I think I'm going to be right. I think they're going to show the price rising from here. I could be wrong, but I do not think so. Now, I can see there's 95 people on this channel, so I'd like to ask you here, we're going to do this at 228, at 228 exactly, because I love the number eight. We're going to all simultaneously at 228, we're going to please, I ask you to hit the like button at 228 in two and a half minutes, all right? So do not hit that like button yet. We have 106 likes right now. I'm asking you to hold off until exactly 228 in a minute and 15 seconds, all right? We're going to hit it actually in two minutes and 15 seconds. My math is horrible. But I want you to know something, folks. Why I'm showing you this pattern is because I want you to take advantage of it like I'm doing, okay? I'm going to sell 5,000 shares this afternoon at 345, between 345 and 4. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to buy them back cheaper. I, I'll prove it to you all. And I'll be buying them back tomorrow morning at exactly 945. Because guess what? On Friday, the low was at what time? 9.45. On Monday, what time was the low? Right here, 9.45. 9.30, 9.45 was the real low right here, right there, 9.45, okay? All right, and then on today, what time was the low? Right here, what time was it? 9.45. Huh, wow, go figure.
And every single day after that 945 low that they used all those shares, they borrowed at 345 in the morning. Every one of them then starts going long and they make money all day off those new long positions, folks. That's how they're doing it. And they're returning all of those shares so they get back up to $3 million to borrow with again. That's how it's working, folks. That's the machine. That's how the machine is cranking out money for them. They got a freaking money printer going and it starts at 345 every morning and it ends at 945 every morning. And then it begins even more money printing all the way up until four o'clock the next day where they sell just before the close. And then they use all of those shares that they resubmitted and returned to the brokerage. They come at them at 345 in the morning to start using it at 4 a.m and attack SoFi right out of the block. And they've done it every damn day. So from 4 a.m. until 9.45 every freaking day, they've been doing this every day. That's why you've been able to see the in the morning sometimes at the very early morning pre-market, the, the price has been the highest it's been in the very early morning pre-market because they're starting at it right there with all those shares that they're borrowing every night at 3.45 in the morning, that they're borrowing in the morning at 3.45. This is a pattern I hope that you can see and it, may, it should be very clear for you to understand. And now we're going to be hitting the like button. I thought forgot to do the countdown to 228. And so we didn't do it. So let's make it doggone 230 then. Let's just do it right at 230 in a minute and 40 seconds. I can't click away from the screen. I got to keep it up here so I remember we're all going to hit the like button at the same time at 230 in a minute and a half. And I can't click on anything yet here. I'm just going to leave it so you can watch what happens. We're probably going to very certainly, I'm almost certain, we're going to see the start the price start to rise because they've got to start returning those borrowed shares and get back up to $3 million available to do this with again tomorrow morning at 345. So we're now one minute away from hitting the like button. I want to thank each and every one of you who's going to do that for me. And let's see if we can get the likes up to like 115. And we got 58 seconds to do it. So this time I'm not going to miss it at 2.30 exactly. We will all hopefully hit that like button and get the likes up to 115 or 120. And we're going to do it in 45 seconds. So don't hit it yet. Hold on. Please hold and let's hit that at the same time. And I hope that you like what I'm showing you here and I hope it makes sense to you, everybody. 41 days till 10. Ha ha ha. I think it'll be 29 days or less over 10. Yep, 29 days or less over $10. These shorts, though, they're going to keep trying to do this that they've been doing here lately. They're going to keep trying it. As long as it works for them, they're going to keep trying it. All right, folks, here we go. 10 seconds to hit the like button starting now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, please hit that like button right now. I appreciate it. Please hit that like button. Let's see if we can get up to 115 likes from 106. We've got 93 people on the channel right now. We've had 938 here today during the daytime. And folks, this thing is getting ready to come uncorked on them. Cleon Compolis, 41 days till 10. Yes, 41 days till our earnings call on April the 29th. Yep. Yep. And look at this, folks. We are now up to 108 likes, 110 likes now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, uh, yes. I burned one whole calorie for the like button. That's right. It's Catfish Tyler's physical fitness program. Lose weight while you watch my stream. Lose weight while you watch my stream. And there's a heart on for you. There's a heart on the screen for you. A heart for you. All oh, you guys, a heart for you. Thank you very much. All these likes start flowing in here all at the same time. And the next thing you know, more and more people are being sent the channel by YouTube. They're like, man, this guy's saying something everybody likes at the same time. What's he talking about? Let's let other people hear it because everybody seems to like what he's saying. Yep. So I want to thank each and every one of you. 115 likes now already. And I hadn't even gotten to the countdown yet. Holy smokes. Ha 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 ha. And watch this SoFi now. Watch it start to climb this afternoon. Watch it start climbing. Oh, yeah. 
They're going to start buying. They've got to return those shares. They've got to get it back up to three million. They've got to get here again. At least they've got to get to this level. At least they've got to get to two million available like they've used here the last few days. They've got to have at least that. All right. Yeah. Oh, there she goes. She's starting to rise. And don't be surprised by this, folks. Daniel Davis, people need to turn off their stock lending feature for their trading accounts so shorts can't bar them. Yes. I've been reiterating that a time and time and time again. Please, two things. You can do what he just said there. Turn off your stock lending feature or put good till canceled orders at $24.99 a share on all of your SoFi stock. And for that matter, all the shares you have in any of the stocks you own, go ahead and put good till canceled orders way higher, okay? And you might not meet, you might not, you might not know it, but believe it or not, one of these days they might just freaking fill. <laughs> on a on any news breaking story on any stock you own, you never know. They might do like COSM, do an 80 for one reverse split. 80 for one, and that thing went all the way from a dollar forty-six to twenty dollars and twenty-three cents in one day. Just like 10x did the other day when we owned it at a dollar ninety-six and it went all the way to twenty-two dollars and thirty cents where we sold it. You never know when it can happen on any announcement. So put your sell orders in place way up high. Keep the shorts from being able to borrow them. I, I, I told everybody that here, Daniel, if they would just do that, if every single retailer who owns SoFi stock would go ahead and put in good till canceled orders for a price of $24.99, we would dry up the share tree even more. There'd be even less shares available for them to short with. And see, what I'm doing right now, I'm keeping a very, very, very close eye on the number of short sell, sellable, uh, tradable shares there are to short with. I'm watching this like a hawk. I've got my eye on this like crazy, folks. I'm looking at the short interest right now at 17% almost, virtually the highest it's ever been. Off exchange short is at 54%, folks, in the dark pool. 54% in the dark pool, folks. All right. Dark pool volume is 10,430. All right. Just be aware of that. Oh, look at that price rising, starting its way up. 696 now. And don't be surprised at all because, like I said, they've got to start, they've got to start returning those shares they borrowed today. They got to start turning some of them back in and they got to buy their way out of those shares to get them, them returned to the brokerages. And so this is going to be the, the impetus and this will be the uh, catalyst and this will be the reason that we now go back up over $7 before the close today. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. <clears throat> so every one of you that just hit that like button again, I'm very, very grateful for you doing so. And you can see what happened all of a sudden now. We got 92 people over here on this channel and we're almost going to break 100 right now. And I want you to see that what I've been showing everyone to all of you new folks is on March the 13th, they only had not 10 million shares to borrow four. And here it was only three, mil three million. Folks, a month ago, this number was 10 million shares and it was every single day they had 10 million shares to borrow to short with. That was a month ago. Then in three weeks ago, it went down to 9 million shares. And then I checked it today and it's at friggin' 4 million. And in fact, they only had return enough to have 3 million share, uh, shares on the 13th. All right. On the 13th, and that was this date, Wednesday, a week ago, they only had 3 million shares to work with. And they borrowed them at this time of the morning. At 3.30 in the morning, they borrowed almost every single share. They used 2,700,000 shares from the 3 million, and they used 2,700,000 to attack us with that morning on the 13th, okay, on Thursday. And then the next day, they did had even fewer shares to, to, to borrow. They only had 1.9, not 3 million. They only had 1.9. And again, the same time of day they borrowed at 3.30 in the morning. 
3.30 in the morning over here, 3.30 in the morning here. And then, then that next day, they only had freaking 1.2 million shares. So they've gone from 3 million to short with, to 2 million to short with, to 1.8 million to short with, down to 1.2 million. And here they only had 250,000 shares left to short with everyone at 3.30 in the morning. <clears throat> 3.30 to 4. Only 250,000 shares were left. They got themselves in trouble there, folks. They're in trouble. They're in trouble. They're in trouble now. Because now, the only way they can get back up to this number of shares to borrow, <clears throat> the only way they can do that is to start buying here. If they want to get back up to 3.4 million like they had this morning, if they want to get back to that at, like they had at midnight, 3.4 million, well, the only way they can do that, folks, is to buy. If they want to be able to make the same move that they've been making over and over and over, they've got to buy here. They've got to buy. They can't, this number can't just keep dropping, okay? <laughs> it can't just keep dropping, folks. If it drops anymore, it's going to be zero shares available for shorting. They can't, they can't keep this war, This they can't keep this up. This is what I keep trying to show everybody. And this drop from 3 million shares to this of only 250,000, that happened over three days. This drop right here from 3.4 million to only 500,000 or 450,000, that happened in one day. That happened today, people. They had three days before, and now in one day, they got the same result, a drop all the way down to almost exhausting all of their borrowable shares. <clears throat> Very good, Armand. Excellent. Just put in for a sale at $24.95. Uh, Duck King says, after we get to $10, I wonder how long it will take to bounce from 12 to 14. Well, not long. Not long. Not long. Because I've already shown people on this very long-term chart when you get out here. And oh my God, look at what's going on here with this volume. Let's get on the one day before I show you the long-term. I want to see this one-day chart right now. I want to see what's going on volume-wise. Look, I see one massive hit candlestick there at 204, 203. This 140,000 shares green. And I see some very, very low volume share. Try to cut it back. 72,000 shares. That ain't going to get it, man. <laughs> you got 140 coming in and 70,000 out. That ain't going to get it, folks. That just isn't going to work. That isn't going to work for them. But don't be surprised at all to see this volume start to rise here this afternoon even more and more. Because they got to buy... And I think for sure we're going to see a volume spike of at least another 2 million shares before, but right near the close. That's what we're going to see because they want to get that volume to borrow with back up to 3 million, I think. Or at least this much, 2 million. So right now they've got to, re they've got to replace 1.1,600,000 shares at least will have to be obtained by them to get those re returned to 2 million to borrow with. And maybe more. So we'll see. We're going to see what happens with this volume. We got an, uh, right now an hour and 20 minutes left and we're already at 31 million. So there's no question in my mind whatsoever that we are in fact going to be over 40 million shares again. And I want you all to understand something that you may not realize that over the last 10 days, we have seen more so five volume than this has ever, ever, ever seen before. That's right. I added it up, folks. I added up the volume. And we have seen the most shares traded over a 10-day period, 10 day period than we've ever, ever, ever seen before. Over 800 million shares have been traded now over the last 10 days. And that's never happened in this stock in the history of it before. 
You can count them up here if you want to and see this is one day, two days, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and now the eleventh day. And we've never ever seen this much volume and this much interest. And especially off of a high of 820 to see 187 million. And then the next day, the low be 705, 131 million. And then after that, folks, the price started rising and rising and rising. And they're like, holy crap, look at this freaking volume. We've never seen this before. Well, they have seen it before. And I'm going to show you when. It was right here. They've seen this volume before. And it came at them right here. 152 million, 108 million. And look where the price was. It was at 605. And it was down here to 509. Then they saw this volume. 68 million, 152, 108, 63, 69, 56 million, 60 million, 66 million, 84 million. 117 million and the next thing you know the volume was getting out of control and it went to 1023 in one month's time from 445 because the volume people it was the volume it was the interest it was the desire it was everyone wanting in the only reason it stopped at 1023 was because on this next day june the 15th oppenheimer piper sandler and bank of america all three downgraded SoFi because it had gone from 445 up 125% in a month. And they were all missing the boat. See, they needed to get in at a lower price, so they downgraded it. Sure as shit, the price jumped all the way down to 771. Oh, good for them. 771. And how many days later was it back over 10? Well, you can look right here 10, 13, and 27 days. In 27 days. Yep, 27 days later. Do shorts borrow on margin? I do not know whether they sh the shorts are borrowing on margin or not. I hope they are not. If they are, they're going to be totally screwed here. And I told you already, I am very, very uh, positive that they're going to be returning shares to get it back into that pool to borrow from. And in order to do that, they're going to have to buy. They're going to have to start buying here. Okay, that's the only way. That's the only way this number does what it's been doing and goes right back up after these big, massive morning sell-offs. The only way it goes back up is if they start buying shares and returning them to the pool they can borrow from. So that's what I'm counting on this afternoon. Them to start buying, and I think they're going to start right now. I think they're going to run this thing up, and it's going to go easily over seven, and who knows how high it's going to go. I don't know how high it's going to go. I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to sell 5,000 shares this afternoon, no matter what it goes to, because I see this. I see this schedule. I see this pattern. I see what they're doing. I see exactly how they're doing it. Jerry Panic Armand just put it for sale at 24.95. That's right. Uh, shorts borrow on margin, Jerry. I don't know Jerry, but I also don't recognize that name. So welcome, Jerry. Sorry. I don't recognize that name. Maybe once before, but not a real frequent visitor. So I want to make sure and uh, give you the proper credit. If you are a first time in here with that, uh, with that comment, I appreciate it in the question. And I'm going to put a hello and welcome to the tank, Jerry. Because I don't recognize you hear that often before. And uh, so thank you. And even uh, to you, Cleon, it's been a time, time since I've seen you here. And uh, thank you for that comment that we only have 41 days now until the big earnings, earnings report where we're going to blow people's minds with the revenue increase that we've got this time around, adding that $40 million to the bottom line. I think it's going to be phenomenal. I think it's going to be awesome. 
I think it's going to be awesome when we open up that stadium with the NBA's, all those stadiums with NBA stickers so far right on their courts. I think it's going to be fantastic when we've got the TGL golf going starting here probably in January or maybe December of this year, maybe even a little bit sooner because I don't think it's going to take them that long to put that vinyl roof back on that stadium down there. I wonder if we can even get an update on the SoFi Stadium down there in Florida right now where they're going to be doing the TGL golf. Let's go see if we can find out anything about it. We do know that the meeting tomorrow, the Federal Reserve is tomorrow, and they're going to make an announcement probably around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, we don't know for sure. It might even be at noon, noon to 2, somewhere around there. But they're going to make it. I'm going to take a look here at lo latest SoFi. Hold on. TGL Golf. This is Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy's creation, and they got a lot of investors behind them. LeBron James, the Serena sisters. They've got uh, Justin Bieber. Uh, there's a lot of big names behind this, this deal. Um, stadium. Roof. Video shows extensive damage to the roof. But then again, extensive damage, it's just vinyl. So how extensive is that compared to all the structure and steel and concrete and everything? I don't think it's extensive. That's an exaggeration. November the 17th is when it happened. November 15th, overnight, it says the roof of the TGL SoFi Center has collapsed overnight. Significant disruption to the construction of the arena. Well, it's done now. All that's been gathered up and cleared away, and the new roof is probably going on. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to change the tools here and try if we can get from any time to the past month and see if we can get an update. It says here, TGL's roof collapse has inspired major changes. And they have designs for a new and improved arena already. Look at this, folks. We're about to go up over a thousand viewers on the channel today, and we still got a good hour and 10 minutes left to trade today. It says TGL roof collapse has inspired major changes. At this point in 2024, we were supposed to see a lot of TGL, the mixed reality golf league, headed up by Tiger Woods and Roy McElroy. We were supposed to be entering week nine of the season schedule with matches taking place on Monday and Tuesday nights. The playoffs of TGL's first season would be coming up. Tiger Woods would be playing a lot more public golf. Then Mother Nature happened. As, fan as golf fans would remember well, a mid-November storm ripped through southern Florida with high winds and rain within SoFi Arena. The in-construction future home of the league suffered an unexpected loss of power the weather ripped through the membrane of the league's cloth dome roof, too. The skeleton of the arena quickly circulated across the internet a day later, and before long, league organizers were forced to postpone the first season by a full 12 months. Well, they were going to debut this on ABC on January, uh, it was December the 30th, I believe, or December 29th. I believe it was December 30th, though was the debut on ABC. We're not far away from that, folks. We're, it'll be here before you know it. It says three months after that decision, the TGL has returned to the news, acknowledging a big change is coming. As first reported by Sports Business Journal, TGL will now launch next season with insulated steel walls and a steel-supported roof for its arena. According to the report, the new, more formidable design will be able to withstand the Category 5 hurricane, whereas the original design was outfitted to withstand only Category 4, 4 storm. Because the arena is situated on the campus of Palm Beach State College, changes to the original plans have been presented to the college's Board of Trustees. As one of the diagrams involved in the late February presentation shows, the new arena design would have a roof that is slightly lower than the dome, but would have a wider frame. All right. New structure. There's the new structure. A wider frame. And they're not using a dome shape. Okay. 
A TMRW sports spokesperson offered the following statement. TMRW sports was re- pleased to have, and that this is uh, Roy McElroy. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, this is this is being done with Tiger Woods. So Tiger and Roy McElroy here, TMRW sports was pleased to have the opportunity to provide an update on its plan for the construction. Uh, an upgraded venue using improved design elements and materials. The college is performing their duty and asking the right questions as part of a standard due diligence process. Our aim is to create a venue that the college and Palm Beach communities, as well as our fans and partners, will enjoy visiting for years to come. This is part of the process, and we are appreciative of both our wide-ranging partnerships with Palm Beach State College and their agreement to create a special March meeting date ahead of their regularly scheduled meeting on April the 16th. All right. That's now, folks, coming up here in March. That's right now, coming up right here in March. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay, folks. says you can read the full Sports Business Journal report here, which also notes that TMRW Sports has created a performance lab in Southern Florida that allows for players of the league to test out the hitting conditions they'll face when the league launches in nine months. All right, there you go. An update to the roof of TGL Golf. That's right, everybody, that SoFi is going to be sponsoring that's right. So just get ready, folks. Get ready for the price to rise and rise and rise. And I'm going to watch this and fast forward. 31 million, 228, 238, 248, 250, 31 million, 250, 855, 31 million, 259, 269, 270, 272. We're fast forward here. 31, 296, 31, 3 will be quickly coming. And right now we are finally caught up to the time, real time. Yep. 2.53 p.m. is the time, and right now you can see we're already at almost 32 million shares. We will again have over 40 million shares traded today, and as I said, I'm keeping a very, very close eye on SoFi right here as far as how many shares there are available to borrow this afternoon, and I keep updating this because I want to catch them and see how many shares they return this afternoon, and right now, they're not returning them. They're not buying yet. They haven't started buying yet. They haven't started returning them yet. It's 254, and I think they'll start at 306. I don't know why this is something to them as of late, but this 306 time zone has become a time when they've decided recently to start running the price back up. And I'm telling you right now, I'm going to take advantage of this. I'm going to sell this afternoon at 708 or 712 or whatever they run it up to here. I'm going to sell it. And I'm going to wait for that morning, 345, and I'm going to get on here and I'm going to look at it. And I expect to see the same damn big dip that I saw here on the 13th, the 14th, the 15th, yesterday and today. I expect to see it tomorrow too. <clears throat> Why would they stop doing that? They're doing it every damn day. They're not going to stop doing it, folks. Because that's all the final resort they've got left. That's the only way they can manipulate it is come at it real hard and shake the tree out right at the very beginning of the morning and shake out any newbies that got in. And they're doing it every day. I'm trying to make sure you guys understand this. They're doing this every day over the last three days and they're not going to stop. You can see here clearly that after they borrowed those shares at 3.30 in the morning that they used them at the very open and they ran the price down at the open at 9.45. The low was there, and then they ran it up all day long, and they bought all these shares here, shorting them at the very end of the day, and they shorted all those shares that they acquired in the morning at 3.30 again, and then they ran it down right out of the gate, all up again after 9.45. So here, 9.45 was the low, and they ran it up all day. Here again, 9.45 was the low, and they ran it up all day. Here on uh, Tuesday, 9.45 was the low, and they ran it up all day. And now we're going to see tomorrow morning, the low will be at 9.45. That's what I'm guessing. 
And I think that we're going to soon see within 10 minutes from now, the new established low for the afternoon. And it's right now happening, 693. Strong, strong, strong shorty move right here. While the Dow is up 239, the S&P up, the NASDAQ up. And what are the shorts doing? Burying themselves in a deeper and deeper hole. Burying themselves in a deeper and deeper borrowed share hole. And I showed you guys earlier today, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, but I don't think so. This is shorty right now. This is them that you can see them right there. That's them. This guy here in the middle of the screen, David Chiaverini. The one who caused all those shorts to short so far at 4.45 a share. Because like I said, on days when a stock is making a high, there's always buyers that are buying and expecting it to go higher and they get stuck and they get caught. And it doesn't go any higher and then it drops from there. Well, that same thing happens for those fear of missing out people buying as it goes up and they get caught there and then it drops. The same things happen to the shorts. It's dropping, 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 dropping on this guy's 225. It's going to 225 or 250. It's going to 250. Let's short it 445. Short, short, short. Uh-oh. Freaking 29 days later, the price is at 1023, and they got to call three analysts and say, Oppenheimer, downgrade. Bank of America, please downgrade. Piper Sandler, we need a downgrade. All right. 6 days later the price has fallen from 1023 to 771. A few days after that the price is at 1170. So there you go. There's the hole. They're in it. And they're digging it deeper and they're digging it deeper and they're digging it deeper. Deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. That's it. And right now, here's the next thing we got going on. All right. This is the shorts and this is us. This is the next thing that we got going on. I'm going to show you right now. Just give me a second. Here it is. Boom. <laughs> Here you go. These are the shorters. These are the shorters. Look at them. Oh. That doesn't look good. That face of that guy there, he doesn't look good and he's not good. The shorts are not good here. They're in a losing tug of war, folks, against a very, very persistent SoFi management team that just keeps executing and keeps performing and keeps outperforming. They keep under promising and they keep over delivering. It's as simple as that. Uh oh, there she starts the climb. 32,333 now. Oh, I'm going to see this thing and it's going to start here and it's going to start at three o'clock. It's already starting, folks. Oh, yeah, it's starting. Look at that green candlestick right there, folks. Boom. Look at that. Look at that right there. Very closely, folks. It's starting now. And like I said, if you think any single person is selling SoFi stock down 1.7%, you'd be crazy to think that. Ortex site gives live update on short shares returned. Well, I'm watching it close enough here, right here on this SoFi Fintel thing. They keep it pretty, they keep it pretty updated. This thing is only showing right now. Last updated just now, now. Last date updated, it says now, and there's still 1,400,000 shares. Well, I'm gonna see if I'm right or wrong, but something tells me they're gonna get it back up to 300 or at least 2 million, all right? So I think they're going to have to have 600,000 shares they're going to have to buy between now and freaking 4 o'clock if they want to get back to 2 million again. 
now I'm going to uh, refresh this page here, my uh, my my feed page. Oh, she's starting her move. 696. And one other thing I want to point out to you guys and gals, one of the things about this 695 number they're sticking so hard to try to hold is because when it's there at 695, it's down 13 cents. And did you see that? It just went to 697, folks. Here they come. Here they come. And as I already told you, I'm going to sell 5% of my stock today. I'm going to sell 5,000 shares. And that'll be about close to 10% of my stock. And I'm going to sell them at whatever the price gets to for the high here this afternoon. Because in the morning, I think I'm going to be able to buy it back at 688 again. Or maybe even lower. I don't think they're going to be able to reach today's low that they got to today. I don't think they're going to get to 682. But I think they'll go for this number or this one here, 691 from two days ago. Yep. I can almost guarantee it. Because that's what they've been doing every effing day, folks. And as I said, they've already started here right now. They've already started in. Look at that. Look at that chart. I called it right at 3 o'clock, folks. Look at that right there. And I told you, 306 is where it's really going to come alive, all right? I'm going to go ahead and put my sell order in right now for this afternoon. And I think I'm going to sell some at 708. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed, folks. I'm taking advantage of it this time. I haven't been doing it lately, but now after seeing that pattern that I just showed you, I cannot resist. After seeing this pattern that I just showed you of them getting the shares back up to 2.9 or 3 million and then borrowing at 340 in the morning to, to attack it out of the gate, and then seeing it the next day, borrowing at 3.30, 3.40 in the morning. And the next day, borrowing at 3.40 in the morning, the same time, 3.40. That, that's a pattern, folks. I'm not going to pass up. They're borrowing all these shares so they can run it down right out of the gate. And that's what they've done every single day. And I'm going to take advantage of it tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to take advantage of this rundown out of the gate. Because they did it on Thursday. On Friday, they ran it down out of the gate. And they went long and it went up all damn day. And then the next Monday, they, they these shares that they got back this after, on Friday afternoon and the ones that they went in at 3.45 in the morning with, those shares they're using every single morning as soon as the market opens. And they're attacking right from 9.30 to 9.45. Every single day, they've done it every day. And that's what they're going to do again tomorrow. See that? 9.30 to 9.45. And the low was achieved at 9.45 on uh Monday, and the same thing happened here at, on uh, today. The time was 9.45. So, folks, I'm going to use it this time. I'm going to use it. I'm going to make money just like they're doing. Okay, that's my call. And I think to, this afternoon, I'm going to put my, my sell order in here this afternoon, and I'm going to sell it at 7.04 and 7.08. I'm going to put a sell order in here right now at 704 for 2,500 shares. Good till cancel plus extended hours. I'll just do day plus extended. God dog it. After I put in my password. Okay. All right. View order and place it, 704. And now I'm going to do an order at 707. Seven oh seven. Review order, and this is plus extended hours, day plus extended. Review order and place it. All right, so I've got 704 and I've got 707. And there's a very good reason for me doing this. We're just going to get to see right now whether or not I am uh, I'm right or not, okay? And uh, I think I'm going to be right. And I think it's going to start in a minute at 3.06. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. 
and look at him so hard and desperately right here before 306 to take one more shot at it. One more last desperate shot at it right there. Right, a shot across the bow as the 10-day moving average is starting to get very herky-jerky right here. You see that 10-day moving average? <clears throat> herky down, jerky up, herky sideways, jerky up. And it's going to go up, folks. They've got to return those shares. they got to get this share count back up to here where they can borrow tomorrow morning at 345. So they got to buy. they got to return. I believe so anyway. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Now, folks, here for this last hour, I want to have fresh beverage. So I'm going to be back here in a minute. In the meantime, while I, while I take a brief break here, I'm going to ask you to please uh, say thank you to all these people who have kept this channel commercial free today so you don't have to watch any advertisement. And that's these folks here. And I'd appreciate it if you'd send a little money my way too to help with that because they've been doing it all week long. So it's time for someone else to step up and help keep us commercial free today. All you have to do is buy a sticker for $5 or $2 or $20. And it's just 50 cents a day, folks. Do it every four days. You get $2 sticker every four days. That's 50 cents a day for this information that I'm sharing with you. And by the way, before I go, I want you to know, you could have bought this SOUN today with me again, and you could make a fortune off of this damn stock. All right, you could have bought this thing all the way down here this morning with me at 766 in the 780s. <laughs> Look at that at 838 again already. Holy smokes, everyone. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> all right, give me a minute here. I'm going to leave this screen right here so Team Cat can keep you entertained while I get a, a little break here, and I'll be right back for the last 50 minutes of the day. All right.
Okay, everybody, time to get back to King Cat here. Let me get on out of here and have some fun with my friends down here on the bottom. I'll see you later. All right. Well, we're back. Have we got back up over seven yet? <laughs> oh, look at him trying here so hard, so desperate. 34 million shares now on the table. We still got freaking plenty of time to bust over 40 million, and we're going to for sure. And it's another 40 million plus day to day. I love it when I see that. I'm very encouraged by the 40 million a day shares because it's not 16 million. It's not 15 million and it's not 17 million. And I've already shown all you folks how many days we saw that. Ortex site gives live data on short shares return. Kevin Blair, long game for me. Gotcha, Kevin. Jerry Panic. So like I'm a fifth grader when I borrow and pay for margin, I'm a, am I a short? <laughs> Jerry Panic. So like I'm a fifth grader when I borrow and pay for margin, am I a short? <laughs> The only one who's a shorter is people that are idiots, okay? And I don't take you to be an idiot. The only ones shorting this stock so far right now are absolutely mindless, desperate, addicted shorters. They're addicted to shorting. And the reason that they've been come, become addicted to shorting so far, and they're still doing it now in the face of all adversity okay in the face of success story after success story after building and growing and expanding and generating revenue and getting themselves in the public eye and everything they execute on these people are shorting this stock because of this reason right here folks and i'm going to show it to you in a simple chart right now this is why when you look at the two-year chart they started shorting it up here at $25 a share and so. And look how heavily down here these candlesticks of shorting were doing. Massive, massive, massive amount of shorts were making money from the price being here mostly. This is where they started in the most. In actuality, it was really right here when the price was around $18. Because this would have been the average price between this high and this drop and this high and this point. So right here is where they really would have begun around 18 a share, folks. And they shorted and made money and they shorted and made more and they shorted here and made more and they shorted it here and they made more. And they shorted it here and they made more and they made more. And I want you to pay very close attention, folks, because these numbers, as they dropped, were creating massive gaps that, in my opinion, still exist today. When you look at a chart and you don't see candlesticks enveloping one another, that's where gaps are created, folks. You see this candlestick right here? I'm going back to October the 29th, 2021. On the 22nd, seven days before, this candlestick started at a price right here, folks. Seven days before it, 1821. This candlestick that dropped from 1821 to this price of $15 or $3.21, that candlestick right there is not enveloped. What I mean by that is this next red candlestick here starts below it. It's not up here, right here above it. There's no pullback and there's no, ch I mean, it's just dropping folks from here. It wasn't up to here. It wasn't enveloped by this previous candlestick. And this doesn't envelop this one. This is just a flat out friggin huge gap over one week period. All right. <laughs> That's a one week period gap for the price to drop from 18 to 10 all the way back down to 15, 19. And that gap is still there. In my opinion.
all right? And it'll take one week to get from 15 to 18. I hope that some people were asking, you know, if this breaks over 1454, like they th they could take it to, then then what happens? Well, <laughs> after it gets over 1454, if it goes over freaking this price right here around $15, folks, this thing could easily quickly jump all the way up to $18. I'm just showing you so that you understand how it works. This is not an enveloped number. This is a gap that was created after a nice high and it fell and fell and fell. And there are other gaps here that are not enveloped. This is one of them right here. This gap from 1139 is not a gap enveloped until the price gets to here, all the way down there to 855, folks. It's a very quick spike from 855 to $10 the top of this candlestick which wasn't enveloped by the next candlestick was was above that you see this candlestick is this is not enveloped right here this this is a gap this is a very large gap from 1139 down here to ten dollars i'm trying to show you guys something so you understand when it gets back up to 10 it could quickly easily get up to 1139 and then it can from there go all the way up to that 12 that we need it to be 1229 that all of those institutions are aiming for. Let's see where that is. Right there. And it was a top at 1240 right there. And then it stayed there for a week. And it was also, so they could easily keep this in this range for a couple of weeks. Now, two out of three weeks, it has to be there for those uh, convertible shares to convert at $9.45. All right. <clears throat> So I take you back over here to SoFi, six ninety two a share, and I reiterate my belief that not a single soul is selling this share at two two percent down. Not when the price was already at six eighty two earlier today. I don't believe anyone is really selling it here. And uh, just in case you weren't aware of it, I had told you earlier we were going to watch this stock because. This morning, it was being manipulated down because they had great news, okay? They've got good news here. SoundHound to offer on-chip voice AI with NVIDIA that delivers in-vehicle generative AI responses with no connectivity required. I like that. Don't have to have a phone connect to the internet to make this thing work. It's going to work on its own, separate. Nice. So this is good news for SoundHound and that to be taken down into the red all the way down here this morning where we bought it, 762, 761. Somebody, somebody else bought it with me. I know they did. They told me they filled at that number. I was like, awesome. And for anybody who's filling at this number, <laughs> when they're selling one day in 14s and 17s, and it could be quicker than you think, folks, because it fell pretty freaking fast. That's for sure. I mean, when I show you this chart, look how fast the thing fell. It was 1130. Let's just call it right here what it was. It was November the 22nd of 2021. And by April, November, December, in six months, folks, the price had fallen from here. $18 in six months into April. It had fallen $11, people, in six months. Can it go up 11 and six? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it sure can. Especially when the volume started getting like this over here. See the volume level right here? I try to point out to everybody how similar it is to the volume that we're seeing now from this midpoint right here. And I show them this is one candlestick that was right there, which would be met by that candlestick there. And this candlestick here is that candlestick there. This candlestick here is this candlestick right here. And this candlestick right here is the same volume, 641 million, as this candlestick over here at how many? 645 million. They're virtually the same in that one week period. These are five day candlesticks, just so you know. I'm showing one week candlesticks, one week between each one of these lines. But isn't that interesting? That this volume is starting to mirror itself as the price starts to mirror itself. 
And folks, this is starting to get, I've already mentioned to people, very interesting on the particular, on the three month chart with the 10 day moving average. I know there's a lot of new folks here on the channel with me today. I want to thank you for being here. And uh, I am uh, strictly, I, I, I make actions and decisions whether to buy in on certain stocks based on the news and how the, the market reacts to it. <clears throat> and uh, so far, I've been pretty accurate. I think we've all made quite a bit of money off most of the ones I told you about, 10X that we sold, the 20s that we, we had bought in the fours. I warned people, someone asked me about NEO earlier, and I said, hold off on that. And I was glad I did. That one day, that's a two, that's a one-year chart. It looks horrible. Stay away from NEO right now. We're looking for the bottom, but stay away now. Still got a lot further that it could drop all the way down to 513. Again, so just be careful. It's not time yet, I don't think. It's time for SoFi. It's time for this thing to break out, folks. And I think it's going to do that based on what I'm looking at here with how many shares they're using of how many are available. And for those of you that are new to the channel, just one month ago when I checked this number of shares available, it was at 10 million and this was solid. No one was using any of the available shares. It was at 10 million for seven days in a row. Then three weeks ago, I looked at it again after the month. And I saw again that there was 10 million shares available. And I didn't like seeing that, but and I didn't even mention it to anyone, but I saw it. Believe me, I had my eyes on it. But look now. The most available over the last seven days here is 3.8 million. So seven or 6.2 million. And now it's even dropped to even fewer available to 1.4 million. So that tells me 8.6 million from right there. 8.6 million shares are out there on loan, borrowed. The, of the available that are of, of, of available, they haven't been returned. So I'm like, this is what I see. And I see desperate shorters when I see them using the cover of darkness. There you can see they did it at 3.45 in the morning. The next day they did it again at 3.40, 3.30 in the morning, 3.45. Here again, they did it at 3.30, 3.45. Same time frame, exact same time each morning. But their supply of shortable shares is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Then the reason we saw, I think, the run-up in the afternoon or all day, they had to return some so they could get back up here to have a lot to short with to run it down, see what they're doing. And then they got it down again at 3.45 in the morning so they could come at it again right out of the gate like they've done all four days of the last three. I, they've done it every day. They're doing it every day. But this is going to become a problem for them if this gets lower and lower and lower and then they don't start returning. They've got to keep driving it down. How long can they do that? How long can they keep driving it down till they don't have any shares left to keep forcing it down with? That's the question I have to ask for everybody. I think they're right at the end of their rope. I do. I believe they're at the end of the rope. I could be wrong, of course, and I'm not a financial advisor, but I don't think so. <laughs> There's 84 people on this channel right now, and all 84 of you need to know that SoFi, <clears throat> right now, I'm keeping a very, very close eye on the number of shares. The short interest is at 154, 363, 575. They've got three days to cover, okay? 3.02 days to cover, all right? So here we are on a Tuesday, and they happen to have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and to cover by Friday. And what in the hell are they going to do, man, if they run out of all these shares over here that used to be $10 million to borrow from every single day has got down to $3 million. Folks, that's a 67% drop. <laughs> it's a $70 million. It's, it's, it's a 70% drop in available shares for these guys to keep shorting us with. Do you understand? Michael Astorino, no, every single thing that I keep showing you keeps pointing to total 
desperation on the part of the shorts here. Look at this. On this day, out of 10 million that they had two weeks ago, they had it all the way down to only 250,000 shares left, people. That's tapped out. I mean, the tree is the maple syrup. If you're tapping the tree, it runs out at one point. And when you get to zero, there's no more maple in it. No, no more syrup to come out of it. And the tree dies. And the same thing's happening with these shorts right now. And like I said, they're having to do it at the cover of darkness. They're having to do it at 345, 4 o'clock, so they can start attacking every morning at 4. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. All right? I don't. I don't think so. The, the way the charts look to me and the way the volume is acting right now, going over 40 million every day, and I just wanted to point out to you guys as well that this amount of volume... I challenge you, go back to any 10-day period on SoFi's history and find the volume over, right where we are right now, 950 million shares over 10 days. Go find it. You won't. And the part about it is, if you do, the price was falling every day during that time, or it was going way up, which was what was happening between May the 15th and June the 14th over that 29 day period the massive volume started coming in just like this you can go back and look at it man look at it back here look at it here in may <clears throat> right there from may the 15th look at this volume start to increase here you were seeing 20s 23 million 26 million all of a sudden the price was at 509 and all of a sudden 68 million and then 152 and then 108 very similar to what we've seen lately with 186 million price started to rise and then it was 63 million and 69 just like we almost saw 56 we've seen that too recently these are big numbers and the price just kept going up to 820 to 820 to 930 to 960 bam it's going through the friggin roof it's at 1023 everybody and shit, they had used this this volume right even between here and here doesn't even is equal as much volume as we've seen over this 10-day period we're on right now, everybody. Okay? Got to understand this. This volume of a 187 plus 131 plus 83, 76, 59, 49, 42. This is just what... I mean, look at the numbers of the volume. 52 million, 69 million. Go back to here. Where, where was it? When it was during that period in November, you can see those same numbers, folks. It's the same high volume that was eating them alive, folks. This big volume started coming in, all right, through uh, June, I mean, all the way through June. Th this big volume, just like now, 56 million, 60 million, 63 million, 84, and the price just, it got, it cut loose on them. They had to call three analysts on the 15th and say, downgrade this stock. We're getting slaughtered right now. Holy crap, man. The price we shorted it. David Chiverini said $2.50 a share. So we shorted it all the way to $4.45. Come on, man. Oppenheimer, Piper, Sandler. Come on. We need it. Bank of America. Shh, downgrade, downgrade, downgrade. And they did. They came out that day on June the 15th. And they ran the price from 1023 all the way down to 771 nine days later on June 23rd. And they had the help of all of those hedge funds working against it with this kind of volume right here. But I again point out to you, there's never been, been that I know of a 10-day period where the price had so much volume as we're seeing right now over this 10 days. Because even on these days, lastly, where they were here most recently in, in, in June, they had only used 300 million, 400 million here, and then it would drop off to small amounts again, very small here. But folks, when it starts getting up here and the volume gets up into this range that we're in now of 900 million in 10 days and plus, they get it, it gets out of control for them. And they're going to have to make another triple downgrade phone call, I do believe. It's in the works. It's coming. They're going to work it up and they're going to do it. All right? Because it's the only way they could stop it before when it did it. When it starts to come unglued from them, they got those dependable, deplorable downgraders and analysts that come out of the woodwork and call for a $2.50 price target. And they do it because they have to offset these people who are excellent five-star analysts saying we're going to 14 or 16 even. 
these excellently high rated analysts that are given the highest prices on the stock because it is justifiable, by the way. This only reason that it's even where it is is because why? Well, because the interest that they're using and all the shares they're using to short now and they're tapping this short tree out. Huh? They're going to tap out of this race pretty soon. They're going to tap out with this. They're going to tap out. <clears throat> Gerver Bata says they are not buying, as you said. Uh, who's not buying? All these, all these people that I just told you that were buying aren't buying. <laughs> I guess I'm confused. I'm serious. This would be the only time that you might find something similar to where we are in volume now, okay? But again, even all this volume, every single day, they were running the price down and down and down and down and down and down and down. They were running it down all those days in the road. That hasn't happened this time. That's not the same thing happening now. That's not working for them. Because now... When you go up here to the more recent date, that's not working for them. You can see that when this volume was real high, it wasn't going down and down and down, folks. It was going up and up and up and up. And now they've had to dip deeply into the borrowable shares to get it to come back down this time when they weren't using any of those the last time around. Well, TP, I'm not sure I understand your question or your statement. It says, and I'm going to read it. It says here, uh, it's always possible a stock does not perform. That's part of the game. However, given the consistent performance in the past, I bet we are not. And I'm not sure what you mean by I bet we are not what? <laughs> uh, not going any lower, not going any higher. Champ Lou Ace, Champ Lou Ace, I have not seen you here. You think now is a good time to enter long? I have 1,875 shares at 712, planning on adding another 1,200. I do. But I would suggest that you wait until tomorrow morning at 945 because I've started to see something happening here on this five-day chart that I'd like to bring to your attention now. And that is that at every single day of the week, look at what time the price achieved the bottom. Do you see here on Thursday what time it was? 9.45. That was the bottom there, and it kept on dropping that day. But then, as of Friday, what time was the low? 9.45, right here, 9.30 and 9.45 was the low. On Friday, that's what I want you to see, because then it went up all afternoon. It just kept going up Friday all the way up here. But the next day, what time was the low achieved on Monday? What time did they make the low when they had it up here at 7.03? Well, come Monday morning, it was 9.45, 9.30 9.45. There was the low and the price was achieved right there between 9.30 and 9.45. And then the next day, at this would be today, what time was it? 9.45, okay? And the reason that this is happening every day from the open for 15 minutes is because they are borrowing all these shares every morning at 3.45 in the morning. 3.45 in the morning, borrow these at 3.45 in the morning, borrow these at 3.45 in the morning. And they're borrowing them all so they can come at it right out of the gate at 9.30 and scare out people and run the price down. But now, and this is, this. what time was this right here that they did it? Well, go, lo and behold, it was at 3.45 in the morning that they bought them there. And then here, 
uh, this morning. What time did they buy them? Lo and behold, 3.45 in the morning, they bought them. About 3.30, 3.30 and 3.45. The, all during 3.15, 3.30, 3.45. That's what time they were buying them. And they're doing this every single freaking day now recently. Every day of the last five, they've attacked with the borrowed shares that they borrowed almost, and they keep borrowing more and more and more. And as I've said to you before, they had 10 million shares to borrow from three weeks ago. And then two weeks ago, it went down to 9 million shares to borrow from. And a week ago, it went down to 7 million shares to borrow from every day. And now it's down to 3 million shares to borrow from every day. Okay. And right now, it happens to be a lot less than that. It's 1.4 million shares they've got to borrow from, or at least that's the last time we looked it up right here. I believe that we'll refresh the page here and find out if I'm right, if it's still there. Champlu Ace, uh, I know I've seen, I believe, you here before, so welcome back to the tank. So there's my suggestion is don't be buying this until tomorrow morning at 9.45. And what I would be doing is on this website right here, HTTPS companies market cap dot com forward slash so five forward slash cost hyphen two hyphen borrow forward slash that address right there will take you to where you need to see what they do tomorrow morning. And one might suspect that tomorrow morning at 3.30 to 3.45, they'll be doing the same effing thing that they've been doing every single day for the last week at 3.45 in the morning, 3.30 to 3.45, all right? You can see it plainly. It's very clear right before the 4 o'clock when the market opens. It opens at 4 a.m., people. That's when the market opens at 4 a.m. and these big players can start manipulating as soon as 4 a.m. strikes and start working it down. Some of you even told me, man, I saw a real high high in the early pre-market. It was much higher. The price was like 725 in the pre-market. Well, that's before they started using their shares to work, work it down because they want to let the gullible retailers who think, and they're buying it up. It's going up and they're just sitting there waiting after four o'clock. But see, that's why they don't come in until 4.30, 4.45. They want to see how high these people can get it before they go ahead and start taking those shares that they're taking the shorter positions on. Got it? So that's why they wait until 4.30 and 4.45 to come in and start borrowing those shares heavily. They may change the pattern tomorrow due to Fed speaking, but then again, it's not till 2.30 Eastern. Okay, good thing to know. I didn't know exactly what time. I thought two. <sighs> They're buying, like I said, we're now at 37 million and we got 20 left. We're definitely going to go over 40 million shares again. And it will be, in my opinion, them buying. I, you, I Now I know what you mean by they're not buying, like you said. But the time is, we're still, we've still got time, all right? And they may wait until the very last minute. They might not start buying until after hours, okay? They don't want to throw out their cards yet if they've got to buy to get those shares back in there. They're going to have to get them back there. They, they can't start tomorrow from where they are now, I don't think. Well, they'll be totally screwed. I mean, they did it before here, back here on, uh, I guess it was Friday. What day was that? The 14th. So Wednesday. Wow. I wouldn't want to be in their shoes having had 10 million shares to borrow from a month ago, and now we're all the way down to what they have right now would be 1.4 if they, if they don't return them this afternoon or tonight. They'll return them. They got to. They want to get that. They got to get They got to get this, and we, we'll just see. We're, we're not, 
again, and also keep in mind, like I said, folks, there isn't anybody selling at 2% down, not so by. They're not selling. They would have already, any of the weak hands they got out this morning at 682, and those were ones that were borrowed shares. <laughs> they borrowed so much today that they took it from 3 point something million shares, 3.4 to 450,000 shares at 345 this morning. They only had 450,000 shares left to short with. Their, their backs are against the wall, people. They're running out. I'm, I mentioned it again, 10, just look back to three weeks ago, there were 10 million shares available to borrow each day on this, on this right here, 10 million a, a day. And right now you can see how many there are available right now for these guys and how many they've returned. And let's just see if they're returning any right now. And if they are, they're buying them from each other and returning them at a loss. 15 minutes ago, this was last updated and they're showing there's only 1.4 million. And see, eight hours ago, there was only 450,000. Oh boy, that's not good. It's not good for shorty. Sorry, join late. What do you think happens to the share price when they return the shares? <clears throat> well, to return the shares, they have to have them. They have to buy them back for, on the open market here. They've got to buy them right now. If they're going to return any shares at all, they got to buy them now or in the after hours, period. It's that simple. And I guess they could buy them even at two o'clock in the morning. These people can probably trade 24 seven for all I freaking know. I look at some of these times that they're doing things. When I look down here at borrowed shares and I see things happening at crazy hours, you can see what time they're happening here. And the changes are happening here, 1600, 1800, 2200. That change right there, folks, is at a quarter to midnight. Okay, and that's happening there. The drop happened at midnight. The drop in available shares happened at midnight. So I don't know how that happens. They're, they must be acquiring shares at midnight and then at 1.30 in the morning, it dropped even more to 2.30 in the morning. Are you seeing that? So... I guess they can return them any anytime they want. I mean, I look over here. What time did they return these? They didn't start returning these till nine o'clock at night. Twenty two hundred would be ten. So right there at ten, and then they they returned some more that they would have had to buy. And this could very well be the reason we're seeing those early morning pre market highs that we're seeing at 4.05 in the morning when the pre-market highs are reaching the highest of 4.10 or 4.20. But boy, I tell you what, they've been coming at the, the dang thing after that. Huh. I mean, these, these shares here were returned at two o'clock, 1.45 in the morning. They bought shares whatever they were at midnight at 1.45 in the morning, they bought them. And then they borrowed some more that <laughs> shortly after at 4 a.m. How do you like that? So I guess they can just return them right up to the very last minute. There's there'd be no way to know when they're going to return them. But when they return them, they have to buy them first to send them back and they have to be bought off of the market, open market. I know that for sure. And that may very well explain why we've been seeing these run-ups right at the very beginning at 4 a.m. in the morning, if you get up at 4 a.m. and see the high of the day. You know, I'll be interested to see something here. Let me just try and look up something real quick here, very quickly and see something. Go right here and go into bookmarks. And I want to go into uh, right here, after hours trades. I want to look at pre-market right here. And uh, I want to thank all of you who are being here. We got 1,160 viewers on the channel today. And uh, that's very good. I appreciate that very much. I'm going to right now come over here to uh, real time pre market right here. 
as we get very, very close now to 40 million shares and going beyond that. And we're going to see more in the after hours, folks. Believe me, I believe we're going to see probably at least another million and a half or two million in after hours to get those shares back up there where they can start tomorrow morning at 345 again on them, borrowing them. There it is. The pre-market high today, 4 a.m., exactly at 4 a.m. See that? 709. And I want you to know how much did we close at yesterday? 708, I think it was. So if I previous close, yep, 708. All right. And I hope this information that you um, I'm supplying to you, you find very useful because I think it's very interesting to see that just a month ago, every single day there were 10 million shares available for shorting and then uh three weeks ago that dropped to nine million and then then two weeks ago when we look and it's dropped to freaking seven or six million and then now we look and it's dropped to below four million and we see them start with three million and we take away this many the first morning last week on wednesday and on thursday and on friday and the and all there was left out of out of 10 million was 250,000 shares tomorrow and over here this morning they did it again and there was only two 450,000 shares left to borrow everybody these guys are this is consider this like a maple tree that used to be a hundred feet tall and now it's like 50 feet tall and then 30 feet of maple and now it's the, the maple's running out folks the maple's running out they're tapping this thing dry of all the borrowable every share they can borrow they're using now to create an illusion that SoFi's price is dropping when in fact if you look at the long-term chart it's quite obvious that the obvious that the 200 day moving average has now risen and risen and risen and risen and risen and continues to rise. And here's just one more of a five day attack. One, two, three, four, five days. On that sixth day, folks, I've told you about these six day swings already. I've told you about them. Time's up, shorty. Your day has come. This is it. Get on out now. Watch the door. Don't let it hit you. 83. John, when they can borrow, they can just put. Trunk monkey. Yeah. Sorry, join late. What do you think happens to the share price when they return the shares? Well, you know, it's it's very interesting to determine these things, I think. That's why I have so many people that hang out on this channel because, you know, I I, I look at a lot of things, man. I'm digging like crazy at all kinds of information and, t you know, trying to see, you know, the direction and get an idea of patterns, man. I like digging up these patterns. These six-day pattern trading patterns are very, very obvious. And this is the sixth day, folks. This would be the sixth day. Look at the historical data. When was the last high to this low today that they achieved? How many high days was it high? There's the... The high, 761, that low was at 795 for the high that day. And how many days later? One, two, three, four, five, six days again, folks. Now you understand in Clark, in Clark, do you understand now why that day you asked me to, should we sell here at 820? And I said, let me look at the six day first. And I jumped over here and I looked at it and I came back and I said, no, don't sell it. And you'd already done it. Well, you sold it at freaking 820. So who cares? The price is at 682 today in Clark. <laughs> and you sold, I know, something like 30,000 shares. So I think you did damn good selling at 820 that day, even though I know it went higher and I know you missed out on it higher. But look where it is now. That's all she care about. A massively better lower number than where you sold it at 820. You're talking about a 25 to 30 percent gain today if you bought it today in Clark. If you got back in today, and even if you decided it was time to get back in when the price was at 720 after you sold it at 820, so what? You're still going to make money. This thing's going to go back over 10. It's going over 10 again, folks. They do it too many times. And they're not going to stop doing it. They're not going to stop it. 
They're also not going to stop playing daily games with it. We got nine minutes left, and we're definitely going over 40 million shares, just like I said we would. And I wouldn't be surprised to see, the, see that the, the, the share buying doesn't stop after hours. And I think it's going to be happening all night long. That's what's been going on lately. Shorts have been forced to start buying overnight, all night long. They're buying it, and especially at 3.45 in the morning, aren't they? We figured that out now. That's the pattern. 3.45, borrow every possible share almost from the 10 million all the way to only 700,000 left, and then use those shares right at 9.30 until 9.45 every single day to run it down. And now as you look at the pattern, you see it. Here it is what happened on Friday. They come right out of the gate at 9.30. Bam, they slammed it down. Time in the morning, 9.30 in the morning, 9.45. There's your low, 696, and then they went long because they had used all those borrowed shares that they borrowed at the high at the very 4 o'clock open like we just saw today. I said, when was the high of the day? It said 4 a.m. All right, so this is what they're doing. They're attacking from 4 a.m. on, and then they just run it down with all those damn borrowed shares, which are getting fewer and fewer every day, as we can clearly see, and they're using them until 9.45 in the morning and then running it up the rest of the day. The next day, the low came again at 9.45 in the morning, right there. That's when the low was, 9.45. Price at 6.88, by the way. And then here we are, 9.45 today. It was 9.45 right here, that first drop, at 6.85. And they even got it down to 6.82 on the double bottom, 6.82. So there you go, folks. You see how they're doing it? You can see every single day that over the nighttime, they're returning the shares, borrowing them again, returning the shares, borrowing them again. Here, they didn't even return them all. And here, they only returned a fraction of them. They're, here's the thing, folks. This is getting slim, man. They, they had 10 million three weeks ago, and now they're down to just over 1.2 million to even start borrowing to short with. <laughs> and they were somehow able to get it. They they almost borrowed every one that day because that's what they started with. They were starting with up here and even higher at 10 million, not just three. That's what I'm trying to accentuate to everybody here on this channel right now. This is how they're working the system every single day. And this is the plan they've got. And it's that borrow at 345 in the morning and then attack from the four o'clock on until 945 and then go long. And that's what they're doing every day. It's easy to see it right here. On Friday, they attacked at 9.45. You can see the time was 9.45, and then they went long, and they made money all damn day. And then 9.45, the next morning, they did it again, 9.30 to 9.45. There they are at 6.88. They went long, and they made a ton of money again. And then right here, what time did they attack it again? Freaking 9.45 again, 9.45. Bam, there's the low, and they're doing it every day from right at 4 o'clock after what they're doing, borrowing their shares at 3.45 in the morning, okay? That's my belief. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. So, it's my belief that actually, I'm actually seeing a change in the pattern today because they're not, as of yet, they're not buying back those shares like they have been doing the rest of the day from the 945 low. Now, that being said, what was the low at 945? Well, it was at 682, and where is it now? 693. So they're still making out like bandits, okay? This is working out for them very well every day over the last six days. They've done it six days in a row now, just in case you're not aware of it. Can prove it right here because the high on the sixth day, six days ago, happens to be an amazing high of 795. And six days later, one, two, three, four, five, six, there it is, 682. And you guys know the ones that have been here with me a long time, I've shown you this six day pattern many times in the past. You can go way back here and you can find these incredible six day swings or five days. Most of the times it was six or five days from the lows to the highs, it's almost unbelievably predictable. And I'll show you what I mean right here. You see this high of 603, and then how many days till it hit the low? One, two, three, four days, it's at 551. And then how many days to the high? One, two, three, four, and at five, it's 610. 
then how many days to the low again? One, two, three, four, five, six at 567. And then went how many days to the high? One, two, three, four, five, five days to 610. How many days to the low? Isn't this incredible? Look at this. One, two, three, four, five days to the low at 566. And then how many to the high? I mean, folks, you got to you gotta start looking for these patterns. It looks like volume is going to be over 40 million. I already told, I know that. I'm, I'm very positive of that indeed. I, I've been saying that all day. It looked like we were going to eclipse 40 million. And we're going to see even more in the after hours is my belief. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I think we're going to see a million, over a million in after hours, maybe a million, maybe two million, because I think they're going to be buying those shares at midnight or one o'clock. And I think the high of the day is going to be tomorrow at 4 a.m. I don't have any idea what the price is going to be, but it's going to be there at four o'clock. <laughs> and it's going to, the low tomorrow is going to most likely happen at 945. Here's the weather now. Our prediction for what's coming ahead of us is stormy conditions in the morning, especially around 945. You can expect heavy, heavy winds, rain, possible hail. Please try to keep yourself safe. And if you must, remember the safest place in your home is usually in your bathtub. Or if you have a stairwell in the basement. By the way, I'm not <laughs> licensed to tell you where to stay in the house when the tornado comes along, but, but I've lived in Tornado Alley. And I know where the people go. Gar go to the either the bathtub or, or they go to a place down below a, a basement stairwell. Okay. And if you live in a manufactured home, everyone, my suggestion is go drive around your neighborhood and find the closest concrete structure you can get inside. For my daughter, it happens to be at a softball field about a quarter mile away. And there's a softball field that has public restrooms that she can run inside that are made of concrete and brick and stuff and steel instead of her mobile home. So if you happen to have a manufactured home or know anyone that does, you go find the closest place nearby that's constructed out of steel, brick, concrete, or whatever, and you find that place as a place of refuge for when a tornado does strike. Okay, that might save your life or someone you know. Just a little Tyler's tip of the day. All right, here we go, folks. We're in the last minute, and where's the volume? Oh, hell yeah, 41 million already. It's probably going to hit 45 or 46 even by the after hour at 8 o'clock. I don't know, but I'm going to write it down. I'm going to find out how much volume's in the after hours. And my something just tells me there's going to be some shares returned. And something tells me if there's not any shares returned, they're totally going to be screwed tomorrow morning. And it's going to be all over for them. It'll be completely over for them, in my opinion, because of what I just saw and what I've been showing you guys. And I could be wrong, but I sure don't think so. Let's see what the volume ends up here for at the very last minute of the day. Doing the countdown to ringing the bell. The last minute of the day. We got three seconds, two seconds, one second, zero. And we're at 691 a share down 2.4%, 2.3%. And I want to tell you that is my belief that the price will be rising on volume. And I don't know what the high will be tomorrow, but it's going to open the high tomorrow is going to be higher than this because they've got to buy those shares back now if they want to have 3 million again to start with tomorrow morning at 2.30. They've got to buy them now. From now until 2 in the morning or so, <laughs> they, that's, that's what it looks like they've been doing lately. If you guys have just followed all what I'm showing you, from now until sometime 2 in the morning, if they're going to do what they've been doing every freaking day, and that is buying as many as they can at four, three forty-five in the morning, three thirty to three forty-five. If they're gonna, they're gonna plan on doing that again when they started with three million here five days ago. All right, <laughs> this is over the last seven days of trading what they've been borrowing, and they got to get back up to this number, folks. They ended too low today. They're down here. They're down here at this number. And it's it's three o'clock in the morning when they were last time there, and now they're that at that number, and it's freaking four four in the afternoon. Okay, they got trouble. They got they got trouble. They're gonna have to buy these shares, I believe. <clears throat> I think they're gonna want to get up to this level again. So I expect them to return at least another 
two million, one million six hundred thousand shares roughly in the after hours uh, by on the part of the shorts to get back up to this level here. I think they want to start from tomorrow to start borrowing at three forty five again. If I'm right, if I'm right, okay. But one thing I was right about, we sure as crap went over 40 million. Look at that, 42,279. And I want to refresh the screen right now. I want to see where we are immediately after the closing. Usually a penny, two, or three below. But let's see where you are right now. Usually one penny, two pennies, or three below the close. And we're even. We're still even. So another sign of weakness on the shorts. Because 99 times out of 100... When you refresh the screen after the closing on SoFi, the price is in the red. And this is changing, folks. And this is why I think we're going to... There it is. We're already green. All right. Well, like I said, folks, in my opinion now, we are not going to see the price lower because quite frankly, I don't think that they have, well, if they do, if they have any left, they're going to use the very, the few left of these that they borrowed. And I'm going to come over here now and I'm going to look at right here and see what they returned in a day, if any. And as of four minutes ago, it says, no, they have not returned. They have not returned them. Wow. They've only got one. Point four million left, folks, to short with. Wow. Hey, I want to say something to you guys now. What I'm showing you, I am not a financial advisor, but this has a look and feel to it like one I haven't seen. I want you to be aware that it's not just SoFi that's going to make us a lot of money. I think we can make a lot off of this one we bought today, S-O-U-N. Congratulations if you bought that with me down here in the 762 and 764 price range. And I even bought it as low as 8 I think 808. But I want you all to know that there are many other stocks that we can make a lot of money on over time, okay? And this is another one of them. If you're a long-term investor, can look out a year and a half, two years even, this will one day sell for over $100 if they get this final stage of level three federally approved through the FDA. And when they do, you will make a ton of money if your sell orders are in at as high as you can put them in. Okay. Put them in up to $49, $65, $79, $87. Put them all those numbers. I've got 76, I mean, and 87, 98. Put them there. Put them at 108, 118 if you want. Put them in at 130, 149. There's no telling how high it'll go. And this drug, if you watched the video that I told you about earlier and I provided the link for here on this, you can go back earlier in the day and look for the link where it's in gold. You'll see my big highlighted yellow with a link that takes you to the video on this company's new drug that they're working on now on the final level, stage three. So anyway, uh, another one. This one was at the bottom today, and I told you to get in on this. When it was right down here, I said, folks, you got to put an order in on this because it's over, oversold. And I believed it was, and it was. Look at that dang thing. Went from 32 all the way to 36 bucks. That was a great call on that stock today if you bought any of that, DWAC. And then I want to take a look over here. Oh, yeah, BITF in the green. Uh, I told you that thing was oversold a week ago when, when Bitcoin was down, was rising. It was up 10% and this thing was down 10%. I said, buy this thing. And now they're going to be showing the same level of hash rate that a stock that's priced over $12 is priced at right now. And that's CLSK. I didn't even look at that one today, folks, with us. But let's take a quick look at what CLSK did today. But this stock, this stock here priced at this price, it just got equaled by this company's uh, hash rate. They've just increased a big, massive buy of new miners and increasing to 21 EHS. And that's at the same level that this one is that's priced at $16. And it went down 5% today. A good chance maybe to buy some of that even tomorrow morning at 945, 1030. 
Yep. So anyway, I want to thank you all for being here on this channel while we talk about other stocks as too. Someone mentioned to me, look at NEO. I said, no, I did look at it and I said, don't buy it. And uh, look what it did today. Uh, this was, this is a six month chart on it. I don't like that at all. Just wait. We'll watch for the bottom. Most likely it'll be around 488. Okay. Maybe 466, maybe lower. I don't think, I don't catch falling knives and that's a falling knife. And that's what I told him this morning about NEO. And, uh, but there's some other stocks that I have been having some interest in, in lately that uh, one of our buddy got, Double K has talked about. And so we're going to take a look at some of those right now. Uh, F, and what is that? Uh, it's not fuel cell energy. Uh, uh, doggone it. I can't remember it right now. Uh, but I do know one of them for sure that he talked about, and that's DKNG, DraftKings. I want to see how he's doing on that one today. And another one is going to be RSI. I want to look and see what that's done today. And I'm gonna, we're just going to kind of hike, recap a few. All right, he was, he's still doing fantastic on this stock, folks. If you knew what he bought that for, he would flip out, man. He got that so cheap. DraftKings, double K, that's one of his calls there. Another one that he talked to, talked to us about was the... Uh, Fintel, uh, no, not Fintel, uh, FNCFF. What was it? Oh, I can't remember the letters for that one. Ah, anyway, uh, let's take another, another one that he talked about, RSI, Rush Street Interactive. Some, somebody mentioned that we take a look yesterday at Rivian, and I did not look at that one again today, but I probably should have just to see what it ended up doing. But uh, let's take a look at RSI, down a smidgen today. All right. And let's take a look at some other ones we've got here. ARM. ARM. I told you about this one a long time ago. It's gone crazily up. All right. Down 4% today. Okay. Anybody else have a stock they want me to take a look at here before I close things up? I'm getting ready to shut this thing down. Go spend some beautiful time with my wife. And I'm looking at SoFi up green in the after hours. And I'm not surprised. I think it's going to continue to be green in the after hours. The pressure is on them, people. And now we see, it's, it's, I'm glad that we stumbled on this this afternoon about their cost to borrow and what they're doing with their borrowing. And uh, I want to see, I want to be keeping a very, very close eye on these, uh, this chart here on Fintel that someone told me about today, and I appreciate you doing that, Xavier. Thank you very much, Xavier. I definitely appreciate that. And uh, it's always best to be, be kept updated as quickly as you can. And so as of 11 minutes ago, no shares have been returned. And folks, if they start with 1.4 tomorrow, that was below the where they were here at one point. What was it? 1.7. I can only imagine how effective they can be if they're only going to start with 1.4 tomorrow. But I saw what they did on March the 14th and on the 15th, the next morning, what they did on the 15th. And on the 15th, folks, the price on it was just now on the one point. No data. The stream will end shortly. Reconnection is successful. All right, I'm reconnected now. Sorry, something glitched out on my computer for a minute. My internet provider. We got wind like crazy here right now in Michigan. Windy, windy, windy. But my point is that on the 14th, and if you look here, they had 1.9 million shares to work with on the 14th. And then that got reduced all the way down here at 345 in the morning to 550 shares at 345. And then by five in the morning, they'd already returned some of those shares. Wild, huh? Next day, they come at it again at 345 in the morning. By what time? By 430, they returned them. They returned them. What are they doing? 
on the 15th. What are they doing? I'm telling you, folks, I just have a, I'm trying to figure this out. What in the hell are they doing this for? Are they bar borrowing these shares to buy long with? At 345, they're borrowing as many as they can. 345 in the morning. And then they're returning from a low of only available 700,000 to 2 million. That's returning 1.3 million shares by 845 in the morning. Huh? This is four in the afternoon right here. 1,600 hours, that's four in the afternoon. What are they doing coming at it at 345? And then returning those shares within 30 minutes. Anybody want to try to answer that for me? Dung Lee, can you take a look at VERB stock, please? Sure. Ah, uh, I got gotcha. you. Okay, I got gotcha, you, crypto mining companies. Thank you. That makes sense. That makes sense. They're taking up new short positions and the returning ones that are expiring. Days to cover. Yeah. Okay, looking at VERB right now. The first thing I want to scroll over here is look at their. <clears throat> they met the street here. They missed by a fraction. They beat the street big time here by 35 cents. Then surprisingly, they missed by a fraction again. Oh. <laughs> uh... I don't like it anymore. I don't like this. Revenue is dropping here, dropping down. And unfortunately, their earnings is far excelling their revenue increases. They are losing money hand over fist, and they will be doing share splits and stuff like that. And uh, that's not safe. Now, made a nice move today. Says Verb Market Live adds a hundred more retail brands to its live stream social shopping platform. Well, that's good if they can handle the flow, but that's not why I'm buying that stock. And I have a feeling, yes, that's what I thought I'd see. Yeah. Uh uh. No, 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 no. Nope. If you want to play in and out on this very quickly, buy it tomorrow morning at 9.45, between 9.45 and 10.30, and get the quick afternoon pop up and then get out. Because if the price was up 7% today on that news, I can assure you tomorrow morning, Shorty's going to come after this thing at 9.45 to 10 o'clock. And they might start right out of the bell, right at not at the bell ringing at 9.30. So somewhere between 9.45 and 10, they're going to shake out 3% of that profit. My suggestion is wait till tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. 
As a matter of fact, you can already see them starting their work on it now. They're working on it now in the after hours already. So wait until the morning, 945, 10 o'clock. They'll run it down, and then you can get a nice little play off of that back to the upside if it's oversold. Watch for a double dagger, too. I'm not telling you to go all in at 9.45 or 10 just because you think that, oh, it's starting to come up. Let's get a little more. Nope, because they'll pull that little double whammy on you where they'll take it up and then, ah, oh, <laughs> down here. I call it the double dagger. They do that often. Sometimes they'll triple dagger a stock. Seen that happen, too. That That's what you should expect is the triple dagger, the triple bottom, Okay. Usually, it's not even a good idea until you can to buy into a stock until you've seen that triple bottom. And, it, and, and even if the triple bottom starts down here and then the next top bottom is here and the third one is here, that's that's when you really feel good and you can go ahead and get a safe, you're making a safe entry there because they're just they're just trying to, you know, keep it from going like that by these little occasional little pullbacks. But that's my suggestion. Watch it in the morning. I'll keep it over here on the screen just so we can look at it tomorrow, too, to see if I was right. I like it when I make calls about something and then they end up happening. Okay. Xavier says here. Uh, welcome. We all have a lot of time and info to contribute to the SoFi team. Crypto mining companion, first in, first out, returning shares that are maybe a couple of days old. Yep, Xavier, the HF could be lending them out. Yeah, the hedge funds could be lending them out. And when it drops down to zero shares left, they release more. Look at the look at the fails to deliver, please. It has a lot to do with it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh man, you should hear the wind blowing outside here, folks, right now. It's amazing. Just give me a moment here. I'm stepping over here to do my research and then we'll add it over to this screen here. I want to thank you all very much for your presence here on the channel with me while we look at all this here. Okay, here we go. Boom. So we're looking right now here. It says SoFi fails to deliver. Okay. SoFi fails to deliver. This is on FinTech. The values of total fails to deliver shares represent the aggregate net balance of shares that failed to be delivered as of a particular settlement date. Well, what do you know? I wonder why. Look at the size of these here. Since the 21st, and 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 hold on a second here, folks. Hold on with me a minute here. We're going to correlate this right here with this. Okay? The 21st. When they were able to make the price drop from 8.52 to 8.10, the lowest it's ever been. Hold on. What do you know? The highest number of fails to deliver were used to drive SoFi's price to the lowest that it was on February 
February 21st. Look at all those fake shares that never even delivered that they were into the volume. Wow. Yes, it delays the share price. And isn't it interesting that on November 21st, the day that SoFi stock price hit the lowest that it's been, all right? <laughs> Isn't it interesting that on that day, November, uh, February 21st, the price hit the lowest it had ever been, and they basically cheated to do it by not returning those, not uh, delivering those shares. Well, they didn't cheat to do it, but they didn't deliver them. They, they decided to hold on to them and keep them instead. Isn't that interesting? And then, and if you look at the next one, gosh dang it. I've got it on another page. I mean, it was on the 21st, the 22nd, the 23rd, the 27th, and the 28th now, recently. Look at those massive fails to deliver, folks. The value of them, 2 million, 2 million. Oh, my God. Sorry. On January the 23rd, Look at the fails to deliver January the 23rd, 39,457,000. January the 23rd, good God, what happened then? January 23rd, ah. So by uh, January 23rd, historical data. What happened then? Price went from 814 and the day before it was 833 for a high and they ran it down 50 cents 45 million shares and 39 million shares failed to deliver people huh. there's no way so far will go red again tomorrow right i don't believe so josh it's, it today was the 6th day Today was the sixth day down, which is their pattern. They love the six day down, six day up, six day down. I was showing that people to people earlier today. It's a very, very frequented pattern of theirs to go six days up to the top, six days to a bottom, six days to a top, six days to a bottom. And I can go back here and I can prove it to you by showing you these numbers. You'd be amazed how many times the price went from the low and then went up six days to the next high. You'd be just fascinated to see how many times it's happened. And it happens over and over and over back here through October, November, December. You can do it. You can do it yourselves and see the numbers. You can find out that I'm exactly what I'm telling you the truth. I'll start right here. The price was 806. 806. How many days to the bottom? One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is an exception. This is an exception. I have to get the right date. No, we don't want to do it through November because this is when they ran it down and then they ran it up. This was the highest it was. But we'll look at here from this number here from 753, that high there. And then you can see how many days. One, two, three, four, five days to 641. The sixth day it was off and ran up. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six days to 773. And then how many days down? One, two, it was just two days down 717. And then the thing goes right on up after six days. One, two, three, four, five, six days. It's at the high of 827. There's six days. And then we're going to see how many days down. One, two days down. And it was really just the next day they hammered it. But after that hammering, how many days? One, two, three, four, five, six days to the high of 1016. Then they ran it down the next day again. And then how many days to the next high? One, two, three, four days to the high. And it was still up in the 1030s. All right. And then they ran it down from there. And folks, you can see a distinct pattern of six days up, six days down. And you're going to make money on the stock. One, two, three, four, five, six. You get in at 814 the next day. <laughs> And then how many days uh, to off this high of 852 or 860 was it? All right. One, two, three, four, five, six days. It's at 721. The next day it's at 833. My God. Do you see that? It's just amazing, isn't it? 
833 and then one, two, three, four, five, six. It was really a, a four days, 752. Then how many, <clears throat> how many days was it to the next high? I bet you it's six. So <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Well, 795. And the next day it was at 776. And I can show you this over and over, folks. There's a definite pattern from this high of 783 and then 814. They ran it down. But, folks, these alternating patterns off of the 858 high right there, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, five days, and they had it at 816 and 811. And then how many days later was it to the high? One, two, three, four, five, six days to the high. Six days to the high. How many days to the low? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirty-eight. That's close to the low, folks. You see the pattern now. And now from the high of 795, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six days to the low. All right, everybody. So, Josh, I hope that makes you feel better. <laughs> And something else that's odd about all this time of these six-day swaps is this is getting to be outrageous, this volume, folks. 187, 131, price is rising, rising on this volume, rising on this volume. <laughs> oh, my God, they got to downgrade it. <laughs> they got to hurt themselves by doing a convertible note right when they're getting ready to really start taking off. Convertible note comes out. Shorty jumps all over that for the next six days and runs it down to the low. And they got it there today. Congratulations. 682. Whoever the brokerage was that has to pay these out at 729, uh, 729 each. You did good getting at 682 today. You're talking about a 40, 47 cent gain on the where you got in today and started acquiring shares so that you got to stick away. You got to put those shares away. <laughs> Stick them away with the 122 million you need to get to up, up to 100 uh, to get the cover of that convertible notes. So there they are today. They got them, folks, at 696 dollars and 82 cents, 10 cents below where we closed today. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Even though we are down two percent, we will win this war. It's a war of attrition, folks. And it's that you saw my thumbnail, and it's a very true thumbnail. It's a heavy load that we've got to push up this hill. But, folks, we're getting ready to cross over into the second earnings call with profitability. And you see what happened to PLTR after their second earnings call and profitability. They went skyrocketing. And that's what I expect to see happen with SoFi as well, even off today's low, which I took a picture of today. I took a picture of it for my, with my camera. I'll show it to you right here, right now. Yep. I said, yep, I'm, I'm going to take a picture right now. The lowest this price will may ever be again. And a, one that we're going to hang on our wall. We're going to hang on our wall not right next to the 466 buy orders I've got. And look where the price was that I got a picture of today. Oh, my gosh. Look at that, folks. It was a thing of beauty today that I took this picture at the low. Wait a minute. Hold on. And then it started rising after I got the low today. That was awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, my gosh. You guys, I appreciate it that you're here with me on this platform each day and having fun with me every day while I take pictures of the low. And it seems, sadly, over this last week that that picture I've been taking has been at a new low every single day. But it's changing, folks. It's changing. And this is the lowest I could get a picture of because I was too busy buying and there it is right there, folks. One penny off of today's low. And I'm going to have this put up on the wall <laughs> one day in the future or in a photo album of this price right there. 683 on this date. And there's the chart right there showing it at the very bottom where I bought it. All right. <laughs> okay. Yep. I have it. And that's a good place to be at the end of the day. And you might say, what do you mean, Catfish? Why would 683 be a good place to be? And I'll explain to you right now. And then I'm going to get the hell out of here. All right. I'm going to show you. And I'm going to do it for the last of you guys for the last time. Some of you can go ahead and say, start saying farewell to me if you want to. And your goodbyes, because I'm going to be getting out of here after I show this. <clears throat> I'm going to show this right now. 
It happened on a day when a zero star rated analyst said SoFi's target price was only worth $2.50. And on that day, folks, which was a very eventful day, what happened was SoFi's price hit the lowest it's ever been this year of $4.45. And the reason that I mention this to you now is because the next time that it went up over $10 from that price, the next low was not $4.45. It happened on November 21st and was $6.41. So if they're trying to drive the price down and they achieve a $4.45 five months earlier, and now they're only achieving a $6.41, that happens to be a 30% increase practically from the low that they got it down the first time on May the 15th. Is that not correct? It's a 44% gain on the low in over in six months. And the next one was today. That's why I pointed out to you today is the next no, low and that is at 682. And folks, we had a 44% gain from the low from May until November 21st. And now we've got 6.41 times 7.6% plus equals 689. All right. So we've got about a 7.2% gain now from the other previous low is what I'm trying to point out to you right now, everyone. Okay. So let me do it one more time. The number was 6.41 times 7.1% plus equals 686. So maybe a 6.9% gain. And I'll take that. I want to see the next low they drive us down to to be 701. Okay? And I'll be happy with that four months from now. Okay? That's what I want to see because the, the high is going to go back up over 10 and then they're going to yank it down to 713. All right? And and it'll still be an improvement off of the low the last time, just like the previous two. All right. That's what I, my point I'm trying to get across to you. And I am going to figure it out. 6.41 times 6.8% plus equals 684. Oh my God. We're almost there. Six. It must be 6.5%. 6 6.41 times 6.8%. 5% plus equals 682, folks. So a 6.5% gain off of the last low that they got on November the 21st. Good for them then and bad for them now. That's all I can tell you. Because if they if they could, they'd already shoved this thing back down under 445 or they start, they, some of them are still holding shorted shares at 445, folks. Try my, I'm changing my name to Sisyphus. Sisyphus. <laughs> Uh, thanks, man. I think you're right about the pattern. A lot of 650 fear out there right now. Yeah. Be as scared as you want of that number. I'm telling you, folks, they got a situation on their hands here with these borrowing shares running out of there. They're running out of them. The, the number is getting low when you got it down one day to 700 left. And then the next day, you've got it down to 550 left. And the next day, you got it down to 250,000. Uh oh. And over here, even today, and you ran it all the way down to only 450,000 out of 10 million. That's trouble for them. I think it's trouble. I smell, I smell problems for the shorts. Uh, I can sniff them out, and that looks like one to me, a definitive problem. And especially the fact that they're only grabbing up these shares at 345, that they're shorting and taking almost everyone off the table. And the ones that they're returning, the ones they're returning here shortly after they, they get these down here, the ones they're returning, folks, they were getting these right here shares when there was 8 million available to short. Okay? And, and some of these, when there were 10 million shares available to short, these are the ones that they're returning now. When they were they were shorting these shares and the borrowing these shares when there were 10 million shares available to borrow and now they're returning them when there's only two million left to borrow. See what I'm saying? Kenny Wentworth, I'm going to borrow money from a loan shark to buy more. <laughs> yeah. 
it's just not this is not what i would call so, solid financial <laughs> so please folks don't believe or follow necessarily in the footsteps of everyone here who makes <laughs> statements as such all right they're entitled to make their own decisions financially and i am in no way obligated or can be held liable or responsible because i'm only here for entertainment purposes and everyone knows that i'm here for entertainment purposes only and i am not to be taken seriously it would be very unwise for anyone to take catfish tyler seriously and you cannot hold me to anything that i say do or whatever actions can be held against me even including eating my own shorts if i have to so <laughs> Now, yes, indeed, I know that that could be kind of gruesome and hard to watch. But then again, you know, if I say, hey, man, if this price isn't over, or if we're not green by the end of the day, I'm going to eat my shorts. I guarantee you I'm going to eat my damn shorts. It's not just. <laughs> and plus, I often work up an appetite. And I don't, my wife lately has been bringing food over to me every once in a while. So it hasn't been as bad. But, you know, there's times I get hungry and a uh, little uh, short patch with some chocolate Hershey syrup on it isn't bad. <laughs> Really? It adds some fiber to my diet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Look at this number we got on our views today. 1,288 folks. Whoever you are, the 1,288th person, you're the one of the most lovable numbers that I love. The number eight, and I love the 288, and I love the 1,288. And so thank you for coming over to my channel. I'm in forever gratitude for you taking a look at why I'm showing people SoFi is about to go nuts, right? I'm not scared. Stocks go up and down. Okay. Have no fear. Katie's here. All right, everybody. Thank you again for being here. 1,289 views of the channel. I think I'm just going to wait till we get to 1313. <laughs> So if you guys want to help me out that are here with me now, it's currently 4.40 p.m. in the afternoon. You've just joined in. I'd like to ask you, please, to help me out here at 4.44.44. At 4.44.44, we're going to hit the like button together because I like the eight number so much. All right. Low Country Loot and Pond. First time viewer, Danny D gave me a shout out. All right. Thank you, thank you, Danny D, my buddy. Un poco mas. <laughs> un poco mas. I think he says un poco mas. <laughs> uh, hello and welcome. <laughs> we are very glad to see you here. We think you will have a good time. If you like him, you'll like me. <laughs> welcome to the tank. And this is what we call the tank with all the other catfish that are here. We work together as a team. We work and we gather knowledge. And we uh, we definitely always thank a new member who comes along. Not to call you a member by any means. We don't want to get in any trouble. Uh, we just want you to know that if you decide to become a member of our family, then all you have to do is hit that like and notification. And of course, this little red subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. Um, in case you didn't know, I, I'm also just like Danny. I'm a singer. So a lot of times I sing on this channel and have a good time breaking into song. And it seems like <laughs> oh, Danny Dimes is back. All right. You're here to catch us in time to drink a cold beer. We're getting ready to cold appear, uh, bring in the cold beer. We got the Kenny the Hud is here. Welcome. I did not see you sneak into the tank, Kenny. Thank you very much for being here. Kenny, that long time was busy for me, so I just jump in and out. I actually to do some long options this morning. Okay, I'm with you. Uh, Trunk Monkey, I'm changing my name to Sisyphus. <laughs> Low Country, thank you for being here with me. Uh, yep, I'm going to welcome you. Uh, and uh, that welcome to the tank is for you, Low Country. And... Uh, I do appreciate you being here. What we're talking about and what we're showing everyone this afternoon is something kind of interesting that's been occurring lately. Number one, the thing that I'm trying to point out to everybody is this massive sudden influx of volume 
and I've never counted this many shares traded over a 10 day period. This is new territory for SoFi. So to see 950 million shares traded in 10 days, folks, it's it's un, it's unlike the past. I've never seen this many this much and it's forcing the shorters to borrow the crap out of shares. And another thing I'm showing everybody in Low Country was that there were three weeks ago 10 million shares available for borrowing every day of the week. They were not even using this source or supply of shares to borrow from. There were 10 million a month ago. And then three weeks ago, it went to 9 million. And then two weeks ago, it dropped to 7 million. And then now we're looking and it has dropped to 3 million that they're starting with to borrow against. And they've almost tapped the tree dry. Look at this. They've got it down to this day, five days ago, there were only 700,000 of those 10 million left. And then the next day at 3.30 in the morning, they did it again. There were only 550,000 shares left of 10 million. And the following day, there were only 250,000 shares left to short to borrow with. Holy smacks. And then they were returning here. They're returning those shares that had to be returned because they were expiring, see? These were beginning to be expired and they were coming due. So they had to return these, in the, you know, and that's what they started doing. And they got these all the way back up to 3.8 million shares. But look at this. From 3 million shares, it took three days to drive it down to the lowest available. And this time it happened in one freaking day. Not three. This is desperation right here, people. This is not a gradual downward <laughs> regression. This is trouble right here. This looks like trouble for me to them. I, I mean, that, I think it is. That's what I'm here to show everybody today. All right. Yes, we're going to have a cold beer. I'm going to go get it here in just a minute. And uh, this is what I'm showing everybody is that it's, it's getting it's getting into dire straits for these shorts that used to have just a month ago, 10 million and then more shares that they were available to borrow. And it's really, really gotten reduced all the way down here. And folks, we did not see them return shares this afternoon. We were expecting the possibility of some buying to happen late in the day today from those shorters that have to return these. These got to be returned. I mean, you know, these shares that are shorter, they've got to be returned if they got to get it back up here to $3 million to start with. Because this is the only way is to borrow that many shares to force the price down. They need $3 million to borrow to run it down. They can't make it drop that much with only $1.2 million or right here with $1 million. Or at 2 in the morning, there was only 900,000 shares left. How are they going to make it drop with only 900,000 shares left? That gets troublesome. That's problemsome for them, folks. I guarantee you it is. All right? <laughs> it is. And we're going to see this bubble break soon. This bubble's going to break, folks. And it's going to be their bubble. Their fake illusion is all an illusion. Just like that song by Sticks. Yep. Because deep inside, you know, it's... Just an illusion. <laughs> yep. 1,305 people on this channel today, and I'm going to ask you right now. <clears throat> it's coming up. We missed 440, 444, but we won't miss 448, 48. We're going to hit that like button together at 448, 48, and uh, we're going to get this um, <clears throat> likes up to about 120, I hope, and we're going to do it. At 4.48.48, exactly two minutes from now. And uh, just so I don't forget that, I'm going to put that up on the screen here so we can see the countdown. And we'll all hit the like together. Yes, we will all hit the like together. <laughs> but we will all hit the like together. And thank you for being here on this very, very, very crazy show where anything can come at you from any angle. You never know what to expect. I can guarantee you that. 
every once in a while, I like to even drape, break into different voices from different countries around the world or even different areas from the United States. Yesterday, some people were very entertained, apparently, by my southern boy voice. My redneck, redneck Tyler. Low country, Luton Pond, done. All right. Excellent, excellent. I appreciate that. We are now at almost 448.48 where we're going to hit that like button and we're going to do it all ensemble is the word. And I don't know uh, if you happen to speak uh, Spanish with our buddy Hurricane Lopez, pero yo puedo hablar español bien aquí. Y si es uh, los hombres o los hombros o las amigas que está aquí como amigo hoy, yo diga muchas gracias. Uh, yo es muy contento que ustedes está aquí como amigo. All right, here we go. Four minutes and 48 seconds and 40. Here we go. 448, 48. We're going to hit the like button together. And there are 48 current viewers, which is kind of ironic. So let's hit this all together. 448, 48 p.m. in 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Button, <laughs> please help me out by hitting that like button. Low Country Pond, subscribed and turned on notification. I have almost 20,000 shares now. Have never sold a single share. Averages at 652. Didn't sell at 11. Sometimes feel dumb for not sway, swinging, but I'm not a day trader. Well, I want to let you know something, Low Country. Uh, I don't know whether he told you this, but I sure as shit am. And as a matter of fact, I, I frequently trade about 10% of my shares, which is 5,000 shares in a single day. So I'm holding over 50,000 shares of SoFi, and I will trade 10% on a high. And the numbers that I have written down on a sheet of paper here are the numbers that I sell these shares because every time I sell at these numbers, I can always buy back lower 99 times out of 100. I make no guarantees, but here is my operation my modus operandi. I'm going to show it to you right now. These are the numbers that I will be selling all the way up to $39.98 where I have my highest order. Now, these are the numbers where I will sell. I will sell a lot of shares at 808 right there. And after I sell at 808, I'm going to buy back at 801 to 797, 798, 799. The next time it runs up, I'll sell some at 812, 813, 814, and 815, and maybe even 816. I'll put them in in smaller increments, but it'll add up to about 5,000 shares. <laughs> because after I sell and it runs up slightly past 813 to that 816, 17, it'll drop back down to 808, and I'll buy it again. Boom, I'll come in and I'll get it somewhere usually between 808 and 801. Now, when it got to 918 where I sold it, and 913, 914, 915, 916, 917, I sold all those numbers. Then when it got from there, I was actually to buy it, able to buy it back all the way down in the 870s. It dropped that far from the 913 number. So that, and I did that five times two weeks ago. <laughs> Five times I I sold it at 913 through 918 and I bought it back in the 970s to 980s. Five freaking times. Then the next number I'll sell a small amount at is 820. And I look for a pullback to 814 or 811. Okay. Then I'm going to sell at 824. These are small amounts. I'm only doing 200 here, 200 there, 200 here, 200 there. But when it gets to 848, I'm going to drop another 2,000 to 5,000 shares there. And I'm going to buy it back at 841 to 843 or lower. It might even go all the way back down to 813 from 848. And then it's going to go to 855. I'll sell a few shares, two or 300 there. I'll buy it back at 849 to 851. I'll sell it at 865 in a large number, 5,000 shares at 866, folks. And I'll break this up. I'll sell 1,000 here at 865, 2,000 at 866, 2,000 at 867, and 1,000 at 868. And one more thousand will be an order sell at 869. 
because from there it will drop all the way back down usually to 861 to 856. These are the numbers I'm showing you because these are the numbers I put my buy orders in. As soon as this is sold, these buy orders are going in. Because usually when it gets to 866, they'll run it back so fast you don't even get a chance to fill these if you don't put them in right away, start putting them in. Then when I sell it a little bit at 876, 200 shares, I can almost always buy back at 867, 68, or 69. From this number here, 876, 877, I will sell a few hundred at 876 and a couple hundred at 877, a couple hundred at 878, and then they'll pull it back down to this almost every time. And then here at 887, it's the same thing. You got freaking a huge order here, 2,000 at 887. 3,000 at 888, 1,000 at 889, 1,000 at 890, and then they go always drop it back to 878 or as low from here, 888 to 866 or even 861. So I'll be nibbling at it after this 888 when they start dropping it. I'm just showing you my, the, my tactics. Then when it gets to 892, I'm going to be selling it there a small amount and it'll pull back down from there to that 888 again for sure almost every time at 893. I'll sell a little couple hundred, 892 and 893 will be their order. And then it'll come back to 888 or lower. <laughs> and then the last one is 898. And from that number, generally you can kill, get an 893 to 891 or even back at 888 or lower. <laughs> you just never know. But at these numbers, folks, at these numbers that I just showed you, if you'll copy these and use these in the future, folks, and you use these, take your camera and take a picture of this screen and, and keep them and use them at every increment, not just the eights, but in this case, now from where we are, you'd be using the sevens, okay? You'd be using the sevens, all right? When we get to these numbers, that's my suggestion. Now, there are there is an exception right now to this to this some of this rule and i'll explain why because very recently sofi's price has quickly dropped since that convertible note uh offering and they see they use that as a way to make the price fall rapidly okay so here's where we were up here in the nines and a big gap was created right here this is a very large gap between where we were up here at the 949 or whatever it was, 919. Folks, there's a big gap down on that news, and that gap still exists right now. They're trying to take advantage of it right now, but folks, this gap is going to be refilled to this back up to this number nines. And then after that, folks, there's big gaps up above to 11 and then to 15 and large gaps from 15 up to 20. There's just massive gaps that are there because when they took this sucker down, folks, they took it down with massive gaps and they were doing it one week at a time. They would drop the price two, three dollars in one week when it got from uh, 20 down to eight, 17, from 17 to 14, 14 down to 11. They were doing that massively one week intervals and those gaps are still there on the way up as we make a progression up now. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Okay, that's what I need help with, brother. I love that. All right, cool. Now, I want you to be aware of something. If you do not have over 25,000 shares, you can't do this what I'm doing. You can only each day at 945 in the morning, you can buy in there and then you can sell that day at the high, okay? But that money that you use then to buy down the next morning you cannot sell those shares that you buy the next morning for two days, okay? Because that money that you have, in other words, let's say today, for an example, this morning, you had sold right up here when the price was at $7. If you use this money, and let's just say you sold 100 shares at $7, okay? If you sold 100 shares at $7, and then you bought back 100 shares here at 10 o'clock, 10.02 in the morning. Then you would have been able to obviously buy more shares than you sold. You can buy, you're getting free shares with that money that you just got here. You're buying extra shares. But those cannot be sold until day after tomorrow. Now they're going to change that 
and it's going to be quicker times and it's going to be cut down to a day. But as of right now, still, you have to wait two days. You'll have to look into when the transfer, it's T plus one, uh, T plus two. Right now, it's T plus two, but they're saying it's going to change here very soon to T plus one. So you'll be able to sell on one day at the high, buy back with that money at the low, and then the following day, you'll be able to trade those shares again, okay? So that's that's going to be a big difference because right now we're having to wait two days. So you just keep that in mind, okay? And what I would like to suggest you do is just use a third of your position every single day to do it with. That way you, you can't go wrong. You'll never get a good faith violation. Now, remember, you're going to be flagged as a day trader by your brokerage when they see this pattern of what you're doing. But that just means you're going to pay a higher interest rate on your taxes, a higher percentage on your taxes. And it's a lot more. For day trading, you pay almost 30% in taxes or roughly around 30%. For some, it's slightly more, some slightly less, but around 30%. If you hold the stock for over a year before you sell it in and out, then you're only paying about 15% roughly. And now again, I clarify, folks, for you, so those of you who are here right now, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm simply one who's been around a long time since I won a bunch of money on the Wheel of Fortune, and I started trading in the year 2000, okay? And uh, so I've learned a lot, and you can see that Wheel of Fortune video if you want to go to Google and put Wheel of Fortune in my name, Tyler, Amy, and Joy. And then there's actually a video that's pay posted by Daily Motion that shows the whole the whole show. And I even posted a short little video that's a one minute long short that I put up on YouTube about that. But anyway, I just thought I didn't, if you're interested, that's how I got my start trading in the year 2000. Uh, May 18th, 2024 is the T plus one day. Okay. Thank you. Mark Stewart. Save your cat. Uh, it's after hours. You've been here all day. Go spend some time with your wife. We will catch you tomorrow. <laughs> Well, I know, but I have uh, people that are always asking questions and need and the need to know. And uh, I like the, the fact that we've had 1,325 viewers on the channel with us today. That's a new high for quite some time. And I kind of am very grateful to those that come in here late in the day. They're looking for information about SoFi. And I can only show you this. They don't have many shares left to borrow with. They used to have 10 million a day. And that dropped here very recently. A month ago, there were 10 million a day. Three weeks ago, there were 8 million a day available. Two weeks ago, there were 6 million available a day. And now there are 3 million. And the other day, this is a week ago. Look at this. This is over the last seven days of trading. Look at how many were left out of the 10 million, folks. There were only 700,000 shares on the 13th. The next day on the 14th, it was even fewer, 550,000. And the next day on the, the 15th, the 16th, folks, there were still 250,000 shares. 250,000 shares here on the, on the 14th. There was, I'm showing you, 550,000, then half that, 250,000. Holy smokes, folks, they're getting themselves in trouble. And then these shares that they're returning here, they shorted these when there were way up 10 million shares available. They had to return these shares because their time ran out on them. So they had to return these shares. And then today, in one day, they dropped it the same amount that took them three days before. In one day, they barred all the way down. In one day, folks, they're in, they're in trouble. This isn't gradual. This is a desperation move today to get it to that low on the sixth day. And they did it again today. All right, I agree with you, Mark Stewart. May 28th, 2024 is the T plus one day. What an instant. How interesting. In the very next day, May, uh, April, I'm sorry, April. It's April the 29th. SoFi is going to be announcing its earnings. April 29th, folks. Look how close we are before the next profitable earnings report. And in case you don't know, go look what happened to PLTR after its second profitable earnings report. It did not, PLTR did not pop like a crazy popcorn piece on that first earnings call when they beat um, when they went profitable. It was on PLTR's second profitable earnings call that they really went up, okay? And I'm talking about a 25% gain or so, all right? So just be holding on here. 
And don't be surprised by what happens here in the next days as things unfold, okay? Because I think it's going to get, as I've already told everybody, things with this SoFi stock are just going to get crazier and crazier. You ain't seen nothing yet was my theme song that day. And I still believe it to this time. You ain't seen nothing yet. This thing's going to get wild and crazy, folks. And it's going to become a day trader's dream come true stock. When we see this thing moving over a dollar or two dollars each day, all right? And you might think I'm crazy to say that, but I think it's coming down the pike because that's what was happening when it was dropping from $28 all the way down to $4.45, all right? I'm just saying, because I already went back and looked at the history of this stock as it was trading down, and you can see some very, very large short-term swings if you look at this three-month chart. I'm talking very large one, two, three-day gaps of the price just going crazily down when they were working this thing down, folks. And unfortunately, on this three-month, it can't be seen. But you can dang sure see it on that one-year one chart, and you can see it on the two-year chart. And look at these massive ups and downs and ups and downs. Folks, it's absolutely insane where it was and how fast it was dropping over these days' durations. $20. On on twenty dollars on the fifteenth, and then how what how many days later? The sixteenth, the twenty second, and the 29th, Two weeks later, from twenty to fifteen bucks, folks, a five dollar drop in two weeks. We haven't seen anything like this before, never. And it can easily go from fifteen right back up to eighteen because there's a huge gap there. Look at that massive gap when they ran it down. Holy crap, and they were doing it on just little piddly volume down here, 216, uh, 113 million, 141 million. Look at that, five-day attack. One, two, three, four, five days to smash it down. They were doing it back then too, folks. Look at the patterns. You can see the patterns all along. Look at these five-day increments or four days. One, two, three, four, wham, 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 wham. Look at all these five days. They do it in sequence, folks, and they're doing it now. All right, if I get over here to the one day, you can see it again. Let's move this over to the one day on the two-year chart. This will go crazy, but you can see how many times, and we're going to try to change this to a one-year chart, one-year chart, and we're going to do one-day intervals. And the reason I want to do that is because I want you all to see how many times, coincidentally, it's five days in between these red. How many How many times it's five days red? And I'm going to show you right now by zooming in right here. This is their tactic that they've been using for a very long time. Very long time. All right. And so you can see it right here, right there. It started, that started May the 5th of 2022. One, two, three, four days. Red, 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 red. Then look how many days up. One, two, three four, five, six days, bam, red, 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 green, green, green. Then here we go again. Look how many days in a row as they attacked it. One, two, three, four, five, six days. <laughs> and then it, it's, it's, it's still six day increments, folks. They were coming at this thing and they do it all the time. Five days or six days. There's one, two, three, four, five, six day. It's at the low again. And I'm showing you this because they do this over and over, folks. They started here on green days up. There was the last green one there. How many days did they run it down? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight days. And the thing was slaughtered down. And even really, it didn't start until right here is where they started it. One, two, three, four, five, six days. It's at the low. So I'm showing you these because they like to attack in six-day increments and they did it here as well. You can easily see from this price where the highest was, where it plateaued out. How many days was it? One, two, three, four, five, six days red. You see the pattern? And they do this over and over and over, folks. I'm showing you something you need to pay attention to. Here we are again at a high. How many days did they run the damn thing down? One, two, three, four, five, six days it's down. They even win a couple more that time. But folks, they generally love to attack in six-day increments from these highs. This was the highest it was right here. One, two, three, four, five, six days, and it's at the low again. Here's the high right here. How many days? 
One, two, three, four, five, six days. It's at the low again. What a coincidence. What a freaking coincidence. Now we start to see it when they get it up here to the high. How many days down was it to the low? One, two, three, four, five, six days. Do you see that? <laughs> they run it right back up. And then how many days does it take to get to the low? One red, two red, three, four, five, six days. It's at the low. Is this starting to make sense to you guys? I hope so. The 34 that are left here. Man, has it become obvious when you look at that. Like, golly, somebody hit me with a stupid stick. I never noticed this before. One, two, three, four, five, six days. It's at the high right there. How many days was it to the low from that high? One, two, three, four, five, six days. It's at the low right there. <laughs> oh, my gosh, people. Come on. Let's get with the program. Six days swings. You can see it. Six days repeatedly. They're doing it over and over and over again. Even off of this last high that we saw right over here when it was at this price right, right there. How many days has it been right now? One, two, three, four, five, six days. I just showed it to you again on this chart right here. From the high of 877, the price went down one, two, three, four, five, six days. Now from the 761, and then we look at the price, that was the high there. And how many days from that high? One, two, three, four, five, six days. There it is. From the high of 761 when the price was 705. All right. So there you go. There's another six day pattern for you to absorb before you go to Betty Buy, everybody. 1,340 people on this channel today. Before I go away here at 510, I'd like to ask you all to hit the like button and then I'm going to go be with my wife. Here we go, folks. Here we go at 510. Let the countdown begin. We're going to count down to 510, and then this will be the last time I ask you to please hit the like button today. And I'm so grateful for all of those who have been sending me some little chips of money here every once in a while. I want to make sure that you know how much you mean to me for helping us keep this channel commercial free. That's going to do it for me today. We're going to count down and hit the like button, and then I'm going to say goodbye to all. And here we go, folks. We're going to hit that like button here right now. Get ready in 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, boom. And that's if we can get over 120 likes right now. And Mark Stewart is right. May the 28th is the date that the T1 day begins. And that'll be very cool for people who have small accounts. And remember, folks, I'm not a financial advisor. I am just someone who's been trading for about 25 years now since being on the Wheel of Fortune and kind of getting lucky. And like I said, if you want to go see that, go to Google, look it up, and you can find it by putting Wheel of Fortune, Tyler, Amy, and Joy. And you'll see a video down there by Daily Motion. You'll see a picture of Vanna standing there holding two bags of money. And if you click on that video, you'll get to watch what I did and how it all unfolded for me on the Wheel of Fortune. And it was a fortunate Wheel of Fortune for me indeed. So thank you very much for helping me get up to 120 likes today. All those of you who are joining in with me right now, I'm sorry that I'm getting ready to shut down the page, but it's been a long time. I've been here ever since uh, 930 this morning, and it's time for me to be, go be with my wife, my beautiful wife, Cheryl Marie. I want to thank you all for being here with me, and I hope that you have a great evening tonight. I hope you have a prosperous evening. The last thing I would show you guys who are coming here to see the uphill battle that I showed you with that big stone is what these guys are against, the shorters, is they're running out of shares to borrow to short with. They ran it down to 700,000 on the 13th. They ran it down from 10 million to only 550,000 on the 14th of March. And they came in all the way down to 250,000 share, shares left on the 15th of March. And they were running the price down every single morning at 945 that they did that. Every single morning. All right. So I want you to be aware that it's my, my belief that they're going to be returning shares because they've been returning these shares every single day as, as late as right here at 10 at night and 1030 at night and three in the morning returning shares all the way up until 445 in the morning, folks, returning shares. So they're having to buy here. They're buying these shares and returning and the returning shares here that they've had that have expired. That's why they have to get rid of them. 
Then they attack again and borrow off of those shares that they just returned. They borrow them immediately later at 3.45 in the morning. They borrow them all back to use against us again for the following day. And now, though, this day today, they dropped the amount of shares available to 450,000. Almost the exact same number of shares is available that they dropped it down over a three-day period. They did today all at once. Boom. One time. So they're doing it hard, folks. They're hitting it hard and they're tapping the tree dry. And pretty soon there won't be any shares left for them to borrow. If you ask me, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. So that's what I'm going to end on tonight. I want to thank you again for being here. All of you hit the like button. I am out of here. I will just type now, see you later, <clears throat> all you cats. And thanks for being here. All right. That's it. I'm winding her down. Oh, I forgot to go get a cold beer, doggone it. I guess we'll just have two tomorrow. All right. Sorry about that, Danny Dimes. I know I was going to have a cold beer with you, uh, but I guess I'm going to get on out of here and go have a cold beer with my wife. Like someone just said, I've been here too long today. I'm going to say again, thank you, Low Country Loot and Pawn. We'll see you tomorrow, or if you want to drop on by any old time, you can come on by and say hey. And uh, <clears throat> we thank you. News today, Galileo expands buy now, pay later solution to include post-purchase options for credit and debit. This is a big deal, folks. It's another expansion. This is another good thing for SoFi, and the shorts are just going to keep hearing good news over and over and over about this stock because that's what they do. All right, I'm out of here. Bye-bye, everybody. And let me just go ahead and increase this screen so I can say goodbye to you up close in a big way. There we go. Thank you for being here. I'm going to be on my way. I appreciate it again. Every single one of you I saw yesterday, a few people were saying goodbye to me after I was actually saying goodbye because there's a delay and I hadn't given people time enough to say farewell to me. So I am right now just sort of waiting to see if anybody here wants to say farewell in the day because I'm out of here. We were only talking with 27 folks here and we got up to 1,350 people on this channel today. And if you're number 1,350, congratulations to you. It's after hours. You've been here all day. Go spend some time with your wife. We will call you tomorrow. Yeah. All right. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. And it's been a great time with you today. I hope that you learned something and I hope that you'll come back again tomorrow. I always want to wish you happiness and safety in this crazy wacky world and i hope that you have very prosperous investments in all of what you do financially and most of all that you're in great health because that's the most important thing be in good health everybody and speaking of that i went to my doctor this morning to get my health check for my annual physical and he didn't show up at 7 a.m because he had a flat tire uh-huh yeah okay that's my story. That's how it ends today. Thank you for being here again. And I want to hope that you are surrounded with love because you deserve it. All right. I am out of here. Hitting that end stream button now. Toodles, everyone. Enjoy your evening.